Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a jump scare there. It is go time. So today we have a 1v1 tourney and let's take a look at the brackets. Let's see what's cracking. Hope you're all doing well. All right, so here it is. So this is our 1v1 tournament for the day. The Monday Madness, we have a $50 prize for first place, 25 for second. And we actually have, uh, this top side of the bracket got really stacked. We actually have Anatan and Crackity who were our grand finalists last time. Potentially going to be meeting in round two, but our homegrown champion Quill is here ready to stand against uh, against Crackity. And then on the top side, I believe Kron is also a Conqueror player as well. So it could be some upsets, could be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of great players. You can see folks from our Discord. We got Uravity, you know, all the uh, all the champs. Should be fun. Nomad playing against Senpai. Senpai was a tournament finalist as well, I believe, in our second tournament. So yeah, man, it's going to be good. I'm pumped. Uh, am I drenched in olive oil? Not yet, but we soon will be. Don't you worry. So as soon as the uh, match gets started, we're going to be jumping in and spectating and going from there. Thank you, Melody. Appreciate it. Yes, yes. I, I love Age of Empires 1v1 tournaments. They're really fun. And obviously today's tournament's going to be pretty fast. I like to run my age tournaments quickly just to have them be a little bit more relaxed and uh, not like a seven or eight hour session. So we're going to be, um, yeah, we're going to be casting, man. It's going to be good. How you guys all doing? Hope life's treating you well. So first match, who do we want to watch? I mean, we got a couple really good ones here. I think we'll do Crackity versus Quill. That's going to be really fun. Quill, of course, is one of our local champs. Crackity is awesome. He does uh, YouTube and Twitch and is also a caster. I believe he's done some work with the EGC TV as well. So um, we'll be uh, casting, I think, that match. That one sounds like a lot of fun. Melody, thank you for the tenor. It's tourney time. Yes, it is. It is indeed. It's tourney time, baby. We got Prime here waiting in round two. Yeah, it's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. It will be a good time. 6 a.m. here in Australia. Oh, yeah, man. You're ready to go. Nice and early. All right. So, obviously, they're going to be doing their picks and bans, and then they'll be jumping in in just a second. So, um, should be on my friends list. Yeah, here's Quill right here. I believe Quill is... Um, I think he's like Conk, too. Yeah, saying that's good. Uh, yeah, he'll have a decent chance. He'll have a decent chance. Should be fun. Crackity did win last time. Yeah, we'll do that match. We'll do it. Thanks for the content. As always, looking for group with 1v1 Madness, I know. It's time, and we'll likely end with an FFA today as well. So for all of you guys who want that sweet FFA action, uh, we will have that at the very end. So I just started playing a different um, Civ yesterday. I was like, or two days ago, I was like, oh, let's just go play uh, the Ayubids. And my God, they're strong. I was on kind of a bit of a, a you know losing streak of sorts, but right now I'm, I'm five in a row with Ayubids. Dude, they're so good. Even after the nerfs, they're such a dynamic Civ in 1v1. I wish they were better in FFA because they, they do a lot well. They do a lot well in 1v1. Quill is just Conk 3, just same as me. He's just decayed out of it. Got it. Okay. Understood. Understood. What's the format again? So today, if you go to aoe4tavern.com, you're going to be able to see the format. So let me show you. And head on over here. All right. And you can see, if you go to the description, you can see all the rules here. So these are the maps. Mongolian Heights, Golden Pit. So Mongolian Heights probably going to be having some hybrid play. I would imagine Mongols will be very good there. And uh, it's just best of one with a uh, pick and ban system. So each player is going to be banning three sieves globally per series. So six sieves will be banned in total per series uh, per best of one. And then you just pick from the remaining ones that are available. So if you're playing on like Mongolian Heights, for example, you can just ban out sieves that are very good on hybrid maps, right? Or if you know what your opponent likes to play, that obviously can be a thing as well. Yes, yes. Oh, you spectated a game last night versus Mongols, did you, John? Oh, that's cool, man. So you got to see it, yeah. It was a good little scrap. It was a, it was a good one. It got pretty wild there at the end. Yeah. Okay, so all is good, man. That's the breakdown of the matches. And as soon as we see them load into the game here, we should be able to jump in and cast. Yes, he, he's in the lobby right now. He's going to be meeting up with old Crackity. And then we'll watch from there. And then, I mean, depending on who wins that one, that next round should be pretty good as well. We're going to be having pretty sweaty games all throughout the day. And we'll be casting the semifinals, the grand finals guaranteed. We'll have the players wait for us there, and then we'll uh, we'll do it. Yeah, Age of Empires games, man. I was playing Stormgate, and uh, I played Stormgate, what, like uh, about a week ago? And I was also playing some StarCraft II games. It's crazy how fast that game is. Like StarCraft and Stormgate, the matches are over so quickly. They're over so incredibly quickly. Like a lot of high-level Stormgate games, once you get to a little bit of a higher rank, those ones are just over in like minutes. Compared to Age of Empires, where you're really kind of playing the... Uh, the long grind, which I honestly prefer. I prefer a little bit of a slower start into a more intense kind of mid-game. 1v1, yes please. Yeah, we got you, man. I'm not playing today myself. Um, we're just going to be uh, casting. 
saving the old pause. Got some other stuff I need to work on tonight. So uh, yeah, life's good. Life's good. Waiting for StarCraft 3. I wonder if we'll get that. I mean, Microsoft bought Blizzard, right? Didn't they? Am I wrong about that? I think they did. I think Microsoft bought Blizzard, which means that, um, I mean, Microsoft is like the bankroll behind Age of Empires 4. So to start, do they really want to put out a competitor to Age of Empires 4? I mean, it is a bit of a different kind of niche within that genre. Age is kind of its own unique beast. I would love to see a, a new Warcraft game or a new Starcraft game. I'm certainly not holding my breath. I feel like Blizzard's going more in the direction of like mobile gaming and kind of uh, that younger generation, of course, you know, to really cash in. But I don't know. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Warcraft 4, I'd be pretty hard for that. I'm not going to lie. That would be very, very exciting. That would be very exciting. But I, I don't know. I don't really have too much faith in Blizzard these days. Will Stormgate become a staple of the stream? Uh, it depends. It depends on how the final version of it is. Uh, as it currently is now, it's fun to jump into. But, you know, with the limitations only having the, you know, tier two and only two factions out of three, it's it, it can, you know, it needs a little bit more, a uh, little bit more polishing. But, it, I mean, it depends. It certainly could be at some point. Yeah, it certainly could be. Need to give those Kong 3 guys a chance to win, I know. I know. Well, of course, uh, they would certainly have no problems uh, beating me up. Yeah, yeah, Blizzard isn't what it used to be. I agree. I agree. You know, I've, I've gotten my hope up multiple times over the past 10 years and just always been disappointed, like always. Yeah. It's a shame. World of StarCraft. Yeah, aren't they doing something new with StarCraft? They said something's happening, but it's not an RTS game. What would they possibly do? I mean, they already have like a, you know, kind of a, a zoomer shooter game. They have a Overwatch, right? I mean, StarCraft would certainly work well for that. But I mean, you would want to incorporate, you know, all the different factions. I guess you could do like, uh, you could have like the Zerg and a shooter, right? You'd have like a Hydralisk character and uh, a Zergling that can like bounce off the walls and stuff. I don't know. So they're still uh, lining up here. Yeah, they're in the lobby. So they're doing their picks and bans. Here's Anatan as well. Senpai is playing in our tournament today. He was a semifinalist a couple weeks ago. So a lot of the local champs are uh, are back, ready to take a crack at the uh, throne. Warcraft 3 re <clears throat> refunded, yeah. Forged was a pretty big disaster for sure. It really was. It really was. Starcraft Ghost at long last? Oh my god, I remember that. Hey, Pwn, how you doing, man? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I played some StarCraft games, though. It's still smooth as ever. I, I mean, I put in so many hours in that game. So many hours. All right, we're getting messaged by somebody. So that sounds good. Aces. Good luck, man. I know Quill is really good at Ayubids. I think that's one of his main sieves, and honestly, I don't blame him. I've been playing Ayubids, and they're, they're just so... So it's just smooth as butter to play, man. Smooth as butter. With Ayubids, like, you can, you can... Their fast castle is really nice. If you want to play that way. I honestly think with Ayubids, one of the best ways to play is just going to be uh, opening up with a military wing reinforcement. Okay, I think this is good. Yeah, looks like it should be spectatable in a second. So you open with the military wing reinforcement, which gives you free camel archers um, or the desert raiders. They're so damn good. I mean, they counter so much of the feudal age tech, right? Like horsemen, they wreck horsemen. And uh, they also can poke spears. Archers are pretty good against them, though. That's one thing that's a little bit dodgy. But they give you immediate pressure on your opponent. And then you just kind of turtle up with those free units, build a couple barracks, go fast castle with the uh, the rapid advancement, and just start building ghouloms and camel lancers. Like, it's really, really good. And then you can grab all the relics and do all that good stuff, man. Danny Dragon says, Turn, be proud of Pwn. He is... <laughs> yeah, refuses your top level coaching. <laughs> yeah, Pwn, Pwn and I have been having some fun, man. We've been playing. We, we, we do well in the team FFA games, that's for sure. Are they bad in FFA because they have the same weaknesses as Bastards? Well, yeah, that's the thing. The endgame power of the Ayubids, like most of the strength of the Ayubids in my anecdotal experience comes from what you get done in the early game, which falls off in FFA pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, look, you can go Ayubids and probably take one person out, but in a, in a big FFA match, it's going to be a bit tricky. All right, man. Let's get it. So we got the Abbasid Dynasty versus the Chinese. So I have a feeling that maybe, maybe the Ayubids were banned out of the series. Maybe. But we got two OG civs going out of here. China can be very good. Uh, certainly very micro-intensive. You have to be very on point with your uh, tax collectors. And you got your whole dynasty system. Fairly complicated. But once you're able to master them, a player like Krakity, who is one of the top players you know, in the world, is probably going to be able to handle that. And I know... Quill, if I remember correctly, a couple seasons ago, I remember watching him, and he was like the Terminator on the Abbasid. It was either Quill or... I can't remember. I think it was Quill. So I know his Abbasid is very good. And these are both civs that are going to be playing a little bit slower and getting into the late game here. So 
I think that um, I, I found that trying to play civs that really like 2TC has been a little bit harder this season due to the map pool, but this is Mongolian Heights. And Abasa do have cheaper docks, and China obviously can build on the water pretty quickly as well. So, yeah, we're going to see if they decide to play the river. Should be quite a bit of fun. Uh, Max, we will chat about that a little bit later on our next break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the east side of the map, it is going to be the Dark Lord Krakity, and he is going to be on the Chinese. He's coming back to defend his throne. So he did win our last tournament, and he had a very, very uh, solid win against Anatan, which was in a really, really intense series. Immediately going to be pulling six villagers and slapping those bad boys on the nearby straggler trees and then heading to the river from there as well. Yeah, Don, we just started, man. We just started. Make sure you're in our Discord. Um, we usually will do these like once a week, once every two weeks, but... um. Yeah, if somebody does end up dropping early on, yeah, we could yeah. substitute you in. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if somebody drops early or doesn't show up in the initial rounds. On the southwest, we have our homegrown champ. It's going to be Quill. You've seen him win many FFA games, and he is going to be on the Abbasid, taking advantage of the cheaper docks, which only cost 75 wood. That's what she said. So he's going to be dropping some river docks, I would imagine. And you do see the Abbasid dock immediately being dropped on the northwest side of the river. Whereas Crackity, a little bit quicker on the dock uptime because he does have the Chinese uh, build speed is able to get his docket faster, although he does get supply blocked here. So it looks like there will be a house coming in just a second. And there you go. So the dock is going to be getting his first boat out before the Abbasid dock oh, even uh, finishes. Uh. So that's very, very nice. China going to be up to a slight economic advantage. GG, right? 11 to 10 here in the very early stages of the game. And down to the southwest, what do we got going on? Nice cheap haul here from Quill. Not bad at all. So he's going to be dropping those bad boys off at the base and looking at old Crackity. Crackity able to find some sheep as well. So he does have the four sheep here and is going to be heading up to the north and uh, looking to scavenge what he can. Granted, a lot of this map does come down to the contesting of the river. So we're going to see what happens there. Is it going to be a ground-based force looking to push the opponent off? Or is it mostly just going to be kind of mortal combat in the river with demo ships taking out the enemy docks? It's always a good time, man. Always a good time. Where can uh, I watch Quill? Does he stream? He does not, to my uh, knowledge. Um, I know sometimes in our Discord, if you're in our Discord, we have a very active Age of Empires community. Like, if I, last I looked before the stream started, we had like 17 people in chat together, um, live streaming their games and whatnot. So if you join our Discord, you can totally just get the Age of Empires role, get in there and hang out. And they're really great people. And uh, you can go in and watch those. So yeah, should be fun, man. Should be fun. But over on the east side, Crackity going to be setting up his lumber mill. Obviously very, very hard on the river. Has he transitioned onto the gold yet? Doesn't look like it. And the Abbasid have had a minor transition onto gold. So we do see one villager on gold here. And then you're just going to be seeing the House of Wisdom. And this villager probably heading on over to gold from there. Looking to get that age up. So the Abbasid are one of the civs in the game I'm probably least familiar with. I'm curious what he is going to be doing. If he does go for the military age up, it immediately grants you a couple military units. So if you look at the military wing... It will give him um, two spearmen and two archers. So, I mean, that could be something he could use to contest the river, go down here and start poking his opponent on the water. As far as age up goes, nobody has the food at the moment. Crackity sitting on 70 food, whereas Quill over here is going to be sitting on 110. So pretty similar in terms of income there. Both players do have, a, I would say, a comparable amount of fishing boats. Yeah, we got four fishing boats here, and it's going to be four fishing boats for the old Crackity with the fifth one popping up here. So yeah, both players pretty much neck and neck in terms of their fishing economies. Both are on single dock at this point as well. So yeah, it's good times, man. Lumber going, triple on uh, gold here. Food, it looks like there's going to be six villagers on food. We can take a look at the villager split right now to see who is hitting what. And currently we do see Quill is a little bit more invested in food, whereas Crackity is going to be kind of staying in the river a little bit longer and uh, producing more fishing boats. Whereas Quill has kind of opted to stop producing fishing boats, which means he is going to be falling a little bit behind economically. However, if he does get that age up faster, which he likely will, uh, he is going to be able to potentially pressure his opponent out of the river. Uh, in what wing is he going to go? So he's going to go economic wing. So he's going to go for the Fertile Crescent, which let's take a look here. So it reduces the cost of economy buildings and houses by 25%. Very nice for classic 2TC play. Uh, agriculture is also not bad at all. Gather rate from farms isn't bad. And improved processing is uh, obviously always going to be good. 8% more resources being dropped off across your entire faction. In tandem with the Golden Age buffs that you're getting from villager gather rate is pretty damn solid, man. I mean, the Abbasid are going to be getting a 20% gather rate from all resources and then another 15%. So that's going to be really good. Plus 8% on this. It really stacks up. I mean, Abbasid late game economies, even though they don't have a mechanic like the English, that's going to be giving them free gold throughout the course of the game. They can go absolutely bananas. So the age up's on the way and now he's going to be switching into 2TC. So he's going to be going 2TC as well as playing here on the river. And wait a second, is Crackity going to be doing some sort of a weird proxy here? Oh my God, where's he going with these villagers? 
This is a bold strategy, Cotton. I mean, that's a lot of idle time and a lot of villagers that are going to be idling here. He blocks the river off. Uh, he does have a gold transition now and probably will be aging up at the barbecue. Is he going to be doing a proxy barbecue on his opponent on the golden stone? He does discover it back here. So he sees what's cracking. Um, the next age is going to be coming soon, though. And where is that Barbican going to be going? Yeah. Oh, my God. We're getting a Barbican proxy. This is really risky here. He's going to be putting it down right next to his opponent's berry patches, which I don't know how devastating that's going to be, but he would have obviously liked to have done it back here. This would be the absolute hard on, right? Because if you drop it here, you deny deer, stone, and gold, and potentially a little bit of wood. Here, it's not too much of a denial. I think Quill just needs to ignore this for now. He's pulling villagers, but the Chinese villagers with good micro probably will be able to finish this. I would imagine Crackity is going to be able to pull them back. And Quill, I think, realizes this and is going to be retreating back. The thing is, the Abbasid also get free siege engineering. So you can, you know, build battering rams pretty quickly if you want to. But what China is probably going to be doing is building the Barbican, then just gathering berry bushes here. I think that's going to be their game plan. But we do get the dreaded Crackity Barbican proxy. And is he going to be taking the berry bushes or heading all the way home? It looks like he's heading home right now. And now Quill is going to be maybe setting up a tower here. It looks like he's eyeing the river. The old fishing boat's certainly out in uh, serious numbers. We have 11 fishing boats against the uh, Abbasid, who only have six at the moment. So Krakadi certainly is going to be having a bit of an economic advantage. And he does opt to build a village back here so he can hide his villagers and, uh, you know, pillaging his opponent's wood in his own territory. The disrespect. The disrespect. So early military kind of tech for both players. We do have a tower coming up here for the Abbasid, which means they're just looking to either go fast castle or 2TC. Uh, very safely without military and obviously it's going to be 2TC with the Abbasid, right? That's pretty much what their dog and their mom and, you know, their third cousin is going to be doing every single game. So he is going down and a little bit of long distance mining here looking at the stone for Quill. So let's take a look at the total reserve here. Uh, Quill is sitting on 190. So he's getting close. It's getting there. Uh, down in the river we do see quill trying to torch down this wall and he's going to get there eventually although china gets that junk out so the junk is in the trunk and uh, this could be very problematic for quill we're likely going to be seeing his river economy getting torched here because crackity is just going to be deleting these walls and probably sailing up river very quickly and do we see any military ships coming out we do not see the naval arrow slits he might want to get that honestly it will delay his second tc but it's going to keep him from getting absolutely swept in the river because i think crackity I w I'm surprised he's not moving up here right now. Maybe he assumes his opponent has some sort of a military uh, boat as well. But we have the most sweaty duel of all time, baby. It is going to be the town center and the barbecue under the sun duking it out. We're going to see who's going to win that thousand-year duel, who will stand the test of time. For China, no military tech. Obviously going to be going Castle Age pretty quickly here. Um, you know, maybe we're going to even see a Song Dynasty. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Krakeny doesn't quite have the food for it yet, but a Song Dynasty drops like right in here. Uh, would certainly help with the taxes and get that villager augment going. Or we could see a really fast castle out of him and then maybe just a bunch of palace guard rushing in, maybe some knights or lancers. Um, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they decide to do. So Krakity going to be scouting up and about. He does have his uh, scout hugging the northwest side of the map. Going to be eyeing and seeing the second TC pretty quickly. It's a nice second TC though. This is pretty good. Right next to the stone, obviously you got your deer right here as well. So if the river economy does get compromised, he's not going to be completely out of this game. But Krakity already has a bit of a surround. And look at this. We do get a proxy archery range here. Interesting. So maybe going to be building up some archers. Uh, overall, I would say Quill's base is going to be very resilient against the um, archery play. Uh, so far, I mean, is he going to go for battering rams? It's not going to be Zhugnu. He's not playing the OP sushi. Although now he's going to be able to make Zhugnu, so maybe he will. Okay, so it looks like he's going to be going for the kill on Quill here. Uh, we do see the blacksmith coming, which is a huge indication of siege engineering. So probably going to be seeing Zhugnu being pumped out in droves. Uh, and yeah, he's going to be coming to do a little bit of towering. Yeah, he's really trying to just clamp down on Quill's base here. And we're going to see what Quill's going to respond with. And now we see triple archer range come out. And Abbasid are really good at sustaining these big militaries. They definitely got some uh, tricks up their sleeve. We do see the economic buildings being cost reduced. The river economy is still online. So Krakity has not opted to go up river. That could be extremely punishing against Quill. We see another tower coming down. So the Chinese tower is going to be here. Villagers are being pulled right now, but there is a single archer, and he does end up jumping in. Is he going to be able to reach the, the villager building? He might be able to if he manually targets here. Yeah, it looks like, unfortunately, it's shooting the tower, so that's not going to be doing too much. And is it going to be a Zhugnu switch? It is. So we got Zhugnu, we got triple archer range coming out. It's going to be triple archer on triple archer. Going to be very, very sweaty for sure. Um, I would imagine Quill might want to mix in some horsemen at some point. He does have that arrow slit tower. And now that villager is going to get picked, so I don't think Krakadee is going to be able to get that tower up. And um, we need to see a blacksmith coming out for sure. Blacksmith with the ranged armor upgrade would be super clutch here. But yeah, Krakadee's going for it, man. He does have a song dynasty, so his eco is going to be respectable. 
He has the Imperial Examinations to get more Taxation Gold. We got Siege Engineering, followed by Sealed Arrow and most likely Iron Undermesh. And then he's going to be ready to party with the All-In here. And it is going to get crazy. It's going to be getting crazy. And he also has the Barbican, which is so nice. Like, if the fighting is taking place here, he can pull back to his Barbican. He's going to have a little bit of fire support. But this is pretty gross, too. Like, he has the food economy to sustain this. And also, look, looks like he's getting, like, kind of close to Castle Age level food. However, he's spending most of his gold on upgrades and whatnot. So... Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. So, obviously, we know it's about to go down. Triple Archery Range going to be coming out for Quill, and he does also have the Horseman being produced. And will he be able to defend this? This isn't going to be easy, but both these players are very good. Crackety, of course, is a high Conqueror 3 player, um, and, yeah, essentially a professional level player. And Quill is very good as well. I've seen Quill playing against some of these pros on uh, streams and whatnot. Not streams, but, yeah, on their streams on Twitch, and uh, he's been able to take them down. So, this could certainly be anybody's game, but this is going to be a very, very tough hole. Dealing with these Jugnu all-ins is incredibly micro-intensive for the defender. It is very, very hard. The Jugnu just punish everything. Like, even Horsemen, their volume of fire can do some work. So, we see eight archers here against seven. And now the old battering ram's going to be there. Oh man, we're going to be getting a hand cannon slit as well. That's going to be brutal. The hand cannon slit, of course, uh, does hit pretty hard. And uh, it packs a, a serious punch. So multiple battering rams coming up. Archer's being produced. Not a single lapse in production here for Crackity. He has been producing nonstop. So clearly, this build is very clean. It's very well executed. He has the Song Dynasty, a massive lumber economy here with the Imperial official supervising the drop-off here. It's going to make the Chinese rams incredibly effective. So... Setting up shop here, so a battering ram knocking down one house, so that's going to be setting old Quill back a little bit. Granted, he can build more houses here. He's got triple archers coming out, and the first battering ram of his is going to be moving up. Jugnu, ironically, do pretty good damage against battering rams. Like, you can see the Jugnu actually do some good work, and wow, look at that from Crackety, the MLG micro man. He actually blocks the freaking ram from getting onto the tower with the body block here. He's got a couple horsemen coming out. Jugnu proving to be extremely dominant here as they mow down many of Quill's attacking units. Archer's going to be counterplaying, but the horsemen do get wrecked. And now we do see the battering rams on top of the TC. And this is only going to get harder and harder, man. That Jugnu blob is so incredibly hard to deal with. It is so hard to deal with. So Blackman's coming down here for Quill. I would wager Iron Undermesh and or Steel Darrow is going to be one of his first choices, but this is going to be an incredibly tough hold. We do see the uh, Triple Battering Ram coming down. That's going to be so many, and um, I honestly don't see Quill holding this. I think it's going to be incredibly tough. Um, villagers here on Deer, and the River Economy is still very much alive here for Quill, but we do see a massive score advantage as well for Crackety. Further upgrades, does he have any of these? He does have Balance Projectiles. He does not have Iron Undermesh yet, but Really, the DPS output on these guys is what you're looking for. But yeah, a lot of horsemen coming out. We do have triple stable and triple archery range. The Ambassador are incredibly good at mustering big armies. Um, they definitely can. They have a good kind of baseline economy. But 33 Jugnu against the combined uh, 18 military. I mean, the military difference is pretty big. 45 for Crackety against 23. So his military macro is insane. And um, that's probably honestly just going to be GG for old Quill. Brutal, brutal showcase of what China can do. And they were able to really just get a little bit ahead in River. The Barbican Rush was a nice kind of foundation from which they could attack. We do see the House of Wisdom going down as well. Crackety pulling back with all of his, uh, not longbows, his shortbows, I should say. The Jugnu going to be setting up another ram. And that is such a dreaded ramstein. Oh my god, dude. And uh, here they come once again. Those things are just brutal. But I mean, even in terms of like the efficiency of Jugnu... Uh, there's so many more of them. 54 against 32. He's been able to just rapid fire these bad boys out. Guys, he has triple archery range there. And the Jugnu going to be moving in. And they will certainly be melting these. I mean, screw your horsemen, man. We see pretty much an all-in here from Quill. He's going to be pulling villagers. Villagers are going to be getting picked as well. Horsemen doing a pretty good job trading, honestly. He does have a good critical mass. He did get the ranged armor upgrade, which is helping him trade against the forces. But he's also eating Barbican shots. He's eating tower shots from this outpost, which are hitting hard. Crackety gets a full surround here. And I think that Quill knows that his uh, days are numbered. So certainly a pretty unfortunate opponent to be running into in the early stages of the tournament. But it is what it is. It's the nature of competitive. Sometimes, you know, you're going to be running into tyrants and uh, you're going to have to deal with them. So that is GG well played. Crackety coming in like an absolute wrecking ball. The Duhost is extreme. Yes, it is. And I believe Crackety is actually German. So the Duhost here is certainly quite, quite an apt analogy as uh, the horsemen do move across. And uh, make one last attempt there, and that is going to be GG well played. What a brutal push. God damn. That was really nasty. Just clean, efficient, smooth as butter, and uh, at the end of the day, made that look easy for sure. And Quill is not an easy opponent. He is way better than I am. So I can only imagine how that would have been if that was on my end. But that was some serious, serious do hosting. Augmented by the river economy as well. GG well played. The Barbican was no joke. So let's take a look at the old um, website. See how the brackets are looking so far. And um, all right, let's go from there. So we'll do this. 
Take a look here. Let's refresh. So guys, we have Anatand versus Crackity. We have a heavyweight duel. These are hands down the two strongest players in our tournament in terms of like overall tournament performance. So this is going to be the match we're going to cast right now. It's going to be Anatand versus Crackity. Likely the winner will go on and go to the grand finals. I would wager. It could be wrong, but we will see. Hey, well, well played, Quill. Hold your head up high, man. That's that's a rough first round draw. You, you took it like a champ. Yeah, you took it like a champ. Lots of range teams to always be strong in RTS if you have enough. Outer region, yes, to an extent, but more so with China because of how cracked those units are. The Zhugnu are insanely good. Um, if you like, if those were mass archers, it wouldn't have been nearly as effective. Like the horsemen probably would have been able to kill them. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, the thing about water is both players have access to it, and both players benefited from it. So it was more so that the Chinese were just able to macro up an army quicker, and were able to really get the momentum with the Barbican and you know all that sort of good stuff. So. Yeah, Avastad are tricky, man. I find that they're just kind of weak in the current meta. I could be wrong. I mean, we have our, our website stats, but they don't really mean a whole lot. I mean, Mongols have been doing very well. Ayubid's also doing well. Yeah, you can see all the stats from the different matchups. However, like, don't really take these with much, you know, take them very cautiously because honestly, the um, the pool of the skill range we have of players is pretty, pretty wide on our tournament. So it's not going to be the most accurate data set like it is for Total War. Yeah, the gold from the tax is good. So he's getting a lot of money from his taxes, of course. All right. So Crackity is... He can't already be in game with Anatan, really? This is the same game, right? No, I guess we're going on to the next match. I'm so used to casting Total War where you have to wait like 20 minutes in between games. All right, guys. This is our heavyweight match of the day. It's going to be Anatan on the Byzantines versus Zhushi's Legacy and Crackity here. So two pretty solid sibs nowadays. Byzantines have been doing really well at the higher ranks. I think they still struggle at the lower ranks, but at the higher ranks, the Byzantines have been performing pretty well from what I've seen. Don't cast aside my pupil Pog yet. He can totally take on either Tyrant. Well, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. Would be epic to see an Ayubid Mega Dong Assault in the Grand Finals <laughs> Mega Dong Assault? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, Ayubids are way stronger than a Basset, for sure, in my opinion. The, the Oil Lords, yes! Let the olive oil flow through you. All right, let's see that. And outstanding. Cool, cool. So just answering question. So yes, four rounds. So just up to Gorge. All right. Let's check it out, man. Let's do it. Oh. This is going to be some seriously... This is going to be one of the sweatier games we'll have today. I, I'm really curious about what a landmark Anatan's going to go for. I feel like it's going to be the uh, olive oil. I feel like it's going to be the Grand Winery, just so you can get the double mercs out on one berry bush, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Yeah, both these guys are top top players. Um, last time, Crackity was able to win. He took a W off Anatan in the Grand Finals. Um, so we'll see how that goes. A little bit of a... But it's best of one, you know. Today's tournament is a very kind of casual, quick tournament. It's a good place for competitive players to kind of, kind of keep their blades sharp, for people in our community to kind of dip their toes in without having to commit to an all-day tournament. Um, you know, that kind of a thing, right? So, spawning on the northwest side of the map, it is going to be our returning champion. It is going to be Crackity here, going with the Zhushi's Legacy. So, most likely going to be doing something similar. I wonder if we're going to be seeing a Zhug New all in. Could be quite cool. However, spawning on the southeast side, it is going to be Anatan. Anatan, a very terrifying professional player. Very, very good. And Byzantines do have decent tools against the uh, Zhushi uh, bow spam because they can make longbows. So longbows are very good against Zhugnu with good micro. As long as you don't let them close the distance, the longbow mercenaries can certainly help you turn the tide of that fight. On top of that, Byzantines do have pretty good horsemen. If you're expecting a Zhugnu all-in, you can go um, with the Hippodrome and get the Triumph and get healing on those bad boys and uh, also pump out horsemen immediately. So I still am a big fan of the uh, winery landmark. I think it's a little bit safer overall. Um, or not safer, but more consistent. The Hippodrome is obviously probably safer because it gives you military units immediately. But getting double mercs from the berry bushes is really good. So basically, if you go with the Grand Winery, it gives you enough olive oil from your first berry patch that you are going to be able to make two batches of mercenaries instead of one. So let's say you're trapped in your base. You can't get past your initial berry bush. Uh, you can't get out to the other ones. It's going to give you another wave of mercenaries, which is really, really substantial in my opinion. So yeah, Anten is a tournament winning pro. He is. He is. He's very, very good, man. He is very, very good. So the Duel of Fates is on. Looking at China, fairly standard, obviously. We're not going to be on water for this map. So uh, we got two on gold. And that's very standard for anybody who's a little bit newer. 
Typically, you're going to be opening up with uh, two villagers on gold, and everything else is often going to be going on to food from there. Um, sometimes you'll see three, although in this case, it looks like it's going to be three here from Crackety. So maybe something a little bit different here with China, maybe to get that extra gold for the Song Dynasty. Although, no, he's playing Zhuxi, so it's going to be different. But um, yeah, I'm curious about how many we're going to be seeing here. Yeah, it looks like for the um, forces of the Byzantines, it is going to be two on gold. And the rest of the villager allocation is going to be on food, which is normally how I play. Um, I'm curious what the triple gold allocation is here from Crackety. I don't play sushis, so maybe uh, it's something that's a little bit different for them. That a small bit of extra gold might help you with some sort of attack as you do age up here. So, love and the content is always turned. Cheers to you from rainy Southern California. Hey, it sounds like we're neighbors. I live in the uh, Southern California region as well, and I hope you're doing well. We're enjoying the rain. We're enjoying the rain. So obviously he's going to be setting up the big sweaty meditation garden and that's going to be a good one. It's hitting the berry bushes, hitting the gold vein here and also the tree line. So it's going to be giving a, a good respectable amount of resources. And due to the fact that they build incredibly quickly, often sushi players will only need to put one villager on the age up, which is really strong because then they get to keep another, you know, two or three villagers on eco, whereas other civs are going to be aging up on average with three or four. And it is going to be the Hippodrome. So it looks like they're both expecting some heavy feudal fighting, which if you're expecting mortal combat and feudal, obviously Hippodrome is going to be a very good landmark. And against sushi, yeah, sushi can be pretty aggressive feudal. The Zhug New all -in is very, very nasty. And honestly, on this map, each player has two gold nodes near their base. So you got one gold node here, you got one gold node here. And then from there, it becomes a very heavy fight over the middle. So having big feudal dominance uh, can be pretty substantial. Like if you can dominate your opponent in feudal, keep them pinned back on just one gold and maybe like tower this gold and defend the middle, you can really take over the game pretty heavily by having that map controlled. So the Hippodrome is going to be popping out. And you see how there's four villagers on the Hippodrome, just another strength of Sushi's is that due to their build speed, they really only need one villager to age up. And then, you know, the other civ is going to be having to allocate four economic units onto their landmark to age up, which is uh, pretty damn scary. Why is a sushi player Chinese, not Japanese? It's it's a question of the ages, my friend. It's a question of the ages. Hungry, hungry hippodrome. Wow. I like that, Matt. That's not bad at all, man. That's not bad at all. So immediately, we're going to be seeing some horsemen in ass, I would wager. Yep, we see horses coming out. And I always wonder, like, I, I like watching these high-level players because it kind of teaches me a little bit about my own kind of build orders and whatnot. But is he going to be getting Expellatores? Uh, this is the one that gives you a bounty for killing villagers. I feel like against other higher-level players, it might not be quite as good. We do see the second cistern coming up, so that's going to be augmenting the build rate here. These villagers switching onto wood. Gather rate going to be getting a sauce up for the Byzantines. And Byzantines did get buffed. In the recent patch, they did get, uh, a, 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 there was some buffs and nerfs, but overall I would say it buffed their feudal, which is the most, was was the weakest part of their game in some ways. They were a little bit slow starting here, but the cisterns now give 10% base production speed instead of 5%, which is actually pretty big, right? And that's, uh, that adds up. That adds up to a couple more units here and there. So crackety aggression, we do see the archer range coming out and the walls on the side, so looking to prevent horseman raiding. Obviously, when you're playing against horsemen, mobility, having walls on the planks is very useful. Uh, that's going to be kind of keeping your opponent right in front of you, where you can just kind of fight them off in a choke, choke point with a bunch of Zhugnu. But you see how the uh, the old sushi players don't really care too much about, uh, you know, the unit composition in China as well. They just spam Zhugnu, because Zhugnu in numbers like, kill horsemen pretty effectively as well. Anatan doing a little bit of a uh, harass with the horsemen. Horsemen going to be riding past the meditation gardens. Uh, obviously looking for uh, some scraps, and he did not find the villager down to the south side. So Krakity's villager here is going to be able to easily get the wall off, and that will be securing a nice little alcove with which you could maybe build your granaries, right? You have the boar, which would be a nice transition, then granaries down here too. So yeah, it's just going to be attacking the meditation gardens. When the meditation gardens do get attacked, it does lower the efficiency of the resource drop-off. Uh, is there going to be a second horseman coming out? No, just one and an, a mercenary house. So I'm really curious what he's going to go for. Typically, I would say against Sushi, is it going to be the Longbow Mercs? It could be. Granted, Keshriks are also quite good. I mean, they're still armored cavalry units in the Feudal Age, which is very, very powerful. So yeah, we'll see what Anaten decides to do here. I'm going to be taking notes. That is for sure. So is there a hole here? I don't know. It kind of doesn't look like it. I don't think anything can get through there right now. So we do see a scout from Anatan torching down the walls on the backside. In the meantime, horsemen throwing at the old meditation garden. They've done about 250 damage so far, which isn't bad. But Crackity, he really likes the Zhugnu, man. He's going to be heading across. And uh, what are the mercs going to be? The mercs are going to be the Silk Road mercenaries. So Javelin Throwers makes a lot of sense, too. The Javelin Throwers are going to be an excellent counter against the Zhugnu. They have the ranged armor. They have the ranged advantage. 
because uh, right now Anatand is going to be not only finishing Wheelbarrow, but potentially getting pushed off these resources. Uh, obviously, Crackity is coming for blood, and uh, looks like he's going to be doing a full frontal wall. So we do see it. Villagers setting up the walls here. Jugnu chasing off that horseman. Granted, the horsemen are picking off reinforcements. This is really good. Really, really good. If you're playing against English, playing against China, anyone who's going to be spamming kind of a linear unit type like Longbows and or Sushi uh, Jugnu, Intercepting the reinforcements is so incredibly good. It, it just pulls your opponent apart. And Anatan has insanely good micro. You can see all of his uh, Byzantine horsemen are encircling the sushi archers. And this is starting to look a little bit dodgy here for the sushi. Uh, they're going to get charged here. And there's not enough of them to get the critical mass. And Triumph is active, active as well. That's going to be brutal. I think we're going to be seeing all of these uh, sushi jugnu going down here. They're getting taken apart by these Triumph horsemen. Because the Byzantine horsemen are currently healing, which is giving them so much extra HP. And they try and maneuver near the rocks, but literally one horseman is lost, and they're able to trade into those Zhugnu before they're able to get the critical mass. And that is a really, really rough start for old Krakeny here, as he does lose all of those Zhugnu in open field. Anatan showing the power of the olive oil. And now we are going to be seeing Javelin Thors coming out. And will Anatan just go Castle Age after this? It kind of looks like maybe some aggression. He's going with another archery range. So I suspect he might get aggressive here against Crackity. Crackity, on the other hand, I think is just going to be hanging out really defensively and uh, obviously bracing and trying to weather the storm that is Anatan's aggression here. Anatan does also have some Blacksmith Tech coming out. Um, I don't know where he put that, but it's up here. And we do have the Dialectus on, I would wager. Yes. So it is going to be researching faster. The Iron Undermesh is here. So now they're going to be having a little bit more range armor, which certainly helps against the Jugnu. But yeah, he didn't hear no bell, man. Crackity has double supervision on these archery ranges, and he is just pumping the base. He is he is just doing it. He's stepping pedal to the metal, and he's coming back with the Jugnu. He didn't hear no bell whatsoever, and is going to be moving out with a pretty considerable force. I mean, it is pretty rough to lose that amount of units, but it's not like game breaking per se. And we do see that Crackity also massively eclipses Anatan's military already. Uh, just even after losing those casualties. Truly a power, the power of sushi. But the mercenary house has gotten its first wave of javelin throwers out. Javelin throwers will be quite excellent here. Anatan Scout does get picked off by the sushi blob. Sushi, do they have any military upgrades yet? Yeah, it looks like we do have the range damage upgrade, which is very essential if you're playing with the uh, Jugnu. And he is going to be heading to his opponent's uh, little berry bush encampment here. Is there going to be a counter tower coming up? I don't think so. Anatan trying to head off reinforcements right now. You can see he's camping with his horsemen, looking for any scraps that are going to be trickling in here, but he doesn't find any. The Jugnu going to be heading up to the north and uh, trying not to just get, you know, isolated and picked off here. Crackity does have his Jugnu here. Is there enough of them to get past the horsemen? I would wager, uh, you know, obviously, Anatan's going to have to take this pretty seriously. This is a pretty, I mean, this is like a hard counter comp. This is a hard counter comp, right? We have the Javelin Thors and we have the Horsemen. I mean, both of those units should be a very, very good matchup against the Jugnu, especially with the Triumph. And currently, Triumph does have six charges or six supplies, so that's going to be a nice little window of buffs. The Horsemen will be getting a buff uh, for that duration. And it looks like Bloomery is coming out to give a damage buff to the Horsemen to make them kill the Jugnu a little bit quicker. And is it time for Anatan to strike against Krakity's uh, raid here? So Krakity coming in, trying to disrupt the uh, the aqueduct system with the Jugnu, but looks like he's going to be pulling back. He does have the siege engineering as well. So clearly Krakity trying to blaze through today's tournament, practicing his kind of Chinese style rushing. But I feel as if Anatan might be able to get the pick here. Krakity has really good response and micro though, so he's likely going to be uh, not canceling, but unifying his army here in a second. We immediately see one horseman getting picked off, but several of these Jugnu aren't quite going to make it to the reinforcing lines. This is a big fight. Honestly, this is going to be pretty decisive here. Uh, overall, we do see Anatan doing some really good damage with his javelin throws. The sushi, uh, the sushi boys are doing good damage. They're certainly mowing down a couple horsemen here and there, but they don't have that critical mass where it's like a disgusting death blob where they can just mow down their opponent. And at the end of the day, I think Anatan is going to get the W in this particular fight here. Uh, chasing back these units, all of them are going to get mowed down. And is this going to be changing up the game plan here for Crackity? He obviously needs to get these Jugnu back, create another bit of a Death Star, maybe age up, maybe go 2TC, right? Because if he goes for his equivalent of Song Dynasty, the second TC is going to be a lot cheaper. But Byzantines often will just go fast castle and, um, you know, get all the relics, take map control, get those free units from the Golden Horn Tower and pressure you into oblivion. So, man, look at that. Anatan, really, really good multitasking here as well. So while he was like in Mortal Kombat, he also had the presence of mind to uh, take down that boar. And uh, now he's going to be securing boar food under that tower there, which is going to be nice. 
And yeah, Krakeny just keeps it going, man. He just keeps producing these armies, but Anatan's military is getting pretty scary. He actually, for the first time in the game, has a substantial military advantage, 22 against 18. So clearly is going to be looking to uh, continue to win these military fights while he goes Castle Age. Because uh, looking at Krakeny, he's expending every ounce of resources he has into military, whereas Anatan is kind of creeping up on Castle Age. Currently, we see a decent food bank, a good gold bank, and uh, yeah, he's looking like he's ready to go. Are we going to be seeing a second TC? Are we going to be seeing Song Dynasty or anything from Krakity? It does not look like it. Nope. Looks like he just wants to continue fighting. And uh, he just... <laughs> that's that, man. Yeah, just the Unga Bunga. This is truly the Unga Bunga strategy. You know, just kind of you know keep beating the rock against the side of the cave wall. And eventually, maybe you'll find some treasure. Uh, we do see the Jugnu coming out in droves. So yeah, one, two, three, and four. Double Imperial Official. Uh, they're both... Are they both supervising the archers? It doesn't look like it. No, nope, taxes are being collected. The Juke New Blob has already surpassed the military of Anitan, but Anitan, I think, is going to be going castle here, maybe? Do we see any inclination of castle? We see double cistern, which is pretty normal. Usually, um, high-level business team players, from what I've been seeing, they don't do any of the early stone shenanigans anymore so much. It's more so that you just get your double cistern network up in feudal, and then once you get castle, I've seen people start to put maybe like two villagers on stone and then augment their cisterns from there. But um, yeah, it all depends, man. It all depends. Here it comes, baby. The Jugnu Blob round 10 fight. And uh, what is it going to be? Iron Undermash? Yeah, that'll help against the Javelin Throwers. I feel like Anantan is going to steamroll this. He's got a lot of horsemen, man. He's got a lot of horsemen and Javelin Throwers. And Javelin Throwers are excellent. And a second batch of Javelin Throwers coming out. I mean, Javelin Throwers have uh, four ranged armor in the Feudal Age. That is incredibly good. I mean, the Jugnu are barely going to be doing any damage against those bad boys. Barely anything. So Krakity's going to be grabbing a boar. He does lose one villager to the dread boar there, but it's going to be worth it. So he does get that boar food. So both players are going to be on the boar. Anton's likely going to go castle here. I mean, I think I think he just goes castle, defends in his base, gets the golden horn tower, and then he just wins. Uh, he upgrades his mercenaries to be castle age. He can even start pumping out some uh, Chatterfrax. Chatterfrax can be... They're very expensive, but a Chatterfrax can do brutal damage if it's able to kind of get a, a jump on feudal units. That's where they are really, really bullies. Horseman, they could go do some raiding, maybe torch some of the walls here just to put a little bit of stress on your Zhushi opponent. Is Krakity going to be changing his game plan? Is he going to be trying to age up? It really doesn't look like it. We're just seeing non-stop military units being produced. And currently he does have 50 military, so he's going to be going after Anatan once again. Anatan's Byzantine legions, the horsemen, archers, and uh, javelin thrower comp. Very nasty. And uh-oh, here comes the golden tower. This is basically going to be an all-in here from uh, from Krakity. When he sees this age up, he's probably going to pull you know all the military he has and just go for it. Because at that point, if you let your opponent sit in castle for too long, and they're they're just going to just take over. Uh, we're probably going to be seeing the horsemen get upgraded immediately, and um, you know most likely a ranged tier two, the wedge ribbits, is going to be a big priority as well. And you're just going to be dead in the water here. So he does have the middle, and that is a hell of a lot of Jugnu. I mean, talking about critical mass. This is where it happens. This is where it happens. Yeah, the, the Dread Zhug New Legion. So, Golden Horn Tower is going to be finishing, and it will be producing Camel Riders and Javelin Throwers right away, depending on what it gets. Yeah, it's going to be Javelin Throwers, which is clutch. And what upgrades is Anatan going to be doing? Yep, Horsemen and Mercenaries. That's it. Now you just chill. You just sit in your base. You make Krakity come to you. Um, I mean, Krakity could try and age up himself. It looks like he's banking a little bit of food now, but no, he's, make, he's massing out Spears now, too. Wow. Triple racks for Krakity, man. Yeah, he's going all in, but his opponent's going to be Castle Age here in a second, and Anachan's army is no joke either. And if he gets Castle Age, he'll probably be able to overwhelm his opponent, um, likely using the archers to pick off the spearmen. See, I don't have good enough micro to do that, but players like Anachan do. And yeah, he's going to be getting the mercs, and man, Byzantine's tech is so quick because of the Dialectus. So they're going to be getting 90% faster research speed. This was nerfed in the most recent patch, but it's still insanely good. So when Byzantines age up, they can get that next technology so, so incredibly quickly. So the Jugnu are here in heavy numbers. Anatan's going to be coming for that booty. He's going to be charging down the hill. He does have his javelin throwers and the whole party ready to go. But don't underestimate the sushi blob. It is very scary. So Archer's going to be shooting into spears. Javelin throwers are throwing into the Jugnu as well. Triumph is active, and it looks like Anatan is just going to be going for it. He knows there are some spears in there. But with the Triumph, the Byzantine's probably going to be able to kind of endure this. We'll have to see. Javelin throwers, they do have the two ranged armor upgrade as well. So the sushi bow is going to be doing basically no damage. And we do see Krakity's sushi blob getting chased back to the Shadow Realm by Anatan's dreaded Horseman Legion. And the Triumph just now wore off, and uh, that probably is going to be the end of the road for sushi. I mean, sushi could try and defend here and maybe go Castle Age themselves. That might be their only chance. But Anatan with a crushing victory out in open field, he's able to run those guys down. 
And that is going to be it for that sushi army. Man. Anatan defending against everybody's worst ladder nightmare. And it's very cathartic, too. We've all felt that. We've all suffered against mass Zushi bows. And I personally usually don't have the micro to deal with it, but it's very cathartic to see the Sushi bows getting <laughs> getting taken down, right? Yeah, man, that was a brutal, brutal fight. Now the Horseman going to be surging into the base. Crackety, will he continue to defend? The eco difference isn't that big, but the age difference is quite substantial. He attempts to get a Desperation Wall up, and uh, he does get it up. That's what she said. He has a lot of spears back here, but this army coming in is going to be pretty devastating. He's going to need to run these villagers before he starts to take heavy casualties here. And we are going to be seeing the Mount Lu Academy. So Crackety during all that was, um, yeah, yeah, he's going to get the uh, Dynasty system going as well. But man, Anatan is a ruthless hunter, man. He hunts down all those villagers. It's absolutely nasty. And now it's going to be heading to the north and he might be able to find some villagers. Crackety was able to get away. Dude, Anatan is like a bloodhound. Look at this. He just finds his prey. He knew there was something going on back here and he sends a horseman over there. Crackety's got his prison shanks out. And it's going to be trying to fight, but um, Crackety does manage to get the Castle Age here. He gets the Taxation to building. Obviously, not going to be going for the Monks or anything like that. But if Crackety gets these Villagers hunted, um, that would probably be GG. That would be too much of a Villager uh, loss there. And is he going to get the walls? He does! Look at that! Crackety with the MLG wall off. He does have these Spears being upgraded here, but they're probably uh, going to get overwhelmed. I love this! Crackety's so scrappy. Look at him go, man. Those horsemen have found their prize, though. Look at this. Oh, my God. This is like a horror movie. So he's, he's building this and then building another layer of walls to buy time for his spears to arrive. See, this is such good play. This is like such skill, man, the way he's doing this. Now he needs to go back and maybe maybe rebuild these. I'm not sure. But he does have Castle H Spearman. Crackety's still hanging in there, man. He's not completely out of this game yet. Certainly on the back foot. Byzantines are going to be getting a lot of advantages here. Most likely going to be grabbing relics quickly. Anachan loses a couple of horsemen here. And dude, all that sweaty micro. And he saves... He saves those villagers, most likely. Um, the Byzantine ranged core, I'm not sure where they are. Uh, we see the horsemen being chased back by the spearmen. The spearmen probably would win that fight. It would be pretty close, but I think they would find a way to win it. And the Byzantine archers moving into the base, uh, trying to pick off villagers wherever they can. Krakity is down by 10 villagers right now, um, which is certainly not a good position to be in uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Looking at the Byzantine base, Goldenhorn Tower, now he's going to be gathering a little bit of stone, grabbing relics as well. Even the proxy monastery on top of the relics, pretty sweet. Chatterfrax being mixed into the army, and Krakity knows it's over and is going to be tapping out. He had like 10 spears, and Anatan had a really big army here and was going to be able to just kind of rampage through his base here. So really, really, yeah, Fortnite strategies. Krakity played like a champ, man. It was a good game. Um, but Anatan was able to bring his Dark Lord status to bear and uh, certainly looking like the favorite to win today's tournament. But we will have to see. We will have to see, my friends. All right. So taking a look here. Let's see what's cracking. Where are we? So over on to the old AOE4 Tavern. Our AOE4 tournament website, which we use every couple weeks. <laughs> and Chan has won. He's going to be playing the winner of Prime and Inca, which I'm going to go cast right now. We have Nomad and J-Barbs and uh, Dragovan and Book on the bottom side. So we got some good matches. And um, yeah, we're about ready. So let me see. I'm going to cast this match. I'm going to do Inca and Prime right now. So let's do that. Prime is, of course, uh, he recently reached Conqueror 3. So shout out to our boy Prime. He's in the big leagues now. So we're going to see if that translates to some tournament victories here today. As uh, they're going to be getting their match going in just a second. We will cast that one. Man, really, really good matches we had early. Really, really good ones. Yeah, those, were, those were super fun. All right. Yep. Uh, 1245. So they were doing their picks and bans four minutes ago. So we should be getting into this. The thing about Prime is he's a Japanese main. I don't know how good he is at other civs. So if he gets those banned, it could be a little bit of a problem, right? Out of regions like, well, this journey goes so much faster, I know. It really makes you <laughs> it makes you look at Total War differently, right? Yeah. It's fun, man. The word clubbing makes you tired. Yeah, I, I don't think the last time I went to a nightclub would have been, oh, man. I can't even remember. Maybe, what year is it? 2024? Maybe like 2014, maybe 10 years ago, I would say. Yeah, it's been a long time. Arena Emperor in chat says, I can confirm Prime doesn't practice other civs regularly at all. So if his opponent knows what he's good at, um, this could be a problem for Prime. Could be a problem for him. We'll have to see. Okay, so let's see here. Quilled is playing some quick battle games after his uh, his attempt earlier. Have they started yet? I don't think so. 
Yeah, they're still they're still looking for the lobbies and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know what year it is, man. I don't know. <laughs> I just like the dance. I danced 15k steps last night. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's certainly good exercise. Certainly good exercise. Imagine you're a knight and you see a giant skyscraper all over rolling each other. <laughs> yeah, Byzantines, I think I feel are a very high skill for cap faction, but I feel like in the hands of these like top level players, it, they can be um, they can be very very good. Okay, so they're still playing. We could jump into another game. Let me check. So we got Book playing against Dragovan. I believe, yeah, they're both. Those guys are both really high level too. Uh, I don't know if they put a spectator on. They might not have, so we might not be able to cast that one, which is fine. We'll we'll remind them for the later rounds. But um, it looks like they either just slowed it in or, um, yeah, we're not sure. We are not sure. Once you reach 30 nightclubs or too much effort. Yeah, it's like, it's a lot, you know? It's a lot. Uh, matches, yeah, they're browsing custom here. Sometimes the, is Nomad still playing? Did he win his game? Let me check. We could cast his match. Nomad versus J Barbs, okay. Okay, we can do a little Nomad action. For some reason, though, I think my friends list is, like, frozen. I don't know if they put a spec slot on. They might have. Hmm. So, I don't see the option to spectate them. I'm not seeing options to spectate any of these games. I wonder if they just forgot. Yeah, they usually you would be able to spectate here. So, I feel like something funny is going on here. Maybe I need to restart my game real quick. So let me do that, and uh, we'll see if that fixes it. Because those little menus can get bugged out at times. It could be a little bit weird. If you could teleport to a specific time in the past, oh my god, I don't know. That's a, that's always a fun question, you know. Uh, people will always often say, oh, I'd love to go see like ancient this or ancient that, but like, man, in ancient times you get one illness, one infection, you get food poisoning from not being used to their food, and you could just straight up die. You know what I'm saying? It could just be over quick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Being immobile and having McDonald's is part of the American culture. <laughs> In some parts of the country, yeah. Like, I would say if you're... So, I, my family comes from essentially three regions in the United States. From California, Texas, and New York City. So, I have a bit of expertise with uh, many, parts of our, um, many parts of our country. I would say that in the South, like in Texas, and you know, um, I also have some fam family from Oklahoma from way back when. Um, obesity is much more of a serious thing in those parts of the country in like the South and the Midwest. On the coasts, obesity is still really serious compared to much of the world, but yeah, not as much, quite as much as like going to the South and kind of seeing all that. Yeah. All right. So now I, I seem to be able to observe some games. Uh, let me make sure they have the observe open and tell them. The... Yeah. Make sure, okay. Make sure spec slot is on. And I'll message prime as well. Make sure spec is on. All right. Is it ironic eating, fa eating fast <laughs> makes you slow? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, so I just messaged both of the players to make sure spectator slots are on and we're gonna be casting this game. And we should be good to go. Yeah. I think like yeah, some of the some of the the most the heavy duty obesity I saw was probably in Texas. It was it was a small town. Although in California and Los Angeles, there's some pockets where you see it. Like if you if you lurk around fast food joints, you're going to be seeing some heavy duty obesity for sure. Also in the Central Valley in California, I saw some as well. <laughs> Dare you call my people out like this? Yeah. Food in the South is really good though. The thing is, it's like I you know I uh, my grandma was from Texas, right? And she. One of her favorite things to make make for you when you visit is like sweet tea, right? So it's gonna be that, um, it's just like this really good black tea and then they, they just like fill it with sugar and it's like sweet tea, right? Like that is so bad for you to just have on a daily basis, but it's like a staple of, um, of that culture in many ways. So like just little things like that add up for sure. Behold turn the fat cowboy throwing lasso catch. <laughs> yes, it's good, man. All right, so did they put the spec slot on? Yes, baby, we got a match. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so both these players are going to be kind of knocked off their mains. The Incan is uh, won our very first tournament we had on the website. He won it with the Mongols. I can't remember who he beat in that. I think he beat Quill in the Grand Finals. It was a really, really good match. 
but it's going to be the Incan on the French versus uh, Conquest on the English. Both these players, I believe, are between Conqueror 1 and Conqueror 3, somewhere in that ballpark, so this should be a very sweaty match for you guys. Should be a very sweaty match. Oh, but it, it's for sure, like, even though California has a fair amount of healthy food, um, pretty much every person who's moved to the United States from, you know, Asia, from Europe, whatever that I've known throughout college and whatnot, they all gained weight. They all got heavier. It's just like the portions here are bigger. There's more sugar in our food. Um, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Both are solid Conquer 2 players. That's great. Yeah, it should be fun, man. Yeah, America, the sweet tea is really good. Southern sweet tea, it's like, you know, because it, it can get pretty hot in the South as well. My, my grandma used to make that all the time. Yeah. Uh, fun fact says uh, Dandy uh, my family and I are southern born and raised and we hate sweet tea that's pretty rare that's pretty rare for sure you're a bit of an anomaly oh Conquest is Prime that's right why is he, why is he changing his name why is he trying to confuse us here come on Prime yeah you're lucky Wicked that's pretty rare man that's pretty rare sugar is hard to avoid even in the grocery store it is it really is it's in everything it's in everything I know that the European Union has more strict regulations on food ingredients, so I would imagine people over there generally are going to be a little bit more lean. Yeah. Southern sweet tea. It's, um, I mean, let me show you real quick. Hold on. I can just pull up like some. Yeah. So it's basically just, um, yeah, it. So Southern sweet tea is, um, Southern style sweet teas rely on granulated cane sugar. Uh, <laughs> so it's basically just like tea and then you put in like lemons or um, various other like citrus and you just douse it with sugar it's just that's what it is um, why do southerners put baking soda in sweet tea do they actually do that adding a little baking soda to your tea will clear away any cloudiness left in the mixing process interesting yeah I didn't know that I didn't know that <laughs> yes we also microwave our tea here that's the other forbidden fruit we, we microwave our tea. I'm sure all of the people in the in Europe are, are cringing and suffering with that comment. All right, perfect. So let's get this party started, man. Let's have some fun. Thank you guys all for joining today. Mm. Gunhound says, when I left for college and left my mom's Southern home cooking, I lost 45 pounds in a year. <laughs> yeah, it's so true, it's so true. Yeah. It's just tea with a ton of sugar and citrus in it. It's really good, though. It's really good. What has more sugar, though? Sweet tea or Dr. Pepper? It's honestly probably in the same ballpark. Yeah, it depends. It depends. Yeah. I honestly, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like super sugary stuff anymore as I got older. Thankfully, I didn't get a sweet tooth for it. The one thing I did develop a taste for as I got older was beer, though. It's not good. I, eat, I like, dislike beer, but when I hit my mid-30s, like, if you give me a good stout, even, like, a Guinness or something, I'm just, like, it's just, it's, like, bliss. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. 57 seconds. These are two of our Discord champions as well. Prime and Inkin. Both are currently ranked at... Well, Prime is Conk 3 now. And Inkin, I believe, is uh, going to be somewhere in that ballpark as well. Probably like Conk 1, Conk 2 range. Yeah. When can we see you compete in one of these 1v1 tournaments? Uh, I would do it sometime. Yeah. I prefer to cast them, but I would play. I wouldn't have any chance against the Conk 3 players. But against other Conker players like 1 and 2, I, I can definitely hang with them. Europeans do drink too much coffee. Well, coffee addiction is pretty big in the United States as well because we have like a really like grueling work culture. I mean, most most folks, most of my friends, you know, work really rough jobs and like many hours. So coffee is a big part of their uh, their repertoire to just get them through the days. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's, it's uh, the U.S. is definitely very like sink or swim for sure. But you know, if you swim, you can get some work done. That's for sure. The amount of people who eat off paper plates—it's not that common in California. That's for sure. Unless you're having like a barbecue or something like that. All right. It's go time, man. Enough games. Spawning on the northeast side of the map. It is going to be the Old French and the Incan. So the Incan is one of the dark wizards of cavalry culture. So he's obviously very good at the Mongols. But we're going to be seeing if he can replicate that success with the French here against uh, Prime, who's going to be playing the English down on the southwest yeah, side. Mark. Now he's going to be opening with the dreaded beastie style double farm. Now, I think one of the benefits of doing this is that it does give you more time to scout the map, right? So oftentimes if you're scouting, you're grabbing sheep, whatever, you have to come home and drop off more sheep or else your people are going to be running out of sheep under the TC. But when you do this, 
The big benefit of going for the double farm opening is the fact that you are going to be able to stay out on the map a little bit longer. I think that that's how I perceive it. I think that would be the big benefit of the double farm because the gather rate of the farms isn't going to be that insane at the moment until you get like a mill online, right? But it is going to be the double farm opening here for Conquest as the old English continue scouting, grabbing sheep. And honestly, he's having a really, really good run of sheep. Now, looking at the French... Not so much luck. Um, currently, the Incan only has two sheep. And looking at Prime, Prime's going to be rocking seven and eight. So he's gotten his eighth sheep here. And man, he's going to find those sheep up there. He's going to be up to 10 sheep. So really not a good start for the French. Uh, did he drop his sheep off in the base? Looks like he's only with his starter sheep. So he's probably honestly going to have to switch to the berry bushes here pretty soon. Uh, he does manage to find another sheep here and down in this region. It's pretty barren. I mean, there is one here, a couple over here that he's likely going to be able to get. We'll have to see. But yeah, Prime definitely winning the early sheep mini game here, and he is doing it. So somebody in chat, Arena, saying, I got to sit in the Civ draft. Both were well aware of each other's best civs, and we saw Mongols, Autos, Roos, and Japan all off the table. Not surprised to see it. It's cool, though. You know, it it encourages competitive players in this game. They can't be only good at one civ. You need to kind of be comp competent at at least probably between three and five civs um, at a competitive level. Obviously more, the more the merrier, right? Like, if you look at a player like Beastie or something, he's probably good at, like, you know, Pretty much every save or most of them. But decent haul here. He's going to be getting seven sheep and uh, taking those back to the base. So at the end of the day, it doesn't end up being too much of a disaster. Both players kind of just split the map. Prime got uh, 10 sheep and looking at the French, they got seven. So it's really not that bad. Uh, overall, he's going to be okay. If Prime had been able to kind of snake these sheep near his base before going, that would have been pretty, um, pretty serious as well. So Council Hall coming out for the English, and we are going to be seeing School of Cavalry. Current villager allocations are going to be four villagers on the School of Cavalry page up, and it is going to be four for the English as well. I wonder if this is going to be a big feudal fight. Personally, the way I play English is kind of like a bit of a mouth breather. Uh, I, like to just, I like to just sit in my base and just build farms and go 2TC. It's my favorite. So if you build two TCs with the English, uh, you build it um, like the corner of your second TC is right here. And it goes down here and you build farms here and here and then you just build the white tower right here and wall this off like you have a really sustainable nasty english fortress which is super hard to push so i like to go 2tc into two racks of eight farms followed up by white tower like really quickly and then you get castle and you start spamming crossbows and knights and then you start playing the game pretty heavily so uh we'll see though i'm curious how old uh, prime is going to be playing the english england are very very good they're a very steady so very safe extremely forgiving Hard to punish. Um, many of the like annoying early cheeses, like you know what we saw earlier, like Barbican Rush, Tower Rushes, um, things like that. The English are pretty much impervious to it because if you bring early villagers near their villagers, they have bows. So they're going to be able to shoot your villagers that are like Tower Rushing and being trolls and uh, doing all sorts of stuff like that. But the French do have a minor economic lead. If, in case you guys uh, forgot, the French, of course, do get a uh, little bit of villager production bonus, which is kind of cool. It's, uh, you know, been overshadowed by old Jean d'Arc these days. But, uh, you know, they get some work done. School of Cavalry is going to be finishing. We should immediately be seeing a French knight come out. Does he have enough food for it? It's kind of close. If he cancels a villager here, he would. But um, you should always get a French knight out very quickly just to go harry your opponent and keep them honest, right? Like, if it'll force a tower... It's going to force maybe a couple military units out. It gives you map control. lets you uh, really kind of take initiative on the battlefield here. So we are going to be seeing our first mill. And are we going to see Strelbora coming out right away? Um, we do not see the stone transition. So we don't see that. So looks like he's going to be on 1TC. And that's not a bad strategy either. Going fast castle with the English and then building the King's Palace is totally viable as well. It gives you your second TC. Make sure you don't have an age disadvantage and, uh, you know, it ain't bad. Also, something to note is there's no trade on this map, so it's not like you need to worry about, like, oftentimes one of the disadvantages of, like, turtling English players is you're going to be yielding things like trade and relics, but on this map you only really have to worry about relics um, because there's no trading posts. I mean, you could trade. If your opponent gave you a market or something and didn't notice, you could do some dreaded Smeagol trading, get extra sneaky there, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, no military being built here by Prime. Uh, we do have the early wheelbarrow coming out, and we are going to be seeing walls here to deal with the French knights. And where's the first French knight? Is he going to be going 2TC French? It doesn't look like it. No, he's getting straggler trees here. Um, is he going to be doing kind of feudal aggression? Very interesting. Okay, the first knight now comes out from the Incan. That was a little bit late for the first knight. But it could also lull Prime into a false sense of confidence where he's going to be thinking that his opponent isn't going to be bringing a knight at all. French 2TC play, I actually like it a lot. I think it's very good because everybody expects French to be aggressive. So sometimes you can really slip a 2TC uh, in there and catch people off guard. But we do get the racks coming down. Racks, of course, going to be a staple against the French knight play. 
and an archery range as well. So no, it looks like it is going to be feudal aggression. Uh, have we had any games go to castle today? I mean, the Anatan uh, Crackity game, both of them did get to castle, but the game really took place in feudal. And for the first game, it was pretty much a feudal Zhug New all in as well. So it's mo mainly been feudal duels today. Uh, granted, the grand finals of several of our last couple tournaments have been um, longer games. Some of them have gone up to the Castle Age. Imperial Age seems pretty rare in some of these uh, really sweaty matches, but we will see. So we got the first knight out. He's going to be riding down this way. And oh, we actually have a second knight. Okay, I didn't miss the first one. So he does have uh, two knights out. Going to be looking for the goodies. But the English are going to be pretty resilient here. Um, obviously, archers could... You could come and tower this if you wanted to. And honestly, that wouldn't be a bad idea. With how greedy Prime is being, he's not building too much military here. Although he does have some spears and bows, so he's not helpless in that regard. He's going to be bringing the spears down to try and head off that scout. He could get towered here. The French could pull a villager, and this would be actually one of the more devastating tower positions that I've seen in a while. It's pretty hard to do it against Strelbora, but with knights and archers protecting it, you could drop a tower here, and it would be hitting both of Prime's gold. So the only other way he could get gold would be going to the middle. That would actually be an insane presence of mind from uh, Incan. And I think, I think that's worth doing. I think going all in on Feudal here and then towering your opponent's gold would be uh, one of the more devastating plays that you could possibly do. Granted, English Feudal armies are pretty damn strong. Um, they got spears, they got the longbows, which are amazing. They also have access to men-at-arms. So they, they do a lot well. They could definitely push back the French armies with good micro. We're going to have to see. A lot of it comes down to the micro, right? Like longbows picking off archers, uh, French spears picking off the spears of the English to allow the knights to chase down the longbows. It's a very cagey... Very high micro fight, which is what I don't like. See, I'm a bit of a mouth, mouth breather myself. I like when I can just make like one unit type and just kind of go for it in the Feudal Age. That's why I've been playing Ayubids and just using like the, the free Desert Raiders while I go fast castle. Feudal is my biggest weakness as a player. I'm very bad at it. Um, it's what holds me back. So, looks like the Royal Knights, some of them are going to eat some spears to the face. That is not good. He takes a lot of damage on those Royal Knights. They're very expensive. And now we're going to be seeing a 2TC transition, which I don't hate. I think that's probably a good idea. You got the English kind of thinking you're going to be getting aggressive here. Although we could see Conquest, a.k.a. Prime, moving out. He does have one farm uh, situation getting uh, getting going here. So, so far he's going to have five of those. The Knights are running, trying to turn around and pick off that old scout. But now he's going to be retreating back. And, yep, French are going to be going 2TC, towering up their gold. And have we seen the second TC yet? No, currently he's sitting at 225, so he needs a little bit more. But it looks like Prime is actually going to be getting aggressive here. He moves up. Archer is going to be forced back for the French. And the knights are going to be circling about looking for an opening. And they'll probably find one here. We do see the villager trying to wall up the uh, eastern flank. Two of the French knights are going to be creeping around the sides. They don't have the healing. They don't have the grail juice yet. Uh, so far, we got three archers and five spearmen. Tower is going to be getting finished. And there's going to be another archer coming out. No blacksmith, so we don't have any ranged armor upgrades for the French to help against longbows. And uh, yeah, the duel is on. He gets in the tower. Gets a couple nice shots into the scout there. But the scout's going to be able to heal. Arrow Slit's going to be popping off, and now as soon as you see that tower in Prime's position, you know that your opponent's going to be either, you know, going Castle or is going to be going 2TC. Like, uh, you don't really build towers if, unless you're going to be going past Castle or you're going to be going um, 2TC. And in this case, it is going to be the double TC. He's got a little Palisade coming up. Archer's going to be scooting out, and are they going to pick off that scout? That would be good. That would definitely deny the Fog of War. And we do get the Arrow Slit coming down. Tower's going to be Garrison. Prime's going to take some casualties here for sure. He's going to lose a couple Spears. One spear does go down, and the French archers are able to push back the English archers, so those bad boys are going to be fleeing the old scene. Up on the top side here, yeah, more houses. Second TC, and it's going to be set up near the deer. This would be a good second TC spot, like right here. You would get the deer camp, and you'd also get the berry bushes, so two for one food. A little bit of a skirmish in the tree line, but the English do have superior numbers. It looks like they are going to pick off a lot of the French archers, but the French also going to be taking some L's as it pertains to their hardened spearmen in the front line, so some of the French knights could certainly come in in concave. Looks like Prime is going for blood. Yeah, Prime is going to be going hard in the paint. He is He's going to be doing what we saw from old Crackity earlier, which is uh, just a lot of pressure. And England is pretty good at this. The English can really, really just put waves and waves of pressure on you because of their early farm economy. And they can even go castle behind heavy pressure just because of how damn good their food is. So here they come. Walls coming up for the French. We got walls up on the northeast, walls in the front, and now the French are going to be chilling out. We have the second TC coming. A very, very cautious position. He's going to be doing it in base, basically, which means he's not going to be benefiting too much from a... I really do think it was a blunder by the Incan. I think this is, like, defensible enough. Although, I guess the English army is coming here. I don't know. It's a little bit dodgy, but this TC will provide extra villagers. But, like, the problem for the Incan, guys, is his food economy is going to be really, really in bad shape here. Currently, we see a couple French archers going to be circling about, being chased by the Longbows, the dreaded Strelbora. More French knights coming. But, um, yeah, food's going to be dodgy. Sets up more towers on the berry bushes here. 
Definitely needs to get some food up here. I would have liked to have seen more of an effort to secure that food. He's got the archers running around. This is actually a really good play by Inken, what he's doing here. Like, he's occupying Prime's entire army, which is going to be allowing him to get his, his walls up, get his second TC going, get his towers kind of protecting the berry bushes here. It's a good play. I mean, arguably, he's going to lose the archers. If he can at least uh, pick off a couple spearmen here for these archers, get something out of it. And, um, yeah, I mean, he picks off one spear there. Likely going to be able to get a second. So despite the fact that he's losing these units, he's getting something out of it um, and buying a ton of time to secure his resources. Would have liked to have seen a great wall like along here maybe to secure all this food and like the boar and whatnot. But um, it is what it is. He, he, it's in a situation where he might need to go into an early farm economy, to be honest. So chivalry coming out. Interesting. You don't see that upgrade as much these days, but the chivalry is going to be popping off. That's going to give his knights the grail juice. So all these uh, knights are going to be able to start healing. He does have two injured knights, and the English are setting up an outpost here. So it looks like Prime is, is going to be coming for blood. So the royal knights get a nice charge there. They go into the villagers, and uh, that is going to be the outpost going into the old trash can. But the English will be back and in greater numbers. And do they have their second farm pasture coming up? Yes, they do. A lot of stone going down. So is this going to be proxy towers? Is he going to be trying to tower his opponent a little bit? Maybe getting some arrow slits? Or is he going to be going for a second TC? That is a lot of villagers to be switching onto stone. That's actually 13. So it makes me think that there's going to be a second TC coming out for the English. And um, yeah, honestly, if he just denies the French food a little bit, kind of keeps him pinned in the base, uh, especially a tower on this gold with an arrow slit and a stone tower would be really, really nice. It'd be really nice indeed. So they keep moving up. We got the hardened spearmen. They're not soft spearmen. And the longbow is going to be picking off more archers. Really nice play by Prime. He's finding opportunities all across the battlefield. He's idling his opponent's food. He's forcing the French into an early farm economy, which feels bad. Even picking off some villagers. Granted, the French can afford to lose a couple vills. And we do have the arrow slit coming out. Okay, interesting fight here for Prime. Might not be the best. I think that garrison tower with the arrow slit is going to be a little bit too much. Granted, Prime picks off all those guys, man. He gets every single one of those archers. And the French military is really in the pits. Uh, I know they have a couple knights lurking around. Are they going to be making more? We do see more knights coming, and the arrow slits are able to fend off the English army, picking off another longbow on the retreat. But we're going to be seeing a second TC coming down from the English, it looks like. Yeah, where's he going to be going with that? Uh, ooh, interesting. So he's setting up the second TC right next to the two stone outcroppings. Uh, that's an interesting choice. Is he going to be trying to just like do a mass secure on the middle? Totally a viable strategy, for sure, on this map. Like getting a ton of stone and castle age, building um, you know, a white tower in the middle or something, and just not keeping your opponent off those resources could be very, very brutal. But the English are going to be trying to catch up economically, and Longbow is getting some nice harass, so he does find a little bit of a flank here. The French are very, very trapped in the base, but the English are going to be losing this force out here. The French knights should be able to ride them down. It's only one spearman. Even if it were four spearmen, you'd be able to win that. French knights are pretty jacked. So they come in, they ride down these archers, and the English Longbows are going to be getting harried back to the Shadow Realm. And um, Inken, he might want to build a market to... Maybe, maybe, you know, use his gold a little bit. He's got a lot of gold and he could buy food, buy whatever he needs potentially. Um, we do see the farm transition. This is a pretty rough. Having to farm transition this early on is quite painful. Prime is going to be lurking nearby with all of his longbows. And I mean, though, if he can survive it, you know, if he survives this onslaught and ha doesn't, you know, fall behind too badly, the farms will certainly pay dividends. He's got more farms than the English do, which is certainly something. Second TC is coming out. Berry Bush is going to be getting grabbed. So he's going to be grabbing all that localized food that he possibly can. Typically, you see English players, instead of going for local food, they'll go for their like first couple, but from there, they would want to be setting up more of their mills and uh, basic farm economy. It's just so much more food. It's really, really strong. And look at the huge wall network that the English are doing. Um, economically speaking, 44 against 52. The French have uh, stabilized somewhat. I think they're still in this game for sure. The English definitely had the better early game, but the fact that the French were allowed to get away with the 2TC and weren't punished for having an incredibly small military... I think that's um, <clears throat> that's pretty big for sure. That's pretty big. Because like, you know, 24 against 9 is a big difference. And he wasn't punished for it. It's, it's like the English aren't really taking advantage of their bigger military by making rams. Like he could have totally gotten a ram and knocked him off gold and, and done a lot more work there. But at the end of the day, he opts to take a more passive approach, which is certainly how I would have done it as well because I'm terrible at aggression. But um, yeah, I do think that maybe, oh, he didn't build the slumber camp here. So they're going to be running quite a ways. So French Knight's going to do some scouting. Prime is doing the dreaded massive English Great Wall, so he's going to be dropping it all across the realm. And we do have the Gatehouse coming down to let his uh, dudes get out and probably grab relics at some point or other. Both players are going to be angling for Castle Age here. Uh, currently, the French food economy is a little bit better than the English, which is certainly something you don't see terribly often. But again, he wasn't punished for his 2TC play um, too hard. He was able to kind of chill back here, stay on his gold. Um, he did have the tower with the arrow slit, which I suppose is enough of a deterrent. But oftentimes you'll see English come in with like men-at-arms as well to uh, tank the towers and, uh, you know, the rams, it can be very devastating. 
So the French Knights, they're looking for an opening, and uh, they're probably going to be able to find one. I don't think this is going to get finished quick enough. And this is an opportunity for the Incan to really get back in the match. I think Incan should definitely buy his way to Castle Age a little bit quicker. Maybe get that Castle Age jump, secure the middle, grab Relics. These are all things that could really, really help him uh, win the game here against Old Prime. Yeah, Royal Knights kind of gave up on it. They could have gone a little bit further and gotten in and done a ton of damage. I mean, at the least mitigated and idled a lot of villagers for some time. Yeah, the Great the great Wall of the English, it is done. It is. And the French Knights are patrolling the borders of the English. The farm economy for the French looking very, very good at this point. Very good. Got a nice lumber economy currently as far as upgrades go. Um, looking at the economic upgrades, pretty decent. We got food wheelbarrow as well as broad axe. And then we got food uh, harvesting broad axe. Yeah, they both have pretty much comparable upgrades here. And it is going to be the dreaded guild hall. So the reason why I like guild hall so much is the French is that it's excellent for um, getting fast imperial, right? So you get the guild hall, you bank food, and then you, you aggress on your opponent while going heavy on gold. And then you could just collect like 2,000 food and go imperial age. And if you're able to drop a red keep in the middle, dude, that is so, so nasty here. So nasty. I think that would be very punishing. A little bit of scouting from Prime. He does have a random serum over here. The French are just kind of hanging out at the gates. Um, they could be torching it, at least kind of putting a little bit of stress on your opponent. Prime's going to be coming over with a sizable army, and it is going to be the White Tower. Interesting choice. Um, yeah, I guess, like, White Tower I think would be nice down here. Securing these gold nodes. Like, everything you can do to contain the middle on this map is pretty big. But he's going to be building it in a much more conservative fashion. Honestly, um, if he builds farms around it, it's going to be worthwhile. Currently, its position isn't the best, but... Yeah, we'll see. So one English spearman does find that villager. Going to be trying to shank it down. And the English longbow also finds this villager. And uh, yeah, they're getting a couple of picks here and there. That villager might actually be able to finish the, the job and get that tower done. So we're going to be getting to a Castle Age game, guys. We're going to be getting to a longer Duel of Fates here. we got Spring Alden placements coming down on towers. Uh, we do have the upgrades coming out for the French. So the knights and archers are being upgraded. And that's pretty standard comp. Mass Archer and or Arbalist against uh, and Knights against the English because English will often go Spear Longbow and then mix in Men at Arms and uh, Knights honestly trade okay into Men at Arms and they crush uh, Longbows but if you can Archer Micro and pick off the Spears you can do pretty well and Prime is going to be going Veteran and Veteran so he's getting the Longbows and Spears upgraded we don't see any Blacksmith upgrades accompanying this it's going to be heading up north and nobody's really made too much of a play for the middle but they're going to start doing it soon you're going to notice it's going to get really really um heavily contested in the middle soon military size much much bigger for the english they're going to be heading across they do pick off the scout so the incan is going to be losing one of his dreaded scouts here as the veteran royal knights do retreat to the north and uh yeah that french farm economy man it's carrying him pretty well i mean his food bank is good guys he could just go imp really quickly here uh currently he's at 700 gold and almost has enough to go uh red palace which honestly i would not hate that like a really quick red palace, but I'm telling you, that landmark needs to be in a position that's going to be denying your opponent in the middle, like right over here if you can. Granted, you can't really do proxy landmarks effectively unless your opponent is, um, you know, has a smaller military. So the English military is up in the front of the base here. Uh, he needs to secure this gold too, because he just ran out of gold right now, and he gets a tower going right there. So is he going to be making a spring golden placement here? That wouldn't be a bad idea for the Incan, in my opinion. But it looks like that tower is going to be getting torched down. He does wall this off, so we do see the wall of coming, and Incan is going to be heading up to that gold vein right there to secure that. In the meantime, Prime is probably going to be transitioning into a bit of a farm economy. He does have the prelates coming out. Not prelates, but monks. So I like that he is making plays for the relics on the map. And the glorious English farm economy is going to be popping off here soon. The White Tower, that position, it's a bit of a shame. If it had been right here, he secures three golds for himself and doesn't need to worry about anything in the middle. Doesn't need to worry about anything, but it is what it is. So Spears, Veteran Longbows, and Crossbows going to be hanging out in the center of the map. And the French very much on the back foot. Going to be trying to get the Great Wall of France over here on the far side as uh, the French do have an economic advantage, but it's kind of an insignificant one at this point. Looks like he's spamming Arbalist. He has way too many queued up here. Definitely needs to get a bunch of um, archer ranges out uh, if he wants to kind of get those numbers. And Arbalist will be okay. The Pavisas make them decent against Longbows, but overall you can't afford to be pushed off your golds on this map. You really can't. And um, yeah, what is he banking here? Is he banking food at the Guild Hall? He still is banking food. He's got about 300 food right there. These guys going to be hanging out nearby. Monastery coming down from the French. Going to be trying to get relics where they can. Granted, Prime is already way ahead of him in many regards. Prime looking extra villainous this game. It's looking like he's in a commanding position. I think that the French need to get... They need to go to the middle. Yeah, this is good. This is a really, really good uh, play here by Incan. I like this a lot. Drop a fat erect keep in the middle of the base. Helm's deep at home. And then you secure golds. And then you can even build trebuchets and try and knock your opponents off the middle golds and whatnot. Um, that's going to be securing like one gold for now. So here he comes. Is Prime going to be discovering this in time? There are French knights nearby to help protect it. So I think it's going to be okay. 
So there goes the keep. He's going to be securing a gold, which is really, really big. Without that gold, he'd basically be getting put in the old trash can. Uh, do we see siege engineering? Any sort of inclination that there's going to be more aggression coming in from the English? Um, I don't know if we see that right now. I don't believe we have siege engineering yet for the English, but... England is going into overdrive. You can see right now they're going to be starting to really get that sweet food economy. They have surpassed the French in food, uh, 1,300 per minute. And uh, they are just getting a bunch of racks, a bunch of archery ranges. Very classic English. English are usually a very infantry-focused faction. Granted, horsemen can be good as well, especially against the French. So Spears move in. Knights getting immediately crushed. The English archers and arbalists returning the favor a little bit, taking off a couple of those spearmen units. But the longbows with good micro, and clearly Prime has good micro. He's able to get the uh, more optimal trades there. 66 against 27. I mean, this could be the end of the road for the French if they don't get a Manganel out quickly. The, there's one thing that English players hate, and it's Manganels. You know, every English player hates this. Their doctors hate it. You know, they hate this one trick. And that one trick is the Manganel. Manganels are the scourge of English players. Because English players, for some godforsaken reason, including myself, have the biggest aversion to building cavalry units. And if you're able to get the uh, get Manganels, I mean, they're devastating against archers and spears and things like that. So, okay trading here. You know, the Incan is doing a, a decent defensive hold. The, the English macro, though, is pretty insane. Their food economy is able to really just put it into overdrive. It looks like in the middle, the English do have plenty of gold. Um, looking at any castle age, a Barcher in the middle could be cool, um, for sure, to really kind of lock the French out of their gold. But the French were able to get this, so they're going to be calculating here. But like a Barcher right here would deny all these golds, and, um, and then maybe like a tower right here would be the play. Looks like English is going to be setting up there on their own, and the aggression is on. So English longbow shooting into the French Knights. French Knights do have a little bit of a ranged armor uh, upgrade spam. A lot of crossbows being mixed in, so they will be excellent against the Knights. And here it comes, baby. Here it comes. It's going to be the Manganel. So that is going to be the catalyst which changes the dynamic of this fight, 100%. So the French are actually holding well. Um, despite the English having superior numbers, we do see the French Knights fighting valiantly. And the French archers, though, are slowly being picked off to the point where it's only going to be the knights. Um, here comes the mango. Tower did not get finished. Granted, they do have the attack speed from this tower back here. And we don't see a spring all the placement or anything like that. Would be nice to actually get a spring all here with a stone tower. That could be a very, very good denial. But yeah, they're going to need to get some springs out of their own to try and deal with that. Castle going down. Siege workshop. French, of course, cackling on that middle gold. And the guild hall, the food was collected and now it's been switched on to stone. Really interesting. Manganel is going to be moving up and double Manganel. And I told you, Manganel the scourge, the absolute scourge of the English. Someday, when you watch like Conqueror 3 English players, I know that Prime is Conqueror 3 on uh, Japan, but I, with his English, like when you watch Conqueror 3 English players, they usually build a lot of horsemen. Uh, you know, and then eventually they'll switch into men-at-arms spam and things like that later on. But yeah, horsemen is a big part of their game plan because they know how devastating the uh, how devastating it can be to deal with the mangonels, right? All right, so he's going to be going into the middle. We do see a tower attempting to be set up here by the Incan. Certainly a very sweaty game. I would say that Prime's a little bit ahead in this situation. I, I would say he's had a little bit more command over the game. He has the economic advantage finally. His middle control is going to be good, and we got trebuchets coming out. And we all know that English trebuchets they know how to thump. They do some serious work. <clears throat> the French setting up a nice economy around the keep, which is going to be reducing. The keep influence is great. 20% uh, cost reduction on all those knights and arbalists and things like that. Just an absolute thing of beauty here. Yeah, the English are still knocking pretty hard. We see the Manganel's going to be coming back, trying to bonk these guys on the head. We're going to see if they get it. Looking at the relics for both players, uh, we see one relic here and two relics for Prime already. So Prime is certainly uh, playing the map a little bit better, but understandably, right? He has map control. He's got the comfort. Oh, a lot of crossbows get nailed there. Really nice shot. Really, really beautiful shot by the Incan. Despite being on the back foot, you know, he's playing a very, very good game. But the problem is, if you let this go to Imperial Age, that is where the English become the Dark Wizards. When English get Imperial Age and they get the, the enclosures going and their farms start printing gold, uh, you know, it gets really, really dodgy, man. It gets really, really dodgy. So heading to the south, I think for the English now, you stop pressing the French base. You can even let them have this gold and just push the French out of the middle. And if you're able to push them out of the middle and just kind of starve them in the corner, uh, I think that's how you win this match. I think that's how you do it. So looking at the farm eco, it's pretty good for Prime. He's got a lot of nice farms around here. Definitely needs to build farms like closer to his landmarks because if this were to go late game and his opponent was to be cavrating him, he would be very grateful for that. But yeah, it was a nice mango shot. It really was. The trebuchet is now going to be teeing off. we got double traps coming out. So the English have a big advantage as it pertains to the trebuchets. Horsemen being made as well as veteran royal knights. And that landmark is going to be paying the troll toll. But guys... We are going to be getting a late game match. We're going to be getting an Imperial Duel of Fates between these two players. Both players have kind of cut the middle in half. Um, looking at Imp, uh, both players kind of on the... Uh, no, not in the French so much. French are a little ways off. 
And they're actually collecting stone, which is interesting. I think collecting stone at this point probably isn't the best idea. I think just going gold would probably be a safer bet because stone uh, collects half as quickly as gold does. Granted, I mean, I guess you could drop a bunch of keeps in the middle, and that's very, very good. But the English are excellent at knocking down keeps with their trebs. We do see a spring ult coming out from Prime as well. Prime going to be walling off the entire map, uh, middle of the map, which is a great call. No sacred sites being grabbed yet. Definitely uh, would recommend grabbing those if you can for the English player, since he's got the map control. And the French actually get a bigger army for the first time in the game. 57 against 47. Look at that. Bankin's coming back, man. This is going to be this is going to be a really intense fight. Those Mangonels were everything. They saved everything. Okay, I love this play. This is very Chad. This is exactly what I was talking about. A Barkshire middle secure here is going to be so good. It's going to get this gold, this gold, this gold. Um, it will also maybe even hit the tip of this. The Barkshire Palace has absolutely disgusting range. You might need to sacrifice a lot of your English army during this to make sure the Barkshire gets up. That's what she said. Because if the Barkshire doesn't get up, it's going to be a bit of a tough time. So they move in, and a lot of those villagers are going to be getting punished here. If that Barkshire doesn't get finished, man, you're going to have a bad, bad time. You need to make sure to get that up right now. So Spring Alt's coming out for the English. Manganel's doing some good work. Double Spring Alt for the Incan as well. The English are certainly losing this fight. The French have the better artillery position. Uh, but if the Barkshire Palace finishes, it's not going to matter too much. It will force them back. And the English are insane at replenishing their army. So it would probably be okay. And oh no, finish it! Finish the Barkshire! Oh god, it's so tense. He's getting hammered. Garrison those villagers. He garrisons the villagers. And now he's going to be fine. So Barkshire Palace, Palace finishes. The first thing you always want to do as English when you hit Imperial Age is getting closures. It's gonna immediately grant you like five, six, seven hundred gold a minute, right? So Barkshire Palace is up. Very nice. And look at the range on that landmark. It's so, so good. It actually just picks off one of the Mangonels right there. He needs to get his villagers back to work here. He does have 14 villagers in there. And many of the Arbalists are being taken down. Are we gonna be seeing the Red Palace getting dropped? Because the Red Palace can actually kill landmarks. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, yep. Yeah. Looks like those villagers are able to escape. Does he have enclosures coming? He does not have it being researched yet, so clearly, you know, it, it's big, man. Prime needs to have a market. He needs to be selling wood to get that Enclosures up. Uh, enclosures is just such a backbreaking upgrade. And look at that. He pushes him off the gold. So the Barkshire Palace has enough range. It has enough range to get him off that. That's insane. So the only one you really need to defend at this point is going to be this one back here, which you should be able to do with trebuchets and your keeps and all that sort of good stuff. Dinkin is going to be hitting this gold back in his base, but he better figure out a plan quickly, man, because he is going to be running out of gold and uh, the English are going to be taking over the middle of the map. The Berkshire Gambit has, uh, has, has certainly paid off. I've seen Red Palace be really dominant on this map as well, like a Red Palace drop in the middle, but Prime was obviously a little bit ahead a lot of the game, so he was able to get in quicker. Not sure what he's doing with these trebs. Moving them out in the open field here is very dodgy. Could easily get rode down by a bunch of horsemen, but he is going to be killing infrastructure. Now he's going to be pulling him back to the base. English macro should be in full effect. Please tell me you're getting enclosures. Okay, he's getting enclosures. Good, good, good. So the enclosures will be on the way. He does lose both of those trebuchets. Good pick by the Incan. The Incan looking for scraps where he can. We do have another keep going down in the backfield. I guess I understand the stone um, because it allows you to get these keeps to get your influence network going, which I think is very, very strong. So... I suppose, uh, you know, going for stone was the right choice. Although in my head, I was kind of like, man, you better get Imperial quickly. So we got Elite Metal Arms coming out, which is one of the staples of the English. We have a cannon emplacement on the Berkshire, which I think is quite strong. Crossbreeding is going to be coming out. 15% gather rate on the farms. And yeah, Prime's got a lot of farm economy looking really good. He's got two relics, Sacred Sight. Did not finish his Great Wall over here, which uh, could end up costing him with like a Horseman Raid or something like that moving. And uh, here comes the old Counterweight Trebs. Knocking on the Barcher Palace. Yeah, it's a good call. You you gotta you gotta retake the middle now. You can't sit back. And the English army still is a little bit smaller, and the artillery advantage massively in favor here of the French. Man, the French might be able to get something going here. If the Incan starts doing some raids on the English, because trying to mash your head against the English is never a good call. But if you can somehow um like raid their farms, raid their eco a little bit, that's that's how you win against them. Oh man, Prime's got four relics. Does he have tithe barns yet? He does not, but that's gonna be really good when he gets that. The English diving, man. That's going to be a rough fight for them. Their army is so much smaller. The Mangadels have not turned to shoot yet, but now they're going to be turning. There they go. And the Barkshire Palace is on death's bed. The range is still actually helping in this fight. But the English does do have the elite hundred arms, but that's not going to be enough. The Knights will still defeat them one to one. And the English army getting crushed pretty badly here in open field. The French Arbalists and Knights trading very, very well. The artillery advantage has been going quite big here for the French. He's been winning the artillery duels. He's been massing Mangonels, and siege engines obviously are very powerful. Berkshire Palace potentially going to be crumbling now. The English can fight without um, without the middle if they have to because of the enclosures, but that's going to give the French a massive advantage in the fight overall. The elite men at arms move again. 
They are fully upgraded, so Prime does have a nicely upgraded army here. But the French have such good counters. They have the Arbalist. The Arbalist hit really hard. I mean, they're crossbows. So they do um, 20 plus damage against these bad boys. The Men at Arm Legion coming out. And the Barcher Palace has fallen. The French could be back in this game, guys. If they manage to get back on gold here, get that party going, they're about to mine out here. So they really need to get that gold secured. We do see the landmark being built. Prime needs to take a step back and get like 50 Spring Alts. Uh, he needs to get like like eight Spring Alts. He needs to get a couple Mangonels behind that and get some hand cannoneers mixed into the army. But you see, this is the problem with English players, including myself, is um, they just spammed it. Like they're like, okay, there's one unit that would counter this entire army. One. And that is going to be horsemen. If the English player just built like maybe 10 stables right now, uh, he doesn't have the wood for it. But if he built 10 stables and spammed out elite horsemen and got biology, he would crush the Incan's army. Incan would absolutely get steamrolled. But he's just building men at arms, which are pretty hard countered by the Arbalists as well as the uh, French Knights, right? So Barcher Palace is going to be coming back up. Just ask absolute desperation repairs. Men at arms looking pretty sauced, and hand cannoneers now mixed into the army as well. The Barcher Palace is back in business. Trebuchets might get picked off, but despite Prime not trading the most efficiently in the army fights, he still might be able to win this simply because he has the Imperial advantage. He's got enclosures. He's got four relics. He's got middle control. There's many things Prime is doing very, very well. The only thing that's a little bit off is going to be the army comp. Um, and he does have the roll shutters. So he does have the range increase on the spring alts and the attack speed increase, which is going to make them very, very good. So he does kill both of the trebuchets here and now is going to be just sending in his men at arms uh, with army tactics about the finish, mind you. And uh, yeah, that, that will be very, very nice. So we do see that go down here and the old um, spring alts. Uh, do win for the English. They do win for the English. And the French uh, are out of gold. They're out of gold, ladies and gentlemen. Grabbing a little bit of stone. Do we see villagers coming in here? We do not. And I think Prime is starting to take over this game again. Currently looking at the gold per minute for the Incan. It's only it's zero, actually. So he's getting none whatsoever. So his army is going to be devolving into archers and horsemen, which is going to be very bad, even against like elite men at arms. It's not going to go well. Prime finally starting to win some of these duels as it pertains to the artillery. He's getting some really, really nice shots shooting from downtown. Uh, on the other side, the counterweight trebuchet is shooting into the Barcher Palace, trying to wear that bad boy down. But I think that old um, old Prime is probably going to be edging out this conflict here, simply because there's no gold for the French. Granted, they do have Guildhall. Guildhall is currently sitting on 800 gold, which is not enough to go Imperial. Going to be waiting a little bit, a little ways before you get that. Um, they need to just get a bunch of bills and try and sneak in here. But yeah, Barcher is just controlling the middle so hard. And with the upgraded Springald range, it's nasty. We do see the English getting the uh, Longbow Incendiary Arrow upgrade, which is not bad. Certainly not terrible. Although, you know, getting the uh, hand cannon here check is a little bit more common, I would say. English just absolutely pillaging the resources on the middle. Yeah, one gold note's going down. The other one's going to be taken. And uh, English are just getting in more and more of a commanding position the longer this game goes. Because Incan is just so starved out for resources. Now, at this point, when you're in a uh, tough situation like this for the Incan, I think what you need to be doing is you need to be spamming horseman raids and uh, trying to harass the English in the back of their base. Because you're just allowing Prime to just... It's kind of like a boxing match, right? Like, let's say in this analogy, you have Prime. Prime is like a power puncher, right? Let's say he, you know, he's not the most dynamic around the ring. He's not moving around too much. But if you stand in front of him and just bang, you're going to have a really bad time. You need to be circling to his weak side. And by circling to the weak side in a boxing match, the analogy would end up right here, right? You come in with like 40 horsemen and you force this English army, which is very slow and very infantry based, to try and react to your movements. Like a horseman raid here would be the most devastating shit. If you came in with like 15, 20 horsemen, uh, this, the, the, you would probably get like 20 villager kills. And on top of that, you would mitigate his food income. You would take some of the pressure off the front lines. Little things like that would be, uh, would be very, very good. But the Imperial English are cackling pretty hard now. They seem to have taken control. It's only a matter of time before Prime starts making some bombards, is what he should be doing, and knocking the uh, French off the front lines. we got men at arms dive again. Trebuchets are completely forced back. Prime doing a little bit of split rating right now, which is very, very good. So here they come. The palisade wall is going to be uh, getting torched. Farms are going to be under heavy pressure. And basically, no gold is going down here. English going to be raiding on the other side as well. This has been a really, really good match, though, uh, between two of our Discord champs. These guys, of course, both high conqueror players. Really, really fun to see them uh, duke it out. And Incan was our winner of our first uh, our first tournament that we had. He was our first. He was the first one. But Prime looking to uh, climb the old uh, tournament leaderboard today, and is going to be looking to uh, earn his spot in the uh, finals. Although this is a quarterfinal match for him, so if he wins this, I believe he goes to the semifinals of today's tournament as well. But yeah, there's no way the English have 4K food income against 1.5. Uh, 2,700 gold against zero. The wood income is pretty comparable, but that doesn't matter too much except for spamming rams. And uh, Prime is doing a really good job raiding. I'm very impressed with his, his raids. They've been good. He's like pressuring every single point. 
He's got farms idled, and I would expect Inkin to maybe tap out here. We can do a little bit of fast forwarding, catch up to the live state of the game, but I really don't see too much. He's switching into Mass Horseman, which is good for defense. Inkin's scrapping really hard, but his opponent is all up in his base. We got Men at Arms coming out. Uh, all of his farms are being idled here, and that has got to be GG. I'm surprised he hasn't topped out. Hey, Red Palace in the base, pretty Chad. Uh, but he's losing so many villagers. He's down to 76. He gets the Red Palace up, which is going to buy him a little bit of time. Uh, but the center is completely torched. The men-at-arms spam. The classic English able to move in. Other keep going to go down here. Even though the counter units are available, they're having a pretty rough time of it, simply due to the numbers. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think Prime's got this. I mean, he's got both sacred sites. They're not fully walled off, but they will be soon. He's actually building stone walls to uh, keep his opponent from getting to the sacred sites, which is very Chad. And, um, yep, the men-at-arms just keep moving in the base. We can keep fast-forwarding because this one, ladies and gentlemen, I think is 100% over. I would imagine they're both watching in chat right now. It was a great match. Both these guys played super strong because uh, the Incan was very behind, but he came back. He had some good fights, some really, really good fights, but the Barkshire uh, changed the dynamic of the game quite a bit, quite a bit. I think that the French needed to be raiding the English a little bit more as well, but, um, yeah. GG well played. GG well played. Let's go ahead and refresh the brackets. Take a look at today's showdown. See how we're standing here. Anatan waiting for his opponent here. So let's go to this and check it out. All right. On the bottom side, we have Nomad and Dragavan playing. All right. Our boy Nomad made it pretty far. And we're going to cast... Um, do we want to do... Okay. So let's put it to a poll real quick. So we got Anatan versus Prime. And then it's going to be Nomad versus Dragavan. All right. Cool. That was a cool match. That was a very good one. All right, so we're going to see which game you want to watch. Anotand uh, game. Watch. Anotand versus Prime, or do we want to watch Nomad versus Dragoban? All right, here we go. You guys let me know what match we want to watch next, and we'll certainly jump on that. All right. What's this? Cool, cool. Okay, outstanding. And here we are, baby. Let's get it going. So you guys vote for the match. We can jump in and see. Nomad is uh, currently playing against Dragovan, who I believe is also a Conqueror 3 player. They're both very, very strong. And it looks like you guys want to watch Anatan versus Prime's match. All right. So I feel like Anatan might let him play Japanese. Um, Anatan did that last time. He's done that before. I've seen Anatan in tournaments where he doesn't like ban the opponent's main just because he wants a he wants a true challenge. We'll see. We'll see. Because he's certainly much higher elo, much higher elo. Prime, uh, we can actually take a look real quick. Hang on. Okay, so Anatan I think is like twenty two hundred plus, right? He's got to be around there. Uh, so Prime is currently. If we look at Prime, Prime is um. Yeah, he is currently 1,600 ELO, which is really good. That's that's like the very beginning of Conqueror 3. He's coming off a lot of nice wins. And Anatand is going to be... Here he is. Oh, Anatand doesn't even play ranked games. <laughs> he probably just practices for tournaments in the shadows. Yeah, he, do, he literally doesn't even play ranked games. So, yeah. <laughs> he just practices. All right, well, that that's, that's certainly, uh, you know, always scary. And let's go ahead and get this. We'll jump out here and we will cast that game. And Tand uh, versus Prime. Make sure to have spec slots, please. All right. We'll cast your match. All right. And here we go. It's go time, man. Looks like you guys want to watch that one, so we will. They're going to be starting in just a second. Let's just hang out and enjoy each other's company. How's life treating all of you guys? Uh, the map for this one is going to be... So this is the semifinals of today's tournament. So one, two, three. So the map is going to be uh, Dry Arabia. So classic. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, Inkin, you played really well, man. You had a really, really nice comeback. It was a good proper scrap. All right. So just chatting with some of the players real quick, making sure they don't have any questions, and we will go from there. I'm sitting in the picks and bans right now. All right. Is Anatan just going to be chatting it and not banning anything? That would be kind of interesting. Zach in chat saying, I won your first FFA over the weekend. Hell yeah, man. Winning FFAs is not easy. You know, you're going against seven other players. So congrats to you. Congrats to you. That's great stuff. 
His his uh, name on ladder is Pivotand. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I think I wonder if that because if you say if you say Pivo in Polish, it mean it means beer. And if, in I wonder if because I think he's from Belarus. I'm not sure. Um, I wonder if it's the same. So is he just beer beer and it's hand on ladder? That's pretty funny. Let me let me check his um. Check this. Hold on. Uh, Pivo tend. Oh yeah. So we found Anatan's ladder profile. He's Conqueror three, two thousand, almost twenty one hundred Elo. Oh, ho, ho. that is no joke, dude. It looks like he plays a lot of Ayubids, which uh, and Order of the Dragon as well. Yeah, little Order games mixed in there. Always fun. There's still a plan for you to do a podcast. Uh, no, it's gonna happen, Gun Out. It'll happen. Yes. It will happen. Mainly more focused on getting the tabletop stuff together, um, which is a lot more work than you'd expect. Like we're out there every night in the garage painting and assembling minis and stuff. So, but you can't really start a tabletop Warhammer channel with only two armies or three armies. We only have two right now. We have well, we have three. We have Empire and Warriors of Chaos fully painted. Tomb Kings are just we're just getting started on painting. They've all been assembled for the most part, but we just need to paint them now. So, uh, once they're painted up, is like it's go time. It's go time. Yeah. Pivo is beer in Slavic countries. Yeah, so it's all over all over the Slavic countries. Got it. Yeah, because I know in Polish it's Pivo. Yeah. Okay. So have they started yet? Where's our boys at? Browsing custom. All right. Let me know about the picks and bands, by the way. We have our in-game correspondent. Arena's in there. So let us know what they've done. Yeah. We hear the... You guys hear the dread chihuahua barking? Absolutely ferocious beast. So it's Lord of Beer. <laughs> the Lord of Beer, I love it. How big are the armies? Um, yeah, so my armies in tabletop, I, I mean, the Empire Army is probably like three or 4,000 points. Chaos is about 25, 3,000 points. Tomb Kings, I mean, yeah, they're big armies. Tomb for, for Tomb Kings, we're just doing the... Um, the uh the, the box art style so we're just painting them kind of like the box art yeah so the the scheme is pretty standard for them that was a really good match man i enjoyed that one that was probably the most entertaining match of the day one sec i'm just checking i think someone's knocking on our door i'm gonna go double check i'll be back in just a second All right, guys, we're back in business. It's go time. Uh, and let's uh, find this match. All right. So this is going to be Anatand. This is the David and Goliath duel. Oh, and he let he let Prime on his Japanese, baby. Here we go. What a chat Anatand is, you know. He's not he's not banning somebody's main here, you know. He's he's doing it. Uh, Taryn, I am not Polish. I'm American, but my wife is Polish. Yes. <laughs> America sets up fireworks, yeah. 
Yeah, Fourth of July is a fun holiday. Pretty much every every year, you know, there's a couple dudes who just like blow off their like a limb or hands or something with fireworks in America. It's very common. We've adopted Charlie as an honorary European. You say that, but when you see me microwave my tea water, you're gonna you're gonna, you know, you're gonna try to drop me like a bad habit. Although people usually don't drop their bad habits, sadly, that's not how it works, but. Yeah, buddy, let's go. Connor says, love the content, turn regularly watch your recorded AOE streams while working. Rarely get a chance to watch live because bedtime. Love from Scotland. Right on, man. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the goods and we're going to keep you entertained hopefully a little bit longer here today. I got you covered. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. I've always wanted to visit Scotland. It's it's yeah, yeah. Ireland, Scotland, mm -hmm. um, some places the wife and I definitely plan on visiting someday. All right, guys, yeah. spawning on the south side of the map, it is going to be the Dark Lord. And at hand, he is going to be on the Chinese once again. So China seems to be pretty popping. Yeah, that Zhugnu kind of Barbican pressure. I wonder if we're going to be seeing the same thing from Anatan. Is he just going to be trying to kill Prime very quickly? Now, Prime, of course, is going to be spawning on the north side of the map. He is our Discord champ, uh, one of the higher ranked players in our Discord community. Recently reached Conqueror 3 and uh, is going to be on his main, which is Japan. And that's pretty much what he exclusively plays, from what I understand. So... Clearly, he still has good game, you know, expertise with some other factions. He did well with English last game, but um, he's going to be here with the old Japanese and is going to be looking to party. So there it goes. There it goes. So obviously very standard opening for the Japanese. House on the berry bushes with the villager staying on the berries. He's actually going to be transferring all of his villagers over to the berry bushes. Okay. Is he going for the early tech here for the... Yes, he did. Okay. So we got the gather rate on the berry bushes. All right. Cool, cool. For Anatan, pretty standard stuff. Builds a mill near his base, gets all the sheep in there, and is going to be supervising that most likely. Um, does he have a supervisor out yet? He does, I think. Where is he? Is he hidden somewhere? I don't know if he built a supervisor yet, but um, nonetheless, I'm sure he will be appearing from the shadows at any point. Or maybe he didn't build one. Maybe he's just going to be kind of doing a bit of a standard faster age up here rather than getting that uh, supervisor there. Microwaving tea water is just such an insult. You should be punished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I know you like it. I know you like it. So for the initial split of Anatan, it's going to be three on gold and the rest are going to be on food from here. So it looks like with China, maybe that's the way to go. Most civs, you usually see two or three, but it looks like Japan's going to be doing three as well with uh, seven on the berry bushes. So very similar split for both players here. Currently looking, um, Anatan has gathered his food much quicker, so he's going to be aging up a lot faster than Prime. Prime did have a little bit of downtime of idling villagers where he did transition over to the berry bushes. So that can be one of the issues you can run into, right? If you, um, you know, if you start on the sheep and then move over, there's going to be a good 15 seconds where they're not really like dropping off or mining. And that will allow your opponent to age up a little bit quicker. And uh, it looks like Anatan is going to be going for the Imperial Academy. So that is the taxation landmark that makes nearby uh, nearby building generate 100% more tax, which isn't bad. It's going to be hitting the mill mining camp as well as the inevitable lumber camp here. And then that will augment your tax economy. We did see Crackity earlier um, go for the dreaded uh, tax, uh, tax collection upgrade, which uh, I'm curious if they're going to do that. I suppose it was synergized really well with the Imperial Academy, <clears throat> but time will tell. Of course, Storehouse is going to be coming down on the backside of the base, which is smart. Uh, it's a little bit harder to pressure. If you put it out in the front, obviously the Zhugnu could uh, punish it. Here you can kind of put it, set up a wooden palisade maybe across to keep the Zhugnu from getting in there. Granted, Zhugnu kill walls pretty quickly too in numbers. They're a pretty meme unit. They they definitely do some work, but it is going to be the very safe core storehouse. The only time you really go ninjas is going to be on hyper maps in my anecdotal experience. Conrad, thank you for the 20. Scotland has free camping basically countrywide. Amazing scenery in National Park. 70% of Scotland is pretty empty. Thumbs up for the great holiday destination. Hey, thank you for the donation. And yeah, we want to do that. I have a lot of Irish ancestry um, and, uh, you know, from that part of the world as well. Um, I don't know about if I have any Scottish ancestry. Maybe I have to do like a DNA test or something. But regardless, I've always wanted to kind of visit that region and uh, check out that those landscapes and see all that lovely stuff. Okay, so Kura Storehouse popping off four villagers on that. China's already aged up. Are they going to be going for a quick Song Dynasty? Looking at Anatan's bank, um, we do see him not making any military buildings right now. Still gathering a fair amount of gold and uh, relatively heavy on food as well, which makes me think we're going to be seeing an early Song Dynasty. Now the question is, are we going to be seeing the dreaded barbecue proxy? I don't think so. I think he's just going to be playing very tight into his base. Uh, building the barbican to secure some resources and going from there. But yeah, I'm, I'm hyped to see this because Prime is, he's uh, been an absolute terror in most of our FFA matches with the old um, with the old Japanese. And he recently just got Conqueror 3 with them. So I'm, I'm curious to see what chops he has. 
as far as the build goes, what's going to be happening is going to be a fast castle. So Prime is building a tower, which is just the deterrent against Shugnu. He's going to be going fast castle. He's going to be going floating gate. He's going to drop off the Yodoshiru inside the stable and probably get mounted samurai, which are a pretty good counter, obviously, against the Zhugnu. Barbican of the Sun coming up for the Chinese. So China, are they going to go 2TC song? That would be pretty greedy against the Yodoshiru play. Because if you go Yodoshiru, Fast Castle, Japan, they can really punish 2TC with those Samurai Dives. The Deflective Armor plus like one ranged armor upgrade, which they get for free from their Forge, is just really, really good. So that could happen. Yeah, we're going to end with an FFA for sure. So pulling bills over to the berry bushes. Uh, jumping off the sheep once again. He keeps switching back and forth, which is, uh, which is curious. I wonder why he's doing that. He'll like work on the sheep for a minute, and then he'll go here and... Um, Looks like he's walling he's walling off the Korra storehouse, and that means there's going to be farms, but it's going to start generating wood quicker. Okay, very interesting tech here from Prime. I suppose that is going to give him um, that's going to give him the tools he needs to build military infrastructure. Yeah, he's got the two farms. It's going to put one, two, three more farms probably before it gets blocked. And when it runs out of places to put down farms, what it does from there is it starts generating wood. Okay, we're going to have to kind of see what this is. What are the ELO of these players? Prime is 1600, which is the beginning of Conqueror 3, and uh, Anatan is about 2000, 2100 range. So he's obviously much higher ranked, but, you know, th these guys would run into each other on ladder if they were playing. Um, so, yeah, it it's totally, totally possible. Totally possible. Granted, of course, Anatan is a favorite. He's, he's a professional player. So, um, you know, this is, this is, you never know, though. Any given Sunday, man. Any given Sunday. So Song Dynasty and China looks like they're going up to Castle now. We see 557 against 205 here, uh, 440, uh, 459 against 440. So yeah, these players are rocking and rolling, but it is going to be fast Castle. And interestingly enough, guys, I think Anatan might get Castle a little bit quicker than Prime. It's going to be tight. He does have the tax collection. Did he get the uh, Imperial Examinations? He did not, so he doesn't have this. Pretty good upgrade, though. It definitely definitely can get you some good bang for your buck. Like, from here, they would be collecting tax drop-offs of 80, which is really strong. So this upgrade would pay for itself very, very fast um, after a couple drop-offs from the old mill, which has 294. And that's why if you're playing China, by the way, you need to be very careful about deleting your uh, eco-buildings. Make sure to check their tax first, or else you're going to be losing out on a ton of resources, potentially. So... Prime switching over to the berry bushes. Looks like he's going hard on the berries here. Um, Anatand is going to be getting castle faster than Prime, which is Pretty impressive considering he's on a Song Dynasty as well, so he basically built two landmarks. Really, really a testament to his uh, to his eco here. But we've seen mostly feudal games, I guess, although not so many. The last game was a pretty long castle game here. Uh, we do not see the Daimyo Manor being set up. No stone being gathered by the Japanese. And uh, Old Prime, yeah, this is an interesting tactic with the Korra Storehouse to try and generate that wood from there. That's That's pretty cool. So Astronomical Clock Tower from Anotand, and Prime is going to be aging up right now as well. So they'll be aging up within like a minute of one another, maybe like 30 seconds of one another, it looks like. And it is going to be Floating Gate being dropped back here. Yes, Floating Gate coming down, Yodoshiru, stable play. Now what military tech is Anotand going to go for? Likely Spearman, maybe an S to Bs, and Palace Guard. That's a pretty good comp, uh, mixed in with some crossbows. All right, because if you're expecting Japan to go with cavalry, which they pretty much always do these days, not always, but you know, what Japan does in 1v1 in my in total experience, now my experience is like low, like lower conqueror, but um, typically Japan is gonna open up with the Yodoshiru fast castle. They'll use the monk to start grabbing relics while the samurai pressure your base, and then they transition into mass barracks and go for uh, Onobagesha with bannermen to just get a ton of damage. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what he's gonna be doing here. We don't see any military buildings yet for Prime. Which is a little bit concerning. I mean, uh, what is he going to get? Yeah, we see a couple of bills on wood here. And they're going to be dropping off the Kura Storehouse. I do like kind of using the Kura Storehouse as a bit of a lumber drop-off spot. I think that's a really kind of uh, cheeky thing there. But um, yeah, China is Castle Age. And now we're going to be seeing China going with Lancers. Okay, yeah, he's going to be going pedal to the metal against his opponent. And he's supervising as well. Anatan's play is just so clean. It's always really fun to cast those games. Really, really fun. But yeah, the Chinese cavalry is coming. The Lancers are on the way. Now, Mountain Samurai do win one to one, but I'm a little bit concerned that Prime doesn't have any military out yet. He's going to make a stable, right? No, he's going Rax. Oh, he, sp he scouted the cavalry, I think. He must have. So he's going to be going into Rax, but what is he going to be rapid firing? The Yodoshiru is going to be coming down to the barracks. Now, when you put the Yodoshiru from the floating gate inside of the barracks, it basically makes it so that barracks is going to be counting as triple barracks, which is very good. So he's going to be popping that. It's going to be Onobagesha. Interesting. Uh, so the first cavalry have arrived. Is he going to be garrisoning in the tower? He is. I don't think any villager casualties will go down. And oh, that one villager could get hunted, but it looks like he's going to be okay. And Anatan's going to be scouting, but he's going to be having lancers all over the place. He's got monks out on the map already. 
certainly very, very scary, man. And you know, maybe at the higher level of play, China's making a little bit of a comeback here. Yeah, I've been seeing, like, they've been getting picked a lot in a lot of the high-level matches I've been watching. It's been very, very fun. The Lancer here is uh, charging on in. Onabageisha is going to try and put up a fight here, but the Onabageisha are not even upgraded to veteran yet, I don't believe. So they're going to be a little bit potato, and now he's going to be switching into Spears. The technology is going to finish very quickly. Knight moves in. Uh, is he going to garrison the TC to try and finish off that Knight? Hard to say. Onabageisha chasing down this Lancer right here. Lancers will dominate Onabageisha in one-on-one -on -one fights. Like, hardcore. So yeah, a lot of spears coming out. Onabagesha also being mixed in, and Anatan is taking map control as well. And switching into crossbows. Yeah, he's going to be switching into crossbows or Zhugnu. It's hard to say. Honestly, probably Zhug, because um, Zhugnu will be better against Spearman and Onabagesha comp, whereas Samurai crossbows would be the better choice. But yeah, Anatan is just, like, all over the place, man. He's raiding, like, flying in every direction. He's got Lancers. Really going to be taxing Prime's micro. I think Prime is going to need to get some Palisade walls up on the backside and just kind of turtle down, and hopefully he can survive. Uh, another relic is taken, so one relic for Anatan, and the scout for Prime does go down. Anatan with his second relic, man. He's getting all these, and Prime needs to try and find a way to get a couple relics on the map, or else he's going to have a really bad time. Spear chasing down the Lancers. Lancer did pick off the Villager, and currently looking at the Villager count. Oof. Man, China looking... He's making China look so brutal. Yeah. Uh, Romaine, yes, probably. But China is looking so brutal. He's up 46 against 34 eco guys, and he's getting the relic advantage, and he's he has the aggression advantage. He's idling villagers by forcing walls, and uh, now he's going to be switching into Master Jugnu probably. Is that what it's going to be? Let's see. So he's got the... Oh, no, just crossbows, I guess. Yeah, which makes more sense. Obviously, Japan hates crossbows. Crossbows are good against most of their units. That looks like a couple spears do finally catch a Lancer, but Anatan able to keep that micro going. Incredibly annoying, I'm sure, to have to constantly be chasing these units down. The Onabagesha might be able to get the hunt. Prime has not gotten his walls in. And, um, yeah, the Dark Wizard Anatan continues on his rampage as he goes up to a pretty substantial eco lead. Looking at the Relic situation, he's got two Relics, armor upgrades, as well as uh, melee upgrades coming out. Lancers, dude, look at Anatan. He's pulling his injured knights back, okay? And then he's, he's healing them with monks. He's got, like, a little healing station. That requires a lot of micro to do. So all the damage that Prime is doing is being mitigated by the monk healing. Dude, that is so good. That is so powerful. Like, he's going to have a surprisingly durable... Like, he hasn't lost many knights at all. I think he's lost maybe one. Looks like here he's going to maybe hunt down this uh, unit here. Prime able to get a couple of relics, though. So, well played to Prime. Despite all that pressure, he's able to get some goodies. And the Japanese infantry are hunting down the Lancers. Uh, still chasing them. Wololo going down to the top side. Forcing back that Lancer there. And it uh, looks like he's going to get away. So, the Monk does not get that. Prime able to get two relics. Very well played against Anatan. Certainly not easy. And Anno is going to be getting three. He's going to be getting three of those. So it continues, ladies and gentlemen. It continues. The wolf trying to help the Japanese back in the base. Uh, he continues healing up his Lancers. And uh, we are going to be seeing the crossbow transition. Crossbows counter pretty much the entire Japanese core. I mean, Onubageisha can swarm them. But if you have a front line and then just crossbows, they'll just, it's so incredibly good. It's so powerful. Yeah, but the dreaded Chinese Lancer play certainly adding up. We do see the farms being opened up here from the core storehouse. I would really like to see some Palisade walls to kind of secure the back of the base. We never saw these ones get finished either. So some unfinished walls that could be canceled. And man, Anatan finds that small Japanese army and just crushes it with his Lancers. And he's also bringing monks for healing. He's going to be securing food on the middle of the map using these outposts. But yeah, brutal play as the Japanese forces are harried and pushed up into the north. And uh, it's getting very, very dodgy. Also, he's harassing the eco in the backfield. So Prime is on the back foot. Hardcore here. Uh, he's going to lose several villagers. It looks like his micro is uh, very focused on trying to save these units, so he's not noticing that back pressure. He does have a couple of running this way, and Prime is just hemorrhaging eco at this point. This one knight has literally killed like six villagers. Uh, okay, yeah, that's like six villagers right there. That's going to be seven. That's probably GG. I mean, I don't see him coming back. Anatan is just such a terminator. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Prime is very... This is like... the Prime is a Conqueror 3 player, right? So you can see the discrepancy that can appear between pro-level players and, you know, high ladder players, right? And he even let Prime play his main too. So yeah, China is just running rampant over the Japanese lands. And um, yeah, the Daimyo Manor, of course, fending these bad boys off. I think, like, if you're playing at this point, you probably have to go double TC with Japan and just try and boom up economically and come back. Uh, currently, Anatan has killed 13 villagers. Prime has not killed any. And uh, the punishment is going to be continuing until morale improves. Uh, do we see Siege Engineering? We don't. We do see the Sacred Sites being contested on both sides. Well played to Prime, though, man. Most people would not last 14 minutes in a Duel of Fates with Anatan. They would certainly crumble up. 
Gold is going to be idled by a couple Lancers. The Shinto Shrine does have some bad boys uh, dropped off in it, so we need to get the one Relic in there. The other one has yet to be dropped off. Yeah, one Haggard Palace Guard there, just, uh, you know, tormenting those poor forces. Looking at the military size, it's fairly similar, actually, which is strange, but Anatand is going to be securing the middle. He's got double Springall Tower. Yeah, he's got two of those, so that will be able to help against his raid here. Now this Japanese army, how many spears? We only have six spears. Probably the cavalry here, eight Lancers, might be able to win that fight. Granted, a lot of them are quite damaged, but it's very rare to see people use monks. To, like, it's very Warcraft 3, right? In Warcraft 3, people are super, like, at the high level, very privy at keeping their units alive, like, very on point with that, and then healing them and then sending them back into combat. Normally in Age of Empires 4, people are, like, lazier and they let units die and they just don't heal them, but, like, he play he's playing this kind of like Warcraft 3, where he's uh, healing up these units and, uh, you know, getting more and more value out of their HP. He's getting more equity from that. So Sacred Sites are being contested. It looks like Prime is trying to grab some of those. Um, 62 against 34. Did he go 2TC? I don't believe he has. I think he's still on the 1TC, but, you know, that's the thing about the Song Dynasty. Like, 1TC China with Song Dynasty is able to produce villagers at such a rapid rate that they don't really care too much. They're, they can they can just boom on 1TC. It's very, very strong. Very, very strong. So, yeah, he's got the deer on the middle. Uh, currently, upgrades still going. Is there going to be any Imperial Age, any Artillery, any Nest of Bees? Certainly wouldn't be bad. Prime is going to be turtling up himself. He's getting his Palisade Walls, which I like. I think this could have, should have happened a long time ago, if possible. Granted, it's easy to say that when I'm watching from the outside, not dealing with the stress of being harassed and all this different type of stuff, right? But he's doing a good job keeping Anatan honest on the sacred sites. And Anatan has kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, oh, he does have two TC songs. Okay. So there was a second um, There was a second t a TC coming down here, yeah. So now China's going to be booming even harder. They're honestly going to be reaching probably 100 um, eco before Prime is able to reach 50, which is very nasty. We see a veteran Onobagesha chasing down the Palace Guard here. Uh, Onobagesha should lose that fight against the Palace Guard because of the armor, but we'll see how that Duel of Fates uh, goes. Yeah, you need to go double TC here, or even triple if you're Prime, and just pray to the Dark Gods that you can get to Imperial Age. Because uh, Imperial Japan is very strong, right? Like, getting the Tanagashima Gunsmith will allow you to get Ozutsu and other powerful units here. China cackling with their uh, their outposts here, so they're hanging out. We do see the Lancers going to be patrolling the realm. So they're riding about, looking for the goodies where they can find them. Here on the backside, Onibigeisha dueling it out with the Palace Guard. Palace Guard obviously going to win that duel. His heavy armor mitigates the damage on the Onibigeisha very heavily. She only does 5 damage against himself. Who would have thought, man? Yeah, the one unit is doing it. Anatan's probably going to take the fight now. He's got the crossbow numbers. Uh, Prime will probably give up after this. I think when Anatan gets to his gates and starts just hammering down his units, he's probably going to turn and uh, fight a little bit, try and pick off a cavalry unit here and there. But, like, he's got just this one barracks producing units. And though it is a Yodoshidu barracks, like, Prime's army is nowhere near as good as Anatan's. Anatan's at 40 military against 38. Uh, we've seen 24 villagers die for Prime. 24 villagers. This Chinese strategy, man, it's, it's crazy. It really makes you realize, like, how different the high-level play is. Like, I, I always assume China's just going to palace guard rush you because that's what the potatoes at, you know, high diamond and low conqueror do. But at the higher levels, like, mixing in the Lancers, which in intuitively don't really have, like, any unique benefit on the Chinese roster, but, like, they synergize with the economy and the speed at which you can get castle. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's fun. Nicholas says, uh, Turn, you got me into the Vladverse Mehmed show. Was amazing. Yeah, isn't it fun? I mean, obviously, it's dramatized and probably some stuff's like, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, what, what would be the proper term? Like, they're extrapolating based on limited information to make some drama, but it's a very fun show. It's very, very fun. All right, guys, so that's probably GG. Um, Anatan is going balls deep in his opponent's base. Conquest here, currently 16. Anatan at 4,300. God damn! This is looking just to be over. But shout out to our boy Prime. Let's give let's give a round of applause to our boy Prime. He made it far into this tournament. He made it to the semifinals. He beat some very good players, and uh, you know, he'll he'll be back. He'll be back next time. But Anatan is going to be pillaging his lands, just absolute destruction. As we see these villagers just scattering around, and uh, <laughs> he tried to pull a crackety here where he, he hit all his villagers in there, but um, that ain't going to be enough. And we can fast forward. So, hey, Prime, well played to you, man. You're st you're still our boy. You know, there's no shame in losing to Anatan. You lasted way longer than anyone would last, probably, in our community. Maybe there's some folks who'd last around that long, but um, you did great, man. You did great. But Anatan is a dark lord. Ever we need we need our dark lord, right? We need him so that people have something to aspire to. GG, well played. All right. So let's go to the finals. We might be in the grand finals already. Hang on. Let's check this out. All right. And check in the tournament. 
Anatand versus Prime. And now we have the Grand Finals. So Dragovan did defeat Nomad. Well played, Nomad. You had a good run today, brother. You had a very good run. So we got uh, Dragovan versus um, uh, Prime, which is going to be fun. Let me see Dragov Dragovan. Let me see what his... What's his elo? Okay. So Dragovan is also... Uh, he's a little bit higher elo than Prime, but not by much. He's like 1700 range. So he's a high Conqueror 3 player. Well, a, a kind of a lower Conqueror 3 player, but still Conk 3. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have a good match here. <laughs> Prime says, uh, finals are best of one. It's designed to be a fast tournament, so players can just like chill out and take it easy. Because a lot of tournaments in RTS like can just go like six, seven hours, and I think that's one of the turnoffs people have. So I just like to have fast and furious tournaments. Um, I will do a longer one someday when we do our qualifier. So I'm going to take the top eight players on our leaderboard and do like a special event at some point. So um, that'll be pretty fun. I don't know when, but maybe, maybe, well, how many sibs are there actually? So it would be dependent on how many sibs there are is what we would do. Yeah. That would be the plan. Okay. So let me make sure they refreshed and reported the score properly. Uh, so make sure you're, you report the score. Okay. Anatand. One sec. For fun, make sure spec slot and also report score for previous site, uh, previous round. All right, GG to those champs, man. GG, well played. Player's going to be popping off here. Elo is like your ladder ranking. Yeah, it's like your uh, your raw ladder score. So the beginning of Conqueror is like Conqueror 1 is 1400. Conqueror 2 is 15. Conqueror 3 is 16. But it, the, I think the highest rated player is like 2300. I think mean, it's like Beastie or something. One of those guys. Dragoman is usually a top 100 player. Great. Yes. Uh, what about Comp for Gold? Comp for Gold. You're saying to have a tournament for gold players? Xander, thank you for the fiber. Thanks for all the content that you do. Here's the hope for some, uh, some more Skaven love in the future. Yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're hoping for some Skaven. Always fun. Yeah, you got here for the Grand Finals. Um, dips on the FFA spot. <laughs> Takes you back. Sounds good. So I, I guess I promised an FFA spot to Nanny, so it sounds good. <clears throat> so they're going to be doing their picks and bans right now. And the first place player is going to be winning 50 bucks, second place 25. So we have a little bit of a prize. I don't mind putting prizes up for this game because um, in Total War, there's a lot of shenanigans and disconnects and peer-to-peer -peer issues. Uh, so I usually backload the prizes. Like I put all the prizes for Total War tournaments on the season finals. Um, but for Age, it's like a very smooth experience. And, you know, we don't need like, you know, there's not as much like cheats and dramas and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's why we do it here. It's named after the person that created the system. Got it, got it. We need Beastie to come down from his throne and let our best champions... He, so Beastie played in my first couple tournaments when um, when Age of Empires first came out like two years ago. He played in like three or four of our tourneys um, in the beginning. There wasn't as many tourneys back then. There was like a handful, I guess. He probably only plays in the really big ones now. Yeah. Because for him, it's probably, you know, just like streaming and messing around, it's probably a little bit more relaxed, I would imagine. All right, so let's find him. And uh, I would imagine their picks and bans will be pretty quick. I like the pick and ban system, though. I think it's good. I think uh, I think it's been nice. There he is. Okay, so he's in lobby. So we're just going to watch him here. Yeah, Dandy, now that you're Conqueror, you got to join these tourneys, man. You got to do it. I was going to ask him today, but he had something scheduled with another player. Got it, got it. Yeah, well, uh, well, I also just announced it last night so people don't have a lot of time to plan. I need to announce them ahead of time, but I'm very sporadic with how I like to do things in terms of tournaments and stuff. I just kind of get the itch and then I just put it up. And he's not big on scheduling things, but when he does, he doesn't want to blow people off. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. I'm the same way. I don't like to schedule things way ahead of time. I don't like things looming over my head. You know, I just like to just kind of like, oh, I want to do it tomorrow. Let's do it. You know, yeah. I know it's not the best, but it is what it is. Yeah, we're going to do an FFA afterwards as well. Yeah, because this this could be over really quickly. And then, you know, I, the streams I usually like to be a little bit longer. So, yeah, we're going to do an FFA afterwards. What's the prize? 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. All right. And then 25 per second. So both these players are guaranteed a prize at the moment. 
All right, so it's going to be the Abbasid Dynasty versus the Mongols. Ooh, Mongols are really good. I feel like Mongols at a higher level are just like absolute terrors. Um, at lower levels, not so bad, but once you get up to like conquer rank and around that like ballpark where people really learn their tactics, they can. I think they're one of the most devastating civs. I'm probably going to play in the FFA. Yeah, I'll probably play. Who are brothers? Yeah, Nanny and Sire brothers. Yes, yes, they're awesome, awesome people. Could we perhaps have a Malian FFA? Oh my god, Malians. I kind of want to play Ayubids. I've been playing them a lot, even though I know they're haggard. I, I just want to get the Dong Towers going. I just want to play Ayubids and get steamrolled by like Imperial Japan. That's that's the fantasy. That's the life. Nomad FFA. We could do it. We'll put it to a vote with all of you guys and see how we want to close out the stream. Because the FFA could take two hours. Longest FFA we had was what? Three hours and 15 minutes? What was our record? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Prime says, Professor Phone, uh, he says, Prof Phone, uh, let's see here. Go on a break, drive home, log in, get destroyed, and return back to work within an hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? I would do some throwback RTS gaming, like Command and Conquer. I don't remember how to play any of those. I played them as a kid. And all Ayubid FFA. Oh, boy. The Dong Tower must rise. Yeah, it must. Ayubids, I think the best way to probably play them would be to go Fast Castle. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like, Fast Castle and get Relics would be your best bet with Ayubids. You can go 2TC Ayubid. It could go triple TC and just, like, get Mass Camel Raiders or something. Baron says, just getting into Total War. Can't believe how much you drive this. Oh, thank you, Baron. I appreciate the kind words. Yeah. I've been doing Total War a long time. And I, I plan on doing it. As, as long as CA releases another Total War title that has good multiplayer, I will continue on it. Because there will come a time when Total War Warhammer kind of stops getting supported and whatnot. Jim Jam! Holy shit! Thank you for the 150! God damn! Let me cover uh, the prize for today and throw some in your pocket too. Thank you, man. That really helps. That really, really helps, brother. Thank you. So that covers today today's prize 100%. Even though, yeah, YouTube, of course, uh, takes... Well, I gotta pay taxes on that, but yes. Thank you. That easily covers the prize. Thank you, thank you. Jim Jam, that is super generous of you, brother. And now, in your honor, Jim Jam, spawning on the northeast side of the map, it's gonna be Anatan, the Dark Lord... He's been crushing all before him today. Nobody's been coming remotely close to him in any of these matches. Looks like he's going to be getting these villagers ready to party. Going to be setting up at the Uvu. And down to the southwest, it is going to be the Abbasid and Dragavan. Some folks saying that Dragavan has been a top 100 player in the world pretty consistently for several seasons. So if anybody's up to the task, I believe, yeah, Krakeny was probably the second highest ranked player we had in the um, tourney today. He did actually manage to defeat Anatan in our last tournament. It was a best of one, but he did get the W. But Crackety fell to Anatan today. Anatan did claim his vengeance. And what is he doing with this gear? Wait, is he... He's guys... Is he, like, pulling sheep around? <laughs> what is he doing with this? <laughs> Some wild stuff. Okay, so what this is... Thank you, Jim Jam. Thank you, thank you. One last time, brother. This is the Forbidden Early Pasture build um, near the Uvu. This is a really cool one, actually, because it allows you to age up pretty quickly because your food source is pretty safe. And um, currently, he's going to be setting up here. No, setting up next to his gold vein. Okay, that was a bit strange. Oh, he's grabbing sheep with it. Oh, my God. I've never seen that before. That's so forbidden. So he's grabbing sheep with his gear. He sets up next to the sheep and grabs them. Oh, my God. What a, what a, what a strategy. Guys, I, I, I hope you're all taking notes. <clears throat> I hope you're all taking notes. Professor Pone in chat asking, the Mongol tyrant was the Incan. He lost uh, to Prime in this tournament today. He didn't get to play Mongols. They got banned. Oh, my God. Take note. Conquer players place their revue before the five-minute mark. I'm, I'm taking notes. I am. <laughs> so he grabs sheep with his gear. Oh, my God. And he's got the early pasture out, which means he's not going to be uh, towering the gold, which is what every kind of Mount Mongol player does in ladder. But rather, he's going to be making sure his food economy is more stable because... This bad boy is going to be producing a sheep very quickly. Um, it is very, it's actually pretty quick under the influence of the Avu here. Yeah. All right. So a lot of sheep going to be getting dropped off here. Very, very good haul by the Great Khan. And for the age up here, it's going to be a military wing. Interesting. So the military wing for the Abbasid is going to immediately make two spears and two archers. And on top of that, you get boot camp. So if you're doing like a feudal all in with like battering, you know, free battering rams, that ain't a bad idea. Okay, so we're going to be probably be seeing Dragoman try and go for an early kill. Maybe he suspects that he's not going to be able to go super long against Anatand on the old um, grind here. So he's going to be trying to put this game out of its misery very quickly. 
Silver tree is going to be going down. Um, trade on this map is very viable. Trade post here, silver tree in this corner. Live long and prosper, right? It's going to be very, very good. So he's going to be doing um, not the most classic Mongol play where you usually see the gold getting towered, followed up by Keshek and trade, but rather he's going to be going straight into silver tree and uh, going for a more sustainable sheep economy, which he's not going to have to worry about sheep for a long time. He's going to be getting sheep produced from this pasture until the sun and stars die out. That is for sure. Yeah, that sheep strategy is pretty cool, man. Like grabbing that gear and like going and hustling the sheep around the map. I didn't even know that was possible, to be honest. So um, yeah, very, very cool stuff. But both players going to be aging up at a pretty similar time. Military wing will be slightly ahead. And um, he could go harass Anatan's gold. Certainly wouldn't be a bad idea. That'd be really strong. Take those two spears, take those two archers, shut down your opponent's gold here. And uh, yeah, that's going to be denying Keshiks and a multitude of good quality units here. But the Khan is going to see it coming. And Tan will probably have a uh, countermeasure in place. He may panic build a tower, you know, grab these three bills and just set up a tower there really quickly, which would pretty much mitigate all the harass. But we get the archers, we get the spearmen, the military wing units are going to be out. And Tan just poking away here. A couple archers going after the Khan. Um, and yeah, they are able to keep him honest. But dude, Anatan is so persistent. Look at that. He's got that one guy down. Spear's going to be heading to the gold vein. And what is the response going to be from the Dark Lord? Uh, looks like he keeps circling with his Khan here. In the meantime, stable coming. The Abbasid looking like they're going to be just going for the kill. And this is the exact same thing I would do. I know I'm, I, he's, Anatan is probably stronger in every aspect of the game, but like your best chance is like an all in, I think. That's a, then like trying to play a long game with these guys is brutal because when they get a lot of units, they can harass from so many angles. Their micro gets really out of control. Uh, we do not see a tower being set up here. So the Spears will knock him off gold temporarily. However, he does have 200 gold in the bank. So he's going to double produce Keshiks, likely. Um, Stables is going to be the answer here. And we do get horsemen coming out. Camel riders, uh, of course, are nice later on. But for now, it's going to be the old horsemen. So yeah, here they go. Horsemen coming. Uh, we do not see the boot camp. So it looks like he's not going to be going too hard on that. Spearmen do knock Anatand off. And he is going to be setting up a tower here on the other side, which will unfortunately let the archers probably still harass. A couple spears coming in. Anatand is going to be forced back. And the double Keshiks will be out in a moment. And what other tech is he going to be getting? I do like this harass a lot from Dragovan. I think it's nice. It contains and, um, yeah, it kind of contains him on the gold. Where is he going right now? Is he checking for trade? I think he's checking for trade. Yeah, he's running up here. But, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Horseman chasing down the con. So we do see double horseman on the con here. At least one of them, actually. Khan's still trying to pick off those gold bills. Um, he might actually die here. The Khan is a little bit slower than the horsemen. Horsemen are slightly faster than him. And it looks like uh, he's going to be retreating with his army. He doesn't want to get taken down by the Keshiks. Because Keshiks would probably win this. They could kill the two spears and the two archers. So that's a good play by Dragovan retreating. Uh, while also doing a little bit of a decent harass. You know, buying some time, knocking his opponent off gold. Tower is now coming up. And the Khan has fallen. So Dragovan, certainly with not a bad start in this game. He's kept the Mongols honest. You know, he's keeping an eye on trade. We now see the Keshiks who are going to be taking out all the wolves. And the reason why they're taking out the wolves is so the traders don't have to deal with them. And now the trade is going to be flowing like the Salmon of Capistrano. So classic Mongol army comp, Keshiks and archers. And then when you get Imperial Age, you use the Step Redoubt to get, you know, a shit ton of uh, crossbows. Or you can use Coral Tide to just go for the kill if you want to. Uh, both are very viable strategies for the old Mongols. But we've seen a Bassid twice today, I think. Yeah, we saw them earlier. They did lose that one. But, um... Yeah, I've watched Dragovan play on ladder before. Um, I do watch a lot of Age of Empires streams late at night of high-level players. And uh, I've seen him playing against quite a few high-ranked players and doing very well on taking Ws off them. So certainly, uh, well, I mean, he himself is a high-ranked player, but I'm talking about like pro-level players and whatnot. So, yep, a little bit of patrolling. So he's just kind of knocking back and forth right there. And it's going to be going uh, fast castle here probably. Where's the silver tree going to go, by the way? Looks like he's moving it to the corner. Is he going to be trading this way? Oh, okay, looks like he might move up here and maybe do a trade down this way, which might be a little bit less expected. Keshik's doing some raiding, but overall Dragovan is able to get his spears and horsemen, and he might actually be able to do some damage against these Keshiks here. Horsemen are faster. Keshiks are heavy cavalry, so they're going to potentially get caught. And uh, I do like this. Yeah, so overall Dragovan's contesting the open field. The economics are kind of even, and silver tree is going to be waddling up to the corner and is going to be training down this way, so... So it begins. Barracks coming. Mongols going to be going for the 1-1-1 one, one, one comp. So Spear, Archer, and Barracks. Uh, Spear, Archer, and Cavalry. Excuse me. So he's going to be having an answer for everything, potentially. And for the Abbasid, are they going to be going any uh, Castle Age action anytime soon? Doesn't look like it. Dragovan looks like he's expecting some sort of a, a fight here. So he himself is going to be building quite a few uh, military units here. But the Mongol trade is now going to be online. Horsemen, though, are very good at mitigating Mongol trade. They can definitely harass, and with good micro, they can outmaneuver the Keshiks and uh, get picks on all those units. But the trade is now 90 a pop. 
So if that trade is allowed to go, that is going to be incredibly devastating, ladies and gentlemen. Keshrix are going to be heading down towards the Mongolian base, or excuse me, the Abbasid base. But the army of the Abbasid is no joke. 18 uh, against 12 right now, but this is where we're going to be seeing Anatan's dreaded harass micro. So he's probably going to occupy his opponent's attention. Yeah, you can see the shift click coming down here, and these guys are going to be running into the wood line. And the Abbasid army is very static. It's in one position. He needs to definitely be ready for this. This raid back here is going to be really, really gross if it comes into play. Nice nice awareness here by Dragovan. So Dragovan is camping the trade line, and he is going to be getting horseman picks. So uh, he is going to be killing some of the trade of the Mongols. Mongols are going to be pulling their Keshiks back. Meanwhile, this guy just occupies a ton of horsemen. Certainly not bad. And the Castle Age is going to be on the horizon here. But that trader probably going to pay the troll toll. Do we have more traders coming at the moment? Um... No, that looks like it's the only one. He does have a constant flow of traders, but that's a really, really cost-effective pick there. A horseman taking down a trader is great. Traders cost uh, a bit of money. It costs, you know, 100 resources, give or take, so certainly not terrible. Keshik's hunting down the horseman, but Dragoman has really got good micro as well, man. He's got really, really good micro. He's running about and uh, causing quite a bit of havoc. Keshik being hunted by mass horsemen. Some very, very clean of acid play, using the early military wing to kind of keep the Mongols in check. Mongols, I suspect, are going to be aiming for castles some, at some point, but no, they're just producing units. I mean, look at the bank, 64 and 122. So both players are really, really just trying to get that, um, yeah, get these early militaries to make sure nobody loses ground. Kashuk's chasing horsemen, but he's uh, certainly met an opponent here who can keep up with them in terms of micro. Dragoman's micro is very, very good, it would seem. He's not making too many mistakes, and honestly, he's probably going to get another pick here. Yeah, he's just going to pick off another trader, and um, the Mongolian trade... So definitely being harried hard. Good response there from Anatan. Anatan able to force those guys back. And that is a big army. 32, man. 32 supply. He's going to be pushing into the Mongol lines. But the Mongols are waiting. I feel as if Anatan is going to wait for him to leave. And then he's going to move in and maybe, you know, dive the eco a little bit. But uh-oh. We see a big switch onto wood eco. So if you look at the villager allocation, the Abbasid have none on gold. 13 on wood. Which means that uh, he's going to be looking to try and uh, Ramstein the Mongols. Now the Mongolian player is going to have to defend. This is not going to be easy. The military advantage does favor the Abbasid. Does he get boot camp? Uh, he did get boot camp. So now 15% HP on all of his infantry, which is going to be the spears and archers. So yeah, the Abbasid certainly could be a big threat here. It depends. It depends, ladies and gentlemen. Chasing down yet another trader, and he's going to be herring the trade line here. A little bit of trade does go back and forth, so that's going to be giving Anatan a bit of money. Uh, the one issue that I am seeing here from Dragoman is he might be engaging with too small a portion of his army. Because the Mongols got their full force here, and a lot of his horsemen are down here harrying and shutting down trade. One trader does escape, but we'll see how long he is going to be able to uh, live for. So far, Dragoman has been hunting and uh, certainly taking no mercy. Anatan coming in for split harass. Yeah, he looks like he's poking around, trying to find opportunities, but Dragoman is guarding everything. He's got spears and archers back here. His army split up over the battlefield. Um, we're going to see who gets castled first. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's going to be a Siege Engineer. Yep, we see Siege Engineer being played. Oh, man. The timing of Anatan, though. He waits, and as soon as that army consolidates and leaves, uh, he's going to be coming in and butchering some of the bills here. So looking at the economics, we do see Anatan ahead. Uh, Dragman's going to be getting back on the wood. And, uh, yeah, you got to push with this big army while you have the advantage. If you let Anatan keep harassing you and keeping you back in your base like this, I think that's how Anna wins, right? So we do get a house. No tower being set up back here. Leave a couple of these units. He's got to go push up with this army, though. Now, this is also really good. Having one Camel Ar Archer mix into your army will mitigate your opponent's um, horse DPS by 20%, which against Mongols is very good, since they typically have Keshiks mixed in with their feudal armies. But yeah, this has been a really, really sweaty fight so far. I'm enjoying this one quite a bit. The Spear Unit does get uh, overextended and unfortunately cut down by the Raiders here. And we have another Archer range coming out yet again. And another raid from downtown. Man, Anatan's raiding is really good. And like, this, if this were... If there was no raiding going down, okay... Let's say we have a straight up fight. Um, what would happen is, is the Abbasid army would probably come in and honestly maybe be able to kill Anatan. It's much bigger and he's got, gonna have battering rams and droves, but Anatan's raiding is keeping him uh, pinned back in his base. And once again, more raiding on the other side, but this time he's pretty ready for it. He's got some spears and various military units here. One Keshek does fall, another Keshek could be uh, going into the trash can here, we'll have to see. But the raiding was shut down and up here, horsemen are picking off the Keshiks as well. It's getting a little bit dodgy, man. Nobody really has any uh, castle play here. This map is a very close quarters map. Typically, you're going to be seeing... I mean, it is kind of close quarters. Yeah, you're just like right across the way. There's not a lot of obstructing terrain. But the raiding has been halted for now. But the economic advantage does lie in the hands of the Mongols. Mongols going to have to defend here really, really hard. Yeah, we got double archery range coming up, which is going to be very necessary. And Dragovan's going to be coming in with a Dread Legion of Hardened Spearmen and a lot of goodies, man. Here they come, man. Here they come. Yep, kills another trader. 
And uh, some of the eco, remember, some of the uh, eco here is going to be on the traders. Oh my god, he's doing the short distance trading, but even Dra Dragovan's even watching that. He is not letting these Mongols trade at all. And I would wager the Mongols are going to start, or the Abbasid, are going to start setting up battering rams here, like right now. Currently, what, how much wood is he sitting on? Let's see. Uh, not much, actually. He doesn't have enough for rams. Well, he does switch a lot. The Uvu is depleted, so uh, Anatan's going to need to get that next Uvu up, and uh, probably would be up here in the hills. I would wager. 15 trade is going down. The horseman is patrolling. Look at him. He's just patrolling back and forth. Let the boy watch, dude. He's watching. Anatan kind of on the back foot a little bit. 61 against 42. And the Abbasid feudal military is going to be better than you because they have more HP. Uh, their archers as well as their spearmen will have 15% more HP than you, which is good. That's like several arrow shots, several spear thrusts more that they're going to be able to take. And from here, he probably collapses on the top side with some battering ram play. He has 300 wood right now. And he kills another trader. Man, Dragovan is going hard in the paint. He's hunting this down, but Anatan is going to be counter raiding once again. This is just making the pushing so difficult. At some point, you know, Dragovan is just going to have to pull the trigger. Um, he's setting up a house here. We don't see any towers. He does finally have some walls on the side, but he's got no military back here. He's got one horseman. Um, yeah, a couple spears are going to be heading back there to deal with the counter raiding. That is a lot of Keshiks, and now the ram sign is going to be coming. This is going to be big. This is going to be very big. 70 military against 50. Eco is actually close enough that it's not really like super advantageous for one side or the other. Villager is going to be running back. A couple spearmen and um, horsemen are there to defend, but overall... Oh, he accidentally targets the mill there. Is he going to get any villager damage? Uh, both players have done decent economic damage. Kashuk's going to be dragged down by the spears. That was not the best raid for old uh, Anatant here. And now the ramming is going to intensify. Uh, does he have enough for another ram? He does not, but he's going to get on these pastures, push them back. Anatant trying desperately to muster an army however he can. The dreaded Abbasid, man. They are no joke. Spears moving up. Keshik's uh, picking off villagers where they can. Currently, seven villager kills against five. Uh, he gets a couple there, but not super devastating. And now the rams have arrived. So we're going to be seeing what Anatan looks like on the defensive here. How good is his defense going to be? Uh, he does immediately garrison the TC. The Abbasid army is thick. That is a thick army, man. He's got 24 archers and 28 spears. Although Anatan does have 34 and 34. So now the archers are going to begin trading. Villagers garrisoning. TC is getting rammed. He's actually going straight for the TC. I think getting some freebies on the pastures here would have been nice, because in case it fails. But he is going straight for the TC, and it's just going deep for it. Also raiding some of the eco. So Anachan could take some economic damage here. Yeah, villagers are getting picked off on the flanks. Horsemen are chasing them down. We do see the villager kills for the Abbasid going up to 10, as the town center does get worked on. The blacksmith also going to be getting uh, harried a little bit. In the backfield, he does have his tower up, and uh, the fight continues. Although the Abbasid army is dropping in numbers very heavily, Anatan's mass archers are just heavily out trading these spears. He does manage to kill a couple units, but overall, I think Anatan comes out ahead there. He maintains the economic lead. Now his army is a lot bigger than that of the Abbasid, and that could be a GG, honestly. That was kind of an all-in. Uh, back in the Abbasid base, do we see any transition into 2TC? It doesn't look like it. And that massive military advantage uh, is now gone. But the one thing he did do is he idled Anatan's economy for a long time, so he wasn't mining. Um, food in the base is looking good. The pastures are still producing. I definitely think going for the uh, pastures here on the Uvu would have been very nice, but alas, uh, that ain't going to work out. He's got this little kind of trade going here. Beautiful defense, so Anatan showing that he's certainly strong on every uh, frontier of the game. Yeah, no Castle Age on the horizon. Anatan does have 500 gold in the bank. He did lose some villagers. Currently, uh, Dragovan did manage to kill 14 Eco there, but he's going to be able to get the... Oh man, he was sneaking trade the entire time. Man, so look at this. He actually had a market going here. So that's why his eco is still bigger than the Abbasid is because of the traders. And now he's going to be able to probably establish cross-map trade there. That was that was a very, very good attempt. But I think that Anatan probably will take control of the game from here. But Anatan could still blunder this army 100%. Dragovan needs to find a way to keep harassing those, those trade routes too if he can. All right. So, yeah. In the meantime, we got traders bumping it back and forth. They're hustling. And, uh... Yeah, man, I don't know. The trade's online now. It's going to go cross-map. He's going to be back up to 90 trade. He's got the military advantage. He's got the economic advantage. Um, it's going to be tough, but man, I have to say I'm very impressed with his Abbasid play. He's been playing very well. Very, very well. So I think that the Mongols... Do they just go castle here? I think so. I think the Mongols are just going to castle up. They're going to get Kurultai, and they're going to come kill him. Because when Kurultai pops up, if he's against a feudal opponent with Castle Age units and Kurultai, there's basically no chance. You, par you park Kurultai in front of your opponent's base, build like two rams, and then you just like give him the dirty. You'll have Metad Arms, you'll have Castle Age Keshix. It's going to be uh, incredibly devastating. Although Anatan isn't really banking for Castle. Eh, maybe he just goes for the kill now. Who knows? Uh, he's got a lot of his army sending back here. 
Uh, his traders are getting uh, very nicely established. So currently, Anatan is going to be sitting on nine traders, each of which is going to be dropping off 90 a pop, which is going to be really gross. He does need to reallocate some of these, but... The Ambassador are not even on gold. They're just keeping everything on wood to muster a big uh, feudal military, which, you know, makes sense. Just trying to survive, get your military back. His military might is 43 against 57, but... He's going to need to, yeah, he's going to need to think about Castle. Although Anatan looks like he's just going to try and kill him here. He's not going to go for the Coral Tie. He just wants this game to be over quick. Um, he does have most of his upgrades except the melee armor, which isn't going to be that relevant against Spears. And uh, does he have Siege Engineering yet? He does not. So he could just try and blitz his opponent's base. I mean, it certainly could work. Keshik's and Archers with ranged armor upgrade. Just get in there and just, you know, idle his eco and uh, force him to tap out. But yeah, no Siege Engineering from Anatan yet. Uh, these villagers here looks like they are idled for now and uh, okay so he's gonna go castle yep we got the old coral tie coming oh i was looking at the long wrong metric there but yeah coral tie is on the way yep he's gonna be going for it and coral tie is gonna be parked right outside of his opponent's base and that will probably be the end of dragoban but dragoban has put up an excellent fight today i'm very impressed with this play he's playing you know a professional player and dragoban seems like he's certainly uh you know a contender right he musters well his micro is good just a bit of a miscalculation perhaps on the all-in uh, cost him because it was kind of like a bit of a standoff, right? Like both players, uh, Dragman's Conqueror 3. It was a bit of a standoff, right? Like both players were kind of, you know, not sure. They were both massing feudal. Nobody was really getting an advantage, but I like going for the kill though. I, I like that play from the Abbasid. It just didn't quite work out. So yeah, go and harry some of the trade here. He's got some towers being set up. Um, are we going to be seeing military wings? Still no gold. Okay, he's back on gold now. Coral Tie is about to pop off though, and as soon as Coral Tie pops off, you're going to be seeing Castle Age upgrades for Keshix and Archers immediately. So, ready? One, two, and three. So, we got the Archer, we got the Archer upgrade, and where's the Keshik upgrade? That should be the other one. Although, maybe he's just going to go with the Archers. Uh, yeah, Keshix. Okay, so he's got all those. Now he's going to head into the middle. Um, and this is the last stand of Dragoban. Dragoban's going to move up with his army, but he's going to get Coral Tie in the face. Cool Tie's going to roll up, give healing. It's going to be very nasty. Yep, see, the Cool Tie's on the way. Mongols definitely don't want to fight until they get their castle upgrades. I mean, but they can. They have such a numerical advantage. 51 archers against uh, 29, soon to be castle, with the ranged damage upgrade as well. It's going to be uh, pure brutality. So where are the Keshiks are? The Keshiks doing a little bit of raiding? They are. Horsemen coming in. These archers better be careful. They don't have their support. The Keshiks are now going to ride back to the middle. Uh, the Keshiks have been upgraded to veteran, so they're ready to party. The Cool Tie took a little bit of damage. Going to be setting up here, but um, here he comes. Now, are the Abbasid going to be able to get Castle Age? Uh, it's going to be a tough one. Setting up Farm Eco, so preparing for the longer game. I'm going to be turbo impressed if Dragoman manages to survive this onslaught of the uh, Cruel Tie. I would be very, very impressed. Because this army is so superior right now. It's probably going to be GG here. I mean, a lot of these archers are going to be harried down. Granted, there are spears, but then you just pull the knights back, let your archers go ball deep. That is so many archers, and Coral Tide's about to get set up. That's going to give healing. It's going to give damage. Oh, my God. This army is sauced right now. 20% damage and passive healing. The horsemen just getting mowed down by the archers. At this point, it's such a technological advantage. It doesn't even really matter if you have the counter unit, right? It's going to be a very, very rough time for you. So Anatan, the Dark Lord, arrives with his veteran Keshix, and the Coral Tide is going to continue scooting up. You can see they're still in range. That passive healing is so good. It's going to be pushed off berries. The Keshix uh, can honestly just rampage. Dragoban losing so many of his archers right here, and uh, this is going to be bounty for the Mongols too. And that is it. Anatan wins, our today's, uh, wins today's tournament. He was uh, looking for vengeance. You know, he did lose in the last Grand Finals, but today he comes back absolutely crushes all of his opponents, crushes the individual who beat him last time, and is here for blood. So GG, well played. He's going to be winning the cash prize, and Dragoban will be winning the second prize, which is also a cash prize, and they're going to be doing it. GG, well played. Good game. If you guys enjoyed the sweaty 1v1 action, do drop a like on the way out. I think Age of Empires is such a good RTS game. It's clean, it's fun, uh, unique faction identity. It's great, man. It's great. GG, power gamer indeed. All right, so as is tradition, we're going to be closing out today's event with a um, with a uh, match here. So it should be fun. We're going to do an FFA. Uh, I did promise Nanny Yori a spot, so let me get Nanny in here first. And then I'm going to open this up to everybody. Uh, Nanny, I owe Nanny a spot from something. I don't remember what it was, but we'll, we'll get him in there. I trust, I trust him. All right, so let's invite to the match. Cool. And uh, turn FFA. All right. And now it's open. Come party, ladies and gentlemen. Allow observers. We'll put a 10 second delay just to troll. And um, all right. Oh, the professor of Ponage is in here. All right. 
Well, out of the usual crew, we got myself, Nanny, Wang, Tron, Ezra, Sai, Propone, and Jordan. All right. I don't owe you a spot. I've been fooled. <laughs> All good. It doesn't matter. Okay, one, two, three, four, and um, cool. We're good to go. Yeah, his birthday was a couple days ago, so close enough. It's fine. Uh, all right. So let me say the check with the players here. Um, find you. GG well played. Uh, PayPal code, please. We mess with Dragovan. I need to find Dragovan. So let me find Dragovan in the Discord and scroll up here. GG well played. Send. Me that PayPal, please. Email. All right. You guys want to do Black Forest? Uh, I don't know if I feel like suffering. So they can people can play whoever they want. Whoa, la, la. Do we want to go with the Ayubids? God, there's two Jap Japanese players here. We're just going to get rolled over. Oh, and having two landmarks against Japan is just so bad. It's so incredibly bad. Let's try. Let's try a little bit of um. Let's play a little bit of Joan of Arc. That's gonna be fun. You know, I don't play Joan often. Screenshotting to make sure we have the same players. And it's fired off. All right, we're gonna do Joan. In community FFAs with newer players. Oh yes, please, Shelby, join us. New players are always encouraged and welcome. <laughs> always. I'm gonna go Joan, yeah. The, pa the passive AOE healing dervish. I kind of wanted to play a little Joan. Because then I can just be lazy and build a guild hall in the corner. You know, that's the plan. Yes. And we can, and even if I get wrecked, I can run around with Joan of Arc and have fun. That, that's like kind of the, kind of the thing there. And perfect. GG well played. And Ten says he really likes the fast format. I agree. I think it's, I think it's really good. RTS tournaments can be so brutal. It's definitely one of the big turnoffs of competitive play is the length of events. You have to like commit your whole Saturday, but like these guys only had to commit, what, like two hours? Which is awesome. You get in, you play, you get some competitive reps. If you lose early, whatever, you go do something else. It's uh, it's it's nice. Yeah, Shelby, please join us, dude. Please join us. <laughs> the Ezra strat, yeah. Well, Ezra's playing Mongols. Mongols are S tier too, because they don't even need stone to build a wonder. So they're just like, they're just like cackling in the corners, right? We just finished the tourney. Yeah, we just finished it. I can spoil it for you, Niall, or you can check it out. But um, you let me know, and I'll tell you either way. <laughs> Jean de Bombard. Yeah. <laughs> She's summoning Bombard cannons from uh, from her backpack. Uh, HRE can be really good if they get relics. If HRE gets like four relics, they can be very formidable. Because their passive gold is pretty insane. And emergency repairs is not bad either. And their food eco is pretty respectable. Like HRE is not a joke in FFA. They're pretty good. But if you don't get relics, then you're just an absolute turd. You're just like awful. So it's 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 scary. And we do have sushi. We have one sushi. Okay. And I, you know, as French, I don't really care about relics too much. Uh, I'm just going to be, I have guild hall. So it's like, whatever. Jean de Greenskins, what? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Made the salt flow. There might be a little salt here. We have some very good players. Oh shit, it's Nomad. Oh, no. I didn't even notice that. Okay, well. Uh-huh. Okay, guys. I forgot I had it on Nomad last time. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we found a gold node. Um, Down here. Nomad, what have you done? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm too weak. Is this like a patch here? I think we might just set up here. Okay, there's a relic there, too, which is nice. So let's uh, do this here. Yeah, I don't want to like be too late. And the corner, like everybody always rushes the corner, so sometimes it's um. <laughs> hey, Joan of Arc with the bonus build speed, baby. She's gonna be getting experience here too. Oh, dude, MLG Joan. Correct. I did not notice it was Nomad. Yeah. But I'm very happy to have Joan here because she's gonna be getting a lot of experience from this build, which is awesome. And then she can go build the dock and go fishing and stuff. So that'll be the plan. Um. Yeah. Cool, so we're set up here. At least you build fast, I know, I know, it's, it's great. Uh, China's probably pretty good too. Mongols are easy, just run around. Go, yeah, you know, please. he can figure it out. Uh, he picked Mongols. Professor Pwn giving the sage advice of, uh, of horses. 
And uh, we're gonna need, shit, I'm gonna have to find some food here pretty quick, guys. I didn't like settle near any food, but we do have access to this. The golden trees is, is always nice, and we can set up early farms if we have to. Yeah, Joan's gonna be like, I should run around with Joan just like hunting. Yeah, she's pretty fun. She's pretty fun. Having, I mean, who doesn't like hero characters, right? Hero characters are a great, great time. So we'll need to build a scout right away. Um, in the meantime, you guys can jump on the tree line here. Okay, great. We need to start making bills. And uh, actually, we probably need to get a scout first to go get some sheep. Random Chad. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Jean d'Arc is going to do this. We'll send one villager up this way. And did we get the dock already? Nah, not yet. I don't think we're ready for that. All right, scout. Let's go see who settled near us. <laughs> the salt lord, yeah. Hunting the oppressed peasants. That's, that's, what's, uh, that's what's good in life, you know? That's, you know, it's the way. Okay, we really wish I had some food here. It's kind of sucks. I might need to go, um, might need to go some early farms. And then you can work that. Um, we're gonna, we're just gonna set up a couple farms so I have some food income. It's gonna be super janky, but, um, yeah, as long as we can kind of like sort of passively produce. Maybe. Okay, so we got the dreaded double farm out of the gates. Joan of Arc is gonna be working on the trees. Uh, we see berry bushes over there, but you are already committed. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, my God, we got Poe next to us. <laughs> that dirty dog. All right. So we need to get water. I'm idling gills right now, which sucks bad. Um, it is what it is. What can you do? A third farm might be okay, but we do have a couple sheep now, so we can at least bring these back and get on the sheep with all these. Yeah, we need to get a higher villager count. Please hunt down my closest neighbor. Oh, dude, for sure. Pwn might be ahead of me. It depends on what he's got. Um, all right, so let's get you on this and have you guys turn in and get that. Okay. So we got the Haggard Farms going. Let's go see what's going on in this corner. Hell yeah, idling bills, baby. Pwn might be okay. Although Joan is already kind of close to aging up, which is funny. If I get Joan of Arc, I'm going to go harass his gold lines so hard. He's going to... This is going to be vengeance for all the times he's come after me. <laughs> there has to be a blood feed with Pwn. There has to be. Yeah, it's the chosen one. He settled pretty close to me too, like literally right up on my border. All right, we're not idling bills anymore, which is great. So now we can switch on to the lumber eco. Five is gonna be enough there and we need to get a house. So let's uh, set up a little house here. All right, so John Dark is gonna build there and let's keep scouting. Man, I could have literally gone down to this corner. Although the corner is like often derelict of resources. So, um, you know, you gotta be careful with that. Okay, so Jean d'Arc is pretty close to aging up. She's pretty close. We need to get that dock going now, though. The dock of doom. Playing, if you have access to water and you're not playing it, you're making a mistake. Hi, Nanny, says uh, Ezra. So it looks like everyone's discovering one another. Everyone's being friendly, hopefully. Jean d'Arc is pretty close, dude. It's going to be so funny when Jean d'Arc rolls up on Pwn and starts sniping his bills. Holy shit, I'm going to go bow, bow of arc. Um, just so I can do the early harass. It, I know melee of arc is probably, uh, no, that's more for 1v1. All right. He says I'm leaving this sector. Yeah, that's pretty funny. All right, let's go make a, make a dock here. John Dark needs to stay working. Let's pull you up here. And, um, wow, this whole corner, man. This could have, I could have just moved a little bit further and this whole corner would have been mine. Oh my God. Feels bad, feels bad. All right, JD's almost there, man. Nomad JD OP, huh? And uh, let's just set you up. All right, keep scouting out the corner. Roos would have, yeah, Roos are good. Roos are good in FFA. Roos are a very good save in general. They just like are smooth and do a lot of things very well. All right, give me that JD. Okay, river fishing. Wow, I have this whole corner to myself. If I, if I can get rid of Pwn. Easier said than done, of course. Pwn is a tyrant, so. Uh, all right. Let's come down here. Keep looking. Seeing what we find. Uh, we can start on gold a little bit now. Uh, I've been scouted, so I think Pwn knows I'm here now. The jig is up. <laughs> Look, he says, oh god. That's his first, uh, first statement there. That's so funny. All right, let's make two boats. Oh my God, what the hell is this? Look at this like glitchy ass fishing node in the corner. 
Oh, God. It's JD time. Oh, give it to me. Yes. Let the evil flow. All right. So we're going to do Path to the Archer. You guys ready? <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. This is so fun. Holy shit. I already have JD, too. All right. Let's go. Where are them gold workers at? Hmm. Are you on gold? Oh, hi, Pwn. Be a shame if somebody picked off that villager there. <laughs> oh, this is so troll, dude. All right. We need to make him rebuild this Cora storehouse. John Dark is doing it. Okay, and thankfully she heals in combat, which is pretty troll, so... Not in combat, but... We're waiting for the next arrow to pop off. Okay. Let's grab you guys and switch here. He's got a scout coming for me. <laughs> this is the trolliest shit ever, dude. <laughs> this is so evil! <laughs> This is so evil, dude. Oh my god, I even feel a little guilty for this. This is what he gets, though, dude. He deserves this shit. Okay, I should probably stop laughing and age up. Um, oh. Okay. Okay, Joan can actually hold there and shoot. Grab a handful of you guys, do this, and uh, we're going to build the School of Cavalry right here. We'll build our other two landmarks around the map. Okay, he's garrisoning. And uh, fishing is looking good. So we're pretty much caught up on the age up now. I, I just need three. Uh, you know what? One more is probably fine. I'm surprised he's not politicking for help. Okay, let's consecrate our town center. And uh, soon we're going to be aged up. And then let's set up another house here. JD's going to just yell and that will make her heal magically. Oh my god, this is like... I'm getting a little experience for her too, which is great. Okay, my river is being harried by Khan. Okay, that's enough for ass, I think. I think we've, I think we've done our part. Okay, he's trying to get out to the berry bushes, but not while not while John Dark is there. He might try and prison shank me. Okay, I need to go scout. I'm j I I was having such such a fun time with this. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! That I forgot that I need to uh, micro my units here. All right. So I think we have enough in the river. I think that's going to be enough. Um, we can just start on some French knights. This guy's stuck or something. Okay, let's go scout. Jesus, I I was just like so. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I got a little crazy on my pathing here. I think I thought that I had John Dark selected. Yeah. It's all good. John Dark just being an absolute terror as usual. Uh, could go 2TC, could go Fast Castle. I think just going 2TC is probably fine. Although we should probably just try and honestly uh, take Pwn out first. I think that's going to be the play. So we'll get a Knight. He's going to come over and start you know, rampaging around the lands. And we'll get a Blacksmith up. Uh, probably enough river eco, I think, is, 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 we're okay there. He says water's on the map. <laughs> oh my god, this is so troll, dude. I, I would be so frustrated if I were him. And I just had, like, a JD spawning next to me. Okay, we gotta, we gotta keep him in, in check, though. Okay, I'm being harassed. Pwn's got horsemen coming now, but we have French knights, so we're, we're totally chilling. Let's get some archers coming out, too. And, uh, yeah, I think we just go for the kill here. We just get a blacksmith and do it. <laughs> Ezra's still trading 52. Man, they're already politicking against Ezra? Okay. Must be pretty interesting over there. He's taking a lot of eco damage, ladies and gentlemen. A whole bunch. We got the blacksmith coming. Uh, you need to continue scouting if we can. If we get rid of Pwn, we just have this whole bottom area to ourselves. Which is so big, right? Oh, did we get that guy? I don't think we did. Okay. 
So it's just going to be rams now. And uh, let's continue getting knights. Do this. We got the archer range, so we can make archers now. Uh, so his turn, help me kill him. See, he's he's reaching he's reaching out for help. So this is where we need to um, we need to make sure to finish him quickly. Because if Pwn gets reinforcements from the west, from somewhere or other, you know we're going to be in bad shape. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, he's making horsemen. <laughs> two bills all quickly <laughs> we also have healing on our knights right that's pretty savage okay so we're, we're gonna get ram soon and just try and get him go for the kill uh let's get going golds let's do this siege engineering should be finished so we can get our first couple rams here okay i have the wa oh why did i just build boats just bad habits i'm getting good military experience too this is this is very good Okay, Ezra's Castle Age, so yeah, we are potentially in danger of being killed. If we don't get old Pwn Dog quickly, um, I could die. Because somebody else could come down and just, you know, wrecking ball us. Joan of Arc just like single-handedly building that shit, just like, oh. <laughs> Okay, so we're not going to go like too hard on the paint on it. Um, I almost want to just wall this river. If we can, I'm going to try and sneak somebody down there to do it. And um, let's do that. And we're just going to get, I think, one ram will honestly probably do it. We can get, like, a ranged armor upgrade or something. Oh, he actually raids back here. Okay, so let's get our knights and head down there. Pwn with the counter raiding. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's attack. And do we want to get any other upgrades? Yeah, the arrow upgrade is always pretty good. Okay, let's do that. And uh, cool. So we're about ready to party now. Once this ram finishes, we just get in there and, and go and give him the dirty. Okay, so let's go up here, do this, and uh, yeah, make some more knights and whatnot. Oh, hello. Am I being raided by someone? Jordan is there, doing God knows what. Okay, so let's take down this tower first. I have no idea what's going on in the base. We're going to get this tower, and um, I need to get on gold, man. All right. So let's do this. Get you guys up into the farms. And, oh, hello. He's actually on my archers here. Well played. Not that it matters too much. And the ram is going to knock him down. All his defenses are pretty much falling. And JD is saving up some concrete, consecrates. Um, we can consecrate you and you. And now we just get back and build more rams. <laughs> he said save me. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I'm like, just dropping Haggard. Hagger. <laughs> All right. So let's make a couple more rams and just go on for the, for the death thrust here. And let's get the fishing upgrade. It's going to be worth it. Um, we never got that wall off on the south. Come on. Some of you guys have to have caught the reference. Wake me up. <laughs> Wake me up. <laughs> Tron says I can save you. Oh man, I really hope he doesn't get any help because I'm like super behind by trying to kill him. Okay, so we're gonna get two more rams and that should be that should be enough. Cause I could be in big trouble. This the squealing for help is is certainly not good. Uh thankfully Pwn's not politicking too hard, he's not communicating very well with them. So that's good. Uh alright. We need to get Castle, man. This is, like, really haggard how we're not Castle yet. And JD is going to come in, and uh, let's consecrate that. Consecrate that. And now let's party. Okay, this should be enough. Is there any more river crossings? I need to I need to have scouted better, dude. It's so bad that I haven't. All right. Let's run these guys down. Uh, JD can just pick off random shit, whatever. Yeah, he's pretty much dead. Unless he's able to get a castle landmark somewhere, which I don't think he will. Okay, he's got a couple spears coming in, so let's pick those guys off. No problem. You guys just keep parrying. We get him down, and um, yeah, now we need to go to the bottom corner and build a guild hall. So we're going to go all the way down here. All right. Should be quick enough. I didn't go 2 TC. It's all good. We can build multiple TCs right now. So let's get you guys, head over here, and get on uh, stone. All right. 
This is what this is what Pwn deserves though. He's he's been a villain in a lot of our previous uh, encounters in this game. If if he had but been a bro to me once or twice more. Okay. So looking pretty bleak for the old Shogun there. Oh shit! I forgot I have a hero character. <laughs> All right, is she dead? Yeah, she'll be back. I'll, I'll bring her back in a second. Pone's got his prison shanks out. I need to get John Dark back for experience point reasons. So let's save these guys. <laughs> He's a samurai fight to the death. I forgot I have a hero character that I need to babysit a little bit. Okay, so I'm just waiting to kill these guys before JD gets there. And, um, yeah. Uh-oh, Jordan's coming. Okay, is she going to get castle here? Yes. So let's do the, um, hmm. Let's do the companions to get some men-at-arms. Okay, so we're on stone. Uh, Pone's getting some reinforcements, maybe. <laughs> GG. He was too late. He was too late, indeed. Okay, upgrades, upgrades, and, um... Is he not dead? He is dead. Okay. <laughs> he says, I was just kidding. That's so funny. He just was never going to help Pone at all. I'm sorry, Pone. It had to happen. You always you always attack me, so I had to I had to try and deal with that threat early. Um, you know, I couldn't I couldn't have it. Okay, let's clear all this out, and uh, just so the Mongols can't have it. Yeah, it's hard. He didn't have water, even though he could have had it. It wasn't like too far off here. Um, I need to learn what John Dark's buttons do. All right, we can just call out like free stuff and get that off cooldown, right? Okay, let's do this, and we can set up another TC here. And um, now we have Castle Age, so let's have that start gathering. Um, we can just gather stone for now. It's going to be fine. Outstanding. All right. So the river fishing is looking good. Let's get a little bit more of that going. Uh, where is the other river crossing, by the way? We're going to go, like, explore up this way and see what we can find. Oh, hello. What the hell is this? What is this shit? Is this, what, is this really a, just a fat army? What is this? Tron's like rolling with an HRE army here. Should be able to cut him down. He's going for the Rams for some godforsaken reason. Okay, just gonna lose a ton of them here. Yeah, I don't know why he's killing the Rams. It's very strange. Anyways, let's get the monastery up here. And uh, yeah, he just loses that whole army and gives JD a bunch of experience, which I'm more than happy to, uh, to take, right? We got a couple of relics which we can actually grab. Okay, so you can do this. So let's have you start on the stone walls here, actually. Okay, that was weird. Just like a random ass army of spears just coming down. All right, let's just get this set. So I can uh, start trading a little bit. Okay, so let's just get stone. Let's be greedy. Let's get the knights upgraded. Um, yeah, we need to get relics now. And you can, um, let's just keep you guys on the tree line here. And let's head up north. All right, so back onto the gold dock here. Should be fine. I could even set up another TC potentially. And uh, let's get some walls here. Yeah, we can delete that now. Free up some supply. We're not going to need it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Okay, that changes everything. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay, so he's actually really close to me. Thankfully, we just killed that army. And down on the south side, we need to get you. Let's get that and this. And, um, okay, wow. That that actually changes a lot. So we need to get some uh, military buildings out stat. So let's go ahead and do this. And uh, the counter to HRE is, is, is the Arbalist. They're super brutal. And then we can also get some stables as well. Because we're going to get a keep right here. So we're, we're going to be playing for that. Oh, that's right. We don't need to worry about that as much with JD. Yeah, keeps and stuff. Well, anyways, it's, it's an okay spot. We'll do that. We'll do it the old French way. Okay. People dying left and right. Yeah, only two. It's pretty standard fare. I actually don't know how this is going to go against Homeboy here. We need to get a keep, though. And also some walls. And two relics, hey man, that's not bad for not even trying for him. Plus we had to take out old Pone Dog quote pretty early, unfortunately. Pone's a beast. But you know, we couldn't we couldn't allow him to because if I leave him be, then I get 2v1 later. 
Right, so we don't want that. Okay, so we're going to wall off here, and we're going to take you guys. Run down here and wall this off too. I just want to be very safe now. Like, from here I can almost even be pacifist. Okay, this is a little bit dodgy. It's a decent quality army. Oh shit, oh shit. I, I just literally A moved into that. Oh god, oh god. Okay, JD, do your, do your witchcraft. Let's lure him under TC so his spears get wrecked. And uh, let's garrison you guys too. Okay, it's fine. Can we summon some companions? Not quite. Okay, let's get you guys coming down. Get the crossies fighting. Joan Dark's going to keep fighting here. Um, we definitely need to get a keep if possible, so let's do that. And turn in and come up here. Slap a keep down. I think the fight's going okay. He's definitely winning it, but if we could just stabilize, we'll be, up, we'll be fine. So let's go set up this keep here. In the front, um, JD's going to keep poking. Let's pull you back. And um, we need to get you guys doing this. Sell some wood. Do that. Okay, great. So now we have some of the arbs. She should be okay. We do take some villager casualties. Those a little bit bronze odia, but at the end of the day, it's fine. Yeah, crossbows are doing great. And if we just stabilize here, I think we're, we're money. We get the keep, and um, I'm definitely going to go for another TC. And summon the companions. Did it work? Or did I, like, cancel it and it stopped working for some reason? Huh, weird. All right, so he's just trickling in men-at-arms and whatnot. Um, let's get you guys back to business. So you guys can go back under the tree line here. And we take down that men of arm and get you back onto stone. And great. So now we got to keep here. Feeling pretty good. And um, yeah, let's go get on gold. Okay, so we need to just kind of get our shit together here. Let's get some more fishing boats upriver. And we need to get a vill to deal with that. We need to consecrate. So John, Joan can do this. Consecrate that. And let's peace for now, he says. I'm chilling. Hey, oh, 30 minutes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, either way works, Arlen. Go ahead and grab. Do it, do it. Go ahead and grab food. Just the fries. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Love you. All right, so back in business. He wants peace for now. Which, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a peaceful, peaceful guild hall enjoyer, right? Uh, I'm more than happy to chill out here. Oh, hello. In the corner, we have a red palace coming in from Jordan. Oh, is Jordan trying to get across? Oh, he's just trying to get landmarks here. Okay. So, this is actually kind of troll because I could lose my landmark back here. Okay, I need to get like... So, I need to get a farm eco going. I'm not sure. Let's get this. Let's get this. And, um, yeah. So, we got you. Let's get a bunch of stables now. So, stables for the stable god. Bring you guys in, and um, yeah, we can just go ahead and. It's funny, I'm doing like the old French tactics, right? Yeah, I'm collecting stone, but maybe I should just yeah, I, I want to collect stone for as long as I possibly can. And uh, what are these upgrades? Okay, increases John Dark's John Dark's health, and then Ordnance Company. Okay. It's gonna make siege a little bit cheaper. So make it a great wall. I'm down for a little bit of peace. Let's build a gatehouse here. We definitely go kill his red palace. I need to get imp myself, though. Um, yeah, I feel like collecting stone was maybe a mistake. How's our, our river eco? That's like our, all our food is, is tied up in the river. All right, so JD's close to level four. She's almost bombard of arc. Not quite yet. Um, we need to get this, and then we need to get that. So let's get the Great Wall of Swords going. We can get a couple more of you guys to go do this. And uh, yeah, we're hanging in there. I'm actually down to chill. Like I don't, I don't want to get dragged into conflict yet. I, I am not ready for it. All right, set up a tower there. Got to deal with that Red Palace at some point or other. Whoa, what were those bulls doing? What the hell? My pathing has just been wonky this game. It's my fault, obviously, but. Okay, so let's go here. One, two, three, four. Oh my god, no. I can't have the ugly farms today, guys. I can't handle it. My psyche can't handle the ugly farms. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Alright, so we just we're just chilling now. Let's let's like let's let's play like a like a proper French player. Just like semi AFK, you know. I'm pretty sure this is all walled now. So we just gotta go try and save our um, guild hall here in a minute. But I would rather get imp first. Okay, 28 on gold is a little bit overkill, so let's pull you guys in and then do that. Um, John Dark cannot summon cannons yet, unfortunately. Cannon of Arc is not gonna not gonna happen. 
Uh, Tron, Tron couldn't have killed me. He spent his, sent his whole army in, and yeah, I have John, John Dark. I could easily hold John back. Maybe not at this point, since he's imp, but um, at that point, I could. Okay, so how are we going to kill that stupid red palace? And then these guys are going... What's going on with these villas? They're just like going on vacation here, man. I think they were going to try and finish these walls or something. I'm not sure. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Okay, I have a full-on rat infestation in my lands. Um, I have a red palace, which I'm probably going to drop on his base here, I'm thinking. Okay, I was going to go imp, but um, let's actually just keep that stone being gathered and um, wall this off. And we need to go deal with this rat infestation. Yeah, he's imp, though, is the only problem, so he might be able to outmuscle me in some ways. Okay, so let's go down here, and um, we need to do this and set up a bunch of siege workshops. Yep, let's get the ranged upgrade. Wow, okay. I, I literally have a whole base going on down there. The guild hall is... Uh, is it time to collect yet? Yeah, let's collect and go here, and we can do a little bit of this. And we're going to head down this way with our troops. Yeah, I don't want him to be able to just chill in my lands. We need to get the gambesons. Okay, so we got a spring tower there. Houses are being built out. Farm eco's okay. I mean, we have some resilience against the north. Not a whole lot, but some. And uh, let's hammer these guys. John Dark needs that experience. She needs blood. But even though I'm only castle, my army's probably a lot bigger, although he does have ramps coming in. Oof. Uh, veteran Spearman, so he's not upgraded yet. Okay, so we're fine. And you guys, in the meantime, yeah, we got you. Um, we need to keep getting that farm eco going. And uh, we do have the siege workshops now. Great. I could die to him. You know, I might have to do an emergency red palace in my base. But let's uh, get in here and see what we do what we can. All right, so we're going to get the TC, and um, in the meantime, you guys come up and do this, and we'll get another little farm enclosure here. Yeah, this is where, like, I could get sandwiched, right? This is very dodgy. I didn't even know he was back here, to be honest. Yeah, so you guys just keep clearing. Let's get you guys, get that experience, and um, consecrate. Yep, give me the goods. It's got a lot of spearmen coming down, but we should be able to handle them. Let's uh, get these knights riding and just have John Dark's uh, bow legion fight there. Yep, come on over, and you guys can get on the TC, although we might want to fight together. It's got a lot of elite spearmen, actually. That's a hell of a lot of elite spears. Okay, did we get the companions this time? We did. We got the companions, finally. Oh, he's going to snipe JD. Okay, I think I can micro away here. Let's go ahead and pop the heal. So JD OP. All right, so we got the wall off here, which is great. Let's get back to our lands now. And, um, yeah, that army got crushed. Wow. Is he, like, walling, counterwalling me? Why are you doing this? Why Why are you like this? Okay, I could I could actually get 2v1 here. I might need to drop the red palace, like, right in front of my ship. But JD's going to get imp, imp, uh, imp dark here, which is going to be really nice. And, okay, so Jordan actually blocked my wall, which makes me, or Tron did, which makes me think he might attack me. But, yeah, we just absolutely steamrolled that French player, which is great. So let's uh, continue down and get all the experience we possibly can. Okay, moving over here. Very good for us. Yeah, I didn't lose too much military, but overall, um, I can't build there because of Pwn's old TC. It's so haggard. Oh, where's the Red Palace going to go? I wanted to, like, tuck it away somewhere else. But um, I think we need it in our base. So, like, we could just do it, like, right here to make sure our base doesn't get wrecked and we can just go farms around that. Yeah. We have the corner guild hall, which I need to repair, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll get there in due time. Okay, so he's sneaking some bills by. And we need to just secure all this. It's going to be a tall order, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and a rally. We can get all those upgrades. Just need to clear out this infestation first. Okay. So the Red Palace is there. I'm imp. Let's get Arbalists, and soon we can get Knights upgraded as well. My Eco's 106, which is quite good. Looks like he's thinking about attacking me, maybe. Let's pull some of you guys over, and we can rewall this. And uh, we just kind of continue our little steamroll here. Yeah, he's getting a little bit crazy. I don't like I don't like how he's looking at me, but thankfully we have the Red Palace in the shadows, and a lot of good, um, a lot of good stuff, so. 
Uh, knights, we need a little bit more food, and we're going to be able to upgrade them. All right, great. So let's get that rebuilt. The fact that he put a giant, like, dong blockade in my base makes me certainly not want peace. But um, for now, I think I have to I have to do it. Yeah, he's trying to get gold over here. He might... I don't know how many relics he got. He might be a little bit relic starved, so... All right. Great. Good job, team. Let's go get you on wood. Get the upgrades. And we can get a UD soon, too. We're going to need to transition to a land-based economy as well. Although we can actually move upriver a little bit. So we got his guild hall. A couple of bills are going to be here to build this. And then we go get that, um, that other landmark. I don't plan on, like, killing him. You know. My base layout's awful. It is. But with that freaking dong tower there it's been a, it's been a tall order uh cannon of arc i never got her okay yeah gunpowder of arc is for sure the way okay so it looks like he's coming across with an army here our knights are not elite yet which is a bit of a problem let's get the rams in there i could lose this fight although that's right we can summon a freaking bombard now can't we it's pretty wild yeah, a little bit nervous about the action in the base. Yeah, we'll try and knock down this emplacement here, this this red palace. Valor's inspiration, yes. Uh, Jordan is... Or Tron is taking my goodies. Yeah, he is. I, You know, the, it's just the fact that he took my, um, my freaking guild hall. That was the big problem, the big catalyst for aggression. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so that's going to be down for the count. The problem is, can we keep him out? Because he, he could be very formidable. I don't know. I saw another army coming across the breach there. So, All right, so we should have a lot of wood now. That's what she said. And um, let's go ahead and set up back here. Okay, it looks like something was coming for us there. Okay, where were we? Oh, that's that. Okay. And then we need to get some bills and hustle down and repair our guild hall. Get that one functioning again. He only has one landmark now, though. He should only have one. Fishing boats are still going. Let's just get out of here. We took that down. It's going to take him a hot minute to repair that. And uh, cool. So we can also mix in some uh, racks. I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. So we're not like super... Um, he says I'm trapped. Yeah, for now. We'll, we'll, should be able to knock out of here. Yeah. Yeah, the, the armies are definitely swarming me. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if we can get that. Unfortunately, we, those guys do get bonked in the head. Let's get our cannon and knock this and this down. Uh, Shotgun of Arc is going to probably just try and escape here with some of her, her loyal companions. And uh, Spears, yes please. <laughs> it was like a it was like a movie scene, like where she like evacuates with part of her army, you know. All right. Oh, that's pretty troll. Okay, I need to secure this too. The fact that we're being harried so hard on two fronts is very, very problematic. Uh, our food eco's not great at the moment. It will be soon. Four. This. Okay. And we'll try and rebuild that. We got like all these Holy Roman freaking towers all over the place, just bonking us on the head. Let's get you down here, buddy. And I need to go ahead and get some uni upgrades soon, too. All right, so that's going down. Uh, is he going to give us relics here? No, he didn't put relics in it. I thought he did for a second. I was like, ooh, I'll take freebies. All right, uni. And Joan of Arc needs to start um, consecrating buildings. All right, so we took that down. And let's go hunt all this shit. He might attack us after this. Wouldn't be surprised if he did. Good job, team. Let's go get on the trees here. This freaking rat's nest, dude. Just got all these, like, goblins all over my lands. I'm pretty sure we could beat either of them one-on-one, -on -one, but, like, the problem is, um... I need the guild hall. So, like, to me, that's more important. You know, the, the guild hall is... All right, so let's get biology, and let's get incendiary arrows. It's very good for us. Okay. He's mustering an army, so I think he's busy fighting somebody in the north, honestly. Kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Ah, oh, you got burgered, huh? It happens, man. Everyone's got to get burgered every now and then. Don't worry about it, boss. Okay. So Ezra's doing it. 
Tron, for somebody who asks for peace, he's definitely not, like, the most chill. Okay, so that's gonna be mine. Let's take down the last of his, like, little rat's nest towers. Uh, our food eco is, is respectable at this point. But the fact I'm not banking Guildhall is so bad. It's, like, really Bronze Odia. Alright, upgrades are coming. Blacksmith is looking good. Let's go ahead and keep consecrating here. God damn! It's all these, like, freaking nests. Uh, how's our military production look like? Yeah, it's okay. Gold could be a little bit better. Crazy how quickly they got through that, huh? So there's a little bit of gold left, but if we don't secure our guild hall and some trade soon or something, we're going to be in bad shape. All right, so let's go over here um, and knock these down with the two battering rams. In the meantime, you guys can come down here, and Cannon of Arc can summon some cannons, ideally. Yeah, we still have some gold in the back, but it's going to start running out soon. Summon the powder? Yeah, it is. Okay. So how's fishing looking? Fishing's looking okay. We see green over there. I need to knock that back, but I want to get rid of this first. The battering rams are on the way. That's right. I can make the companions from the keeps, can I? Jean's elite champions. Pretty cool. So let's go down here. We can summon a cannon if need be. Uh, we don't have the gunpowder. Tithe barns might as well. You know, it's going to help. We'll get um, siege works. We're going to have a bit of a duel of fates. Somebody's trading mid. Teal's trading mid for 69. Wang with the fat 69 trade. Hell yeah. Alright, so Joan, um, we can't summon the men at arms yet, but we will in a moment. Let's go ahead and get some cannons coming. The rams are knocking all this down. All I wanted was just you out of my lands. You know, there wasn't there wasn't too many more stipulations. We'll give him a little taste of his own medicine here. And uh, do we have any gold left? We do have some gold out in the open field, so let's see if we can get that. At least we have our guild hall in the corner, though. You know, we, we, we have that there, so that's quite good for us. Uh, yeah, we got most of our uni upgrades coming along. We'll want to get army tactics soon. Um, did the other one not finish? It was weird, and it like queued up two and one, but it didn't do the correct one there. Let's consecrate that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a chance we get the entire bottom of the map, and then we need you to start building up stone. Hopefully, there's a little bit of resources left here. Cannon should be waddling down, and then it's uh, it's go time from there. Let's get army tactics too. Jean Dark can just keep her heal on cooldown. That's right. So I can summon champions. I don't play JD much, so bear with me, guys. I'm, I'm still kind of learning a lot of her tooltips. Uh, our eco's at 123. That's enough eco. So we got a cannon here. We can start banging on the wall. And uh, right on. So let's get some more stables. And some more archer ranges. In case we get dragged into like a heavy-duty war. And we also probably want to pull some bills down there too to help out, and they can they can you know try and build something here. Hmm, go, my minions! Capture the resources. He's gonna have mangoes and stuff. I don't know how good his army is. The problem is for him, he's he's on a northern conflict, right? So that's a little bit dodgy. So we'll do this so we can't rewall. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, kind of in a bit of a bottleneck here, which sucks, but it is what it is. Let's uh, see if we can hammer the Red Palace down before he gets here with his main army. And uh, we're going to wall that. Okay, so that's going to go down, which is great. And then we just push, try and push him again. I, I would assume he rebuilt everything. Nice. So that's down for the count. And uh, can we pull more bills? I think we just pull you guys and then come down here. Sure. We'd like to build some of this, and we can go ahead and get a keep going here, so let's do that. Those troll walls are well enough, well enough done. The guild hall is coming back, baby! Alright, so let's go around the top, target this and this, and uh, where's JD? And so so easy to lose track of her. Alright, so Valor's inspiration, here she is in the middle. Let's get you guys on this, and he targets my cannons, but who cares? At this point, we're fine. Summon the companions! Oh, and I get a cannon, that's right. That's so good. Alright, great. So, yeah, we got this secured. Um, he should be in trouble. Tron is in Mortal Wombat with Ezra. And um, let's just go ahead and wall this shit. Be done with it. And uh, we've, we've won the Southern Conflict. 
Good job, JD. She's done well. Let's keep consecrating buildings and keep consecrating. Gotta remember to keep doing that. Set that up. So his guild hall's offline. I could probably honestly come kill him now, right? So guild hall, red palace. School of Cavalry is probably in his main base. All right, team. I think we're going to keep moving here. Uh, let's pull a couple up river and take this down. John claude yeah. John claude <laughs> Joan Dark. All right. Uh, we want to get horsemen upgraded to elite. Um, we probably want to get basic archers. Men at arms are okay. I kind of want to just take him out. He's being uh, a little bit trolly to me here. So we're going to try it. His army definitely doesn't look great. Okay, so that's been rewalled. Let's get you guys on the farms. Yeah, his army's pretty potato. So let's just kind of get in there and steamroll it. Valorous Inspiration from JD, from Cannon of Arc. Divine Restoration, pretty brutal. And uh, yeah, the army just doesn't look great. Let's get some arbs in there. I mean, yeah, he's, he's clearly been starved. That's why he kind of moved to the corner, it looks like. Um, and did we get the walls rebuilt here? We did not yet. Okay. Okay, team. Let's finish him off and then just secure our evil little corner and do do what French do. Because what's great about this is after this, we can kind of just AFK. You know, you can just like do whatever. So Ken uh, keeps getting knocked down. Joan of Arc, of course, does siege damage. All right. Nobody's really politicking against me, which is great. Let's get our knights to attack. And now we just need to find a school of cavalry. Yeah, we... Ooh, buddy! Is that what I think it is? That looks like it's a sweet little market. Which we might be able to do something with. We see his two landmarks. So we just take him down. And um, we never got the gatehouse here. And then this would be that. Alright, guys. Looks like we've done it. Mission accomplished. And um, now we can set up some traders here. Two, three, four, five. Yes. And let's get that. And that should be the end of the road for him. Ah, oh, he got my cannons. Son of a gun. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, well. I guess the Wang can have him. <laughs> JD's like, screw this shit. I'm going home. Sorry, boys. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> Jordan's like, no, kill me. I love that. That's so funny. Oh, he's gonna get in. That's funny. Okay. Well, we got a lot of stuff here, and uh, we should be fine. So JD does have some reinforcements, but probably not enough to to win this fight here. We're just going to pick off some Keshiks where we can. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Let's get on this gold here. My favorite is like Jordan is just like asking to be ended. You know, he's just like, end me. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. Okay, JD's about to get a fat wave of just erect reinforcements. And uh, we should be able to squash these Mongols. Yeah, he surrendered. Yeah, he's leaving now. Coming into my lands. Hopefully he doesn't get that market, but he probably is. Alright, so do we have any bills around who could finish that wall? GG! Uh, and let's finish this. Okay. Oh, shit. JD. Oh, she's trapped. Let's do the healing ability. Ah, oh, I have healing. OP. And let's uh, keep going here. I accidentally pulled some bills. They're they're a little bit bloodthirsty. Now he just loot back this way. He's trying to snipe JD, I think. But I mean, he's just gonna lose his whole army if he just keeps running like that. Okay. Well, weird. Hide you guys down here, and then we just rewall as soon as he uh, departs. Yep. So he's gonna be trapped out. He's gonna lose a lot of his army here. It's fine. Uh, Shotgun of Art can come down here and finish these guys, and then we'll make some horsemen to uh, pursue the Keshiks or the uh, Mangudai. I don't know why I made men at arms, by the way. That was a weird choice. All right, so the Mongol army has been dispatched. Um, let's do that, do this. Then we would like to get some traders if possible. Guild hall, we need to have it on stone. Oh, shit. Okay, it collected. That's fine. I thought it wouldn't collect there for a second. Go, shotgun of arc. Oh! Okay, we've walled them out. And uh, looking good. JD is kind of low, but she'll be aight. So steamroll these guys, and let's get some horsemen down there, extra speedy. And now we just kind of, uh, we just cackle. 
Jordan about to be at peace? Yeah. He is. Oh, the Mongols actually want full-on war. Interesting. With, like, their whole side of the map still being contested, I'm surprised to see that. Okay, we killed the, the Khan. We killed the hero character. And, uh, yeah, let's get you guys. Surprised he's coming for it, but maybe he will. All right, so something we might want to do here is do a little bit of this. Ah, uh, okay. I should probably be using the champions more. They're probably pretty cool, but it is what it is. Um, do the Mongols want to fight? I mean, I feel like we can trade with them pretty consistently. Sounds. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I want something over there. That's the only problem. Because he's going to get that base. Uh, we don't really care about this wall, actually, so that's fine. Let's just have you guys do this. I mean, I can just collect stone, but I really wanted to get trade. Um, the Holy Roman Empire. I don't know why there's a random ass trader here, by the way. Time to beat the Wang. We probably could. I don't know, but is he going to destroy that market? I do have Guild Hall. I don't have Infinite Stone, though. Oh, shit. JD just got popped. Okay, that happens. And um, let's go to RTC. It's just a casual 1,000 gold to get her back. He's got a lot of cannons here. His army's pretty good quality, actually. Okay. Let's go get that trade post. Uh, yeah, because that's what he wants, right? Yeah, so we're not... Since we can't, like... I mean, we could maybe fight him, but... I think I'm going to go ahead and um, try and just snipe this. Army's getting chased here a little bit. JD is there, so that's how you would select her. Now... Now we can do that. Now that I've gotten rid of the trade post, I'm happy to happy to chill. And then we can just go focus on killing yellow. I just wanted to get that market. Okay. And then from here, we can do this and that. Uh, oh, for sure. Yes, let's act like we have a big threat on our side of the river. Got those damn cannon towers. These things are troll as shit. Okay. Uh-huh. I need to get that walled somehow. It's going to be a little bit of a tricksy hobbitses. Oh, we got stone being banked. It's only 200 at the moment, but it will add up eventually. Uh, our eco is 112. Okay, so if we kill this player here, we're going to be getting a potentially a ton of... Um, a potentially a ton of uh, relics, right? Because he's HRE. I know he has other trade, but um, I don't want to get caught in a double war. Like, I just want to secure my lands and, and be chilling. Why can I not go through there? It's pretty annoying. Uh, Alright, so let's get some of these. JD needs to consecrate this. So easy to lose track of her. I'm so used to... I'm not used to playing with heroes in this game. It's weird. Mongols, don't... What are you doing there? What is that Vil doing? Wang. Okay. Okay. No, 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 we need to get back. Okay, that should be fine. Cannons are going to be coming out. Let's do that. Miss Micro, he says. I hope he's telling the truth. Okay, so we're going to have to do, like, a really shitty wall here, but it will, it'll get done. He's cannoning here, so he's clearly preparing for to secure his trade or something. I don't know, but if I kill Yellow, then I have the entire bottom. And if Yellow has a market, then um, we're going to be the cattle monsters for sure. I need to get those archers upgraded to elite because my gold is going to start running out and I'm going to have to spam those. Uh, we still have a little bit of gold down here, enough to sustain like a short-term conflict. Let's do that, and then we do this. I mean, I can guild hall. I have a little bit left here. Let's go do this. And um, in the meantime, we'll keep consecrating. Wang's little towers there are, are annoying. Wang, uh, you'll need to delete that cannon tower, or I will attack. It keeps killing my walls. I'm gonna offer him this and see if he'll he'll actually do it. 
donc aucune besogne. Oh. All right. Nous attendons les copes soudain. Voyez, traite les engins. So let's get in here. Uh, one sec. AFK, 30 seconds. Please, mercy. Okay, I gotta let my swallow out. She's she's giving me that bark that she's gonna have a disaster here. Enemies are dropping! Sactendons vos ordonnances. Okay, the Chihuahua has been secured. Uh, now, what else do we want to get? Mangonel upgrades. Are the walls fully done, more or less. And then we need to get that last one, and then we should be should be chilling. So, Guildhall is banking. I mean, we're in the classic French position, right? Um, that is none of your business. Who's attacking me? We have a huge opening here, which is a little bit janky, but I suppose it's fine. Um. Yeah, he's got that cannon tower still trolling us here, so we might need to commit a bunch of workers to actually build that. Oh, all right. Do we push? I think we push. I think we push. Let's just make wood units for the wood god, and hopefully we can get some relics. That would be that would be pretty prime time. All right, let's make some churches. I like how we just get up on his walls instantly. Yeah, we need this position. Wang has got Nanny plus Ezra up there. You know, like, I, those are two good players. We should be able to kind of keep them honest. Oh my god, please finish that. Did they finish it? Okay, they did. Good. The the time of peace and accord with the Holy Romans is over. They, they, he, even after, even after this man, even after this man freaking gave me uh, peace, he was towering my shit. So I don't feel too bad about this, to be honest. Uh, okay, we'll get that wall up later. All right, so you guys come. Some that, and then we can get a little bit of this. And uh, I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Oh, it's because there's a friggin' fallen trees are so frick goddamn troll sometimes. Okay, so here comes the defenders, his dreaded wood legions. Now uh, let's pull back our elite knights and just let the other ones handle it. John Dark is gonna do Ballister Inspiration. The knights will move back in. Okay. I don't know how the fight's going, honestly. It's a little bit tricky. Um, the knights are engaged with a lot of spears, but we want to keep them alive if possible. Let's call the champions out. Okay. John's got her melee champs in there, and it seems like we won the fight. Let's get you on the cannon. A couple of you guys go here. This cannon needs to target this. And uh, cool. So, yeah, that fight was good. We also killed a lot of infrastructure. HRE armies are decent late game, but, um, you know, we're, we're pretty scary, too. With the old French, with JD. Alright, so let's just keep working into his base. See what we can do. Uh, you guys contributing against Red? Is Red a threat too? I mean, Ezra's always a threat, so. Alright. Yeah, trade all game. <laughs> you towered me while we had peace. It's payment time. <laughs> Uh, Red is, I mean, who's top? So Wang and Nanny can't do it? You guys can't 2v1 him? We'll see. There, I feel like there's some haggard politics at foot. You know, like, I, I feel like there's some a little scheming of sorts, but... Uh, okay, so let's get the walls there. Let's knock down these so we can get there a little bit more efficiently. He's going to have another army back here soon. JD does have the Valor and Divine Restoration. That's really nice, being able to get heals in your fat army. That's really nice. So we knocked down quite a bit, and now we just need to kind of find out where his headquarters is, right? I have nothing on the Mongols this game. I'm not coming after them. Okay, so he's making hand cannoneers. John Dark's Legion is is coming. And uh, we're going we're gonna to hopefully keep the momentum up. Okay, he deleted that. Interesting. Here he comes. Okay, pull the knights back. Let them do their thing. Valor's inspiration is pretty insane. And uh, let's do the Pavisas for the damage mitigation. 
Oh, he's trying to cannon JD. All right, very sneaky. Look at that. He's trying to sneak up on JD right now. But little does he know, I have the Pavisas. Okay, let's do some raiding here. I don't know why these rams aren't pushing, but it's all good. Yeah, his hand cannoneers are numbers are getting thinned. Let's keep using our magic missiles wherever we can. And uh, yeah, if I beat him, I secure the entire bottom right, which is just nuts. Okay. He's looking, his numbers are looking a little thin. He keeps trying to cannonball John Dark. Okay, let's get you guys back here and they can just fight and do what they can. And then we need Rams for the Ram God, Rams for the Ram Throne. JD is in good shape. Uh, let's keep consecrating these. Make my Rams cheaper. And uh, we'll keep consecrating these too. I think my Knights are causing some havoc back here. Nope, they got caught. Well played. GG, well played. I don't think we have him dead yet, but we're definitely, he's on the back foot. Uh, all right, we got another cannon here. Let's, let's get that cannon down before it shoots John Dark in the head with a fat cannonball again. Okay, so we got that secured. Um, the stone is gone, so we're pretty much all in on uh, bare bones resources at this point. Valorous inspiration. And um, yeah, it could take a little bit of effort to wear him down. I don't know what his bank looks like, right? So we're, we're going to have to play it kind of safe here. They're coming around the side, and uh, let's get some knights coming in as well. He's flanking the archers, which is a nice play. I don't know, he's actually going for the cannon. Okay. That's smart. That's smart. Mostly spearmen coming out, which is really, really good for us. He's finally going to get around and get on that cannon, but we should be able to deal with it. Our archer legions are good. And uh, I think it's only a matter of time before he pays the troll toll here. And we'll get some like good quality knights moving in too. I mean, they like I. They don't need me to kill someone two v one top. He doesn't even have a wonder yet, you know. Uh, what kind of ooh, what kind of relics are we seeing down here? Okay, so now rams are coming, which is going to help change the dynamic of the fights, because he's going to be losing ground while we fight. Uh, let's get our religious characters and do this. Make a handful of them. Gather up. We need to gather up the forces of John Dark and use our OP AOEs. Okay. Duke it out. He's got a big army here, though. Pretty big. Uh, let's use Divine Restoration. There we go. Fat heals, baby. Oh, he's mustering a good force, actually. Mustering a pretty good force. Oh, it's because our units got caught up here. Our reinforcements. That's a shame. All right, let's pull you guys back. Uh, looks like there is an opening here we can work through. Uh, a couple archers are still surrounded there, but for the most part, they're probably going to fall. All right. So he's mustering a really good defense. Very solid. Uh, our food is good, our wood, wood is good. Like, we're going to be able to sustain fight for a long time, I suspect. Um, we're going to need more archers and more spears. JD is going to get surrounded here, potentially. Uh, let's summon our champions. Here comes the champs. Valor's inspiration there. Um, can we get some knights to come down here, here, and run into the back? Yeah, that's what we want. And JD did get picked off there. Yeah, his army was pretty big, so. All right, so let's go, team. Gather here, do this, and okay, we finally found some of the food eco here. So let's harry that, yeah, perfect, and then we ride and see what his base looks like. Meanwhile, the grind continues here. He has more gold than me. This is a bit of a problem, guys. This is actually a problem. All right, so let's attack. We're in his Aachen farms, so maybe we can win that. Who knows? He's very focused. He's, his army's good. He's got more gold than me, for sure. Uh, but yeah, he's losing a lot of eco back here, so this is really nice for us. Alright, so let's just keep riding, and then a couple of you guys come down here, and then back to here. We'll see if he's able to handle the splitting. Looks like he is. Uh, but yeah, we're killing, like, gold-tier units with mostly crappy units, so that's good. Yeah, I'm not unhappy about that. Let's go up this way, and then... He found that, so let's go keep exploring his base. Let's see how many relics he has. He did go burger. Oh, his relic situation is kind of barren, actually, so let's go see what we can discover here. Looks like in the front, the fight went well, but food's going to start becoming a problem. It's going to start becoming a bit of an issue. Holy shit, he's got a lot of infrastructure. Jesus. I, I, it's, it's just going to be a situation where we just have to drain him. You know, it's uh, it's going to be one of those. Okay, and let's get the knights over here. Those guys are having their own little... Oh, artillery's pointless. He's going to be able to swarm too easily, so... We need to uh, we need to do a little something here. All right, so we're out of wood. Uh, are we? No, we got wood here. Great. 
Probably do this, get some farms. The fighting here is good. We're still grinding down quite a bit, but man, oh man, it's going to be hard to actually finish him. <laughs> yep, he caught those guys finally. Uh, so let's go the here, then here, and then we can go down here. Yep, that's going to be the route for them. Homies can move south, and uh, I think we need more racks, honestly. He's got a lot of a lot of um, cavalry units. Mainly what he's spamming, so if we just get the um, if we just get spears, we're probably going to be in good shape. We're kind of like, this is a point where you're testing your opponent's bank, right? We're seeing what he's made of in terms of bank. Yep, down here and then here. And I believe we still have, yeah, he's got his, his prelate back there. Here, here, and then here. Get him off that sacred site. Wouldn't hurt. He is richer than me. I mean, he's making a lot of hand cannoneers, and I'm all wood. So this is not an easy fight to win, that's for damn sure. Uh, let's grab a handful of you guys, go up here, and we need to do a little bit of split pushing, so we're going to do some rams up here. Yeah, that will hopefully be good. Yeah, see, the thing is, if I wasn't pressing him, there could be a situation where um, he actually is uh, is cackling, like in the corner with the relics. I don't know where he's getting his gold from, though. It must be some trade. Let's go see if we can find it. So let's get all of our units come back here. And then you guys go up top. He must have some sort of trade or something. There's obviously something going on. Well, HRE is quite a bit richer than me. They got a lot of gold units. Got to do a little bit of politicking here. And let's run to the north and see what we can find. We got cannons coming out. He's spamming hand cannoneers. So clearly there's some source of income. Uh, let's get you running up there. Good. We could probably eventually win a forever war, maybe, maybe with like good micro and split pushing and stuff, but it's not easy. We already took a lot of ground off him. Oops, no, we want to get our TCs back. So here, uh, here and here, and then we want to get horsemen and men at arms, whatever, spears. All right, so yeah, he's got some funny business going on. Did our villagers sneak by? Uh, they did not quite. So we can go here. We can take Jean d'Arc and overwhelm this uh, position here. We might be able to just get a quick kill on all these hand cannoneers, which would be really clutch. All right, let's get him up here. All right, so let's uh, get the Valor's Inspiration, and we need to just start like methodically picking off those units. He's going to try and snipe J JD, probably. Okay, so down you go. We're not going to get the split pushing, it doesn't look like. Although we do wipe that army, but he's got his uh, rams and other things. Not rams, but the hand cannoneers are nearby. I don't know where he's honestly getting his money from. He might just have relics hidden somewhere. Let's go scout the back of his base, see what we can find. Alright, so the wall's been breached. We're going to have to be on the defense now. So we might be caught in a forever war until somebody relics. Or <laughs> relics wonders. Alright, let's go snipe artillery and bring you guys up and cool. So now we can work on the split pushing tech. We got to just keep two. Jesus Christ, that's a good army. Oh my god. Okay, let's just get these horsemen to ride around here. Clean off some of those tools. Um, we got the old ram split push on the way. JD is going to go here. Let's get you guys up on walls and you guys up on walls. And uh, we need spears and horsemen and that's basically that. Thankfully we have OP John Dark. So she's going to be able to potentially do some work for us. And meanwhile, the split pushing is going to continue. Uh, town center and town center. So we probably need to produce more eco. Yeah, our eco is slipping a little bit. And our food is also slipping. He's richer and just seems more powerful than me. Like I'm making spear armies. He's still in hand cannons. Okay, he's going to retreat. It looks like he doesn't want to fight. Like maybe he's actually like suffering more than we think. Yeah, so let's like just test it and see. Okay, fighting in the choke point here doesn't feel bad. JD, use, use your magic missiles. Magic missile! And uh, we need to start targeting these guys down. Alright, so we got the horseman in his back raiding. That's really good. That's quite good. And the rams will hopefully be able to come to fruition soon. Okay, let's get you guys up here and back here. So I think the split pushing raiding might eventually take its toll on him. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's get you guys up. JD will summon her mighty companions. 
Yes, call them, including the Bombard, the most noble companion of all. Not going to be super useful against this army, but it's all good. Yeah, so he's using the Select All Army hotkey, which is something I do as well. It's um, it's um, It has pros and cons. JD getting bopped in the face. Blitzkrieg bopped. No idea what's going on elsewhere. But we're going to go see if we can get into his farm eco a little bit. And you guys need to run down here. Okay, JD's gathering up her troops again. And we can make rams just as like a distraction, I guess. His food eco might start hurting here with how much damage we've done. Some of these like haggard little raids. I don't know, but his Aachen food is clearly where it's at, right? Yeah, he's not raiding my food eco and I'm getting into his, but he, he is playing the old HRE, so... Uh, his food eco is going to be slightly stronger than mine. Oh, here we go. We got a cannon. Nice. Let's take that. Yep, let's get it here. Take these guys down. And let's get JD back. Valor's inspiration. That will make my potato units into slightly less potato units. My passive income is lovely. I'm, it's just it's my favorite thing ever. Let's get on the walls. to be extra troll. And yeah, his, he honestly might just lose this because of the uh, positioning of a lot of these things. Like, he's losing a ton of his farm infrastructure. We're up on the walls. I'm in his eco. See, they're they're handling a 2v1. I think I lost Joan. Did I lose her? No, she's still here. Okay, good. And um, yeah, now once we get into this eco here, so let's get a surround on these spears and then move there. Let's get JD here. She's chilling. And um, we have rams coming this way, so let's get them spammed up this way. Just kind of push from three fronts here. Okay, so let's get this, this, and this. And now we are all up in his eco here for sure. So yeah, we got a couple of you guys going. Let's get you guys down here. Oh, Valor's inspiration. Oh god, I wasn't watching for a second. And Rams are going to start attacking to his base. Let's get it like random towers there and shit. Okay, team. He's having trouble with the split pushing for sure. Uh, I think I think it's making a lot of progress. And he could run out of resources before me, I'm not sure. We also have rams kind of creeping in from the side, so the classic uh, triple-pronged attack. Yeah, he's losing a lot of villagers. I mean, ooh, JD gets cannonballed in the face, though. You gotta remember, cannonballs are, uh, are, are dangerous for your health. My eco sucks, though, dude. It's, like, also just terrible. All right, let's see what we can do. We're going to keep hammering in. Hopefully, he'll go back and deal with those instead of pressing. Because my food is just in the pits right now. Okay, let's uh, get some more farms. Yes, and we can get you and you. And get some more farms. Just desperate times here. He's got cannons coming in and shit. But the Rams are making good progress into the base. Let's get a little, like, tower here. We can do another one in there. Uh, we need to get some horsemen and, like, sneak around. Yeah, and go get those bombard cannons. Alright, so let's get that one, that one, and that one. Keep gathering up our armies back here. JD will resurrect eventually. It's going to take a little bit of time. But, um, yeah, we need to we need to just get in and, and do it. He's losing a lot of infrastructure, though, which is good. But we don't have a good food economy, really, so we're struggling to keep pace with him. Okay, and we can just make some war engines or siege engines, whatever. Keep the rams going, and let's get a couple of these guys going back here. He's doing some demolition, some decent work. He's going to keep moving in. This is where, if he was really being super scary, he could start raiding me. We need to go get those cannons down. Okay, cannon placement's going to finish there. Bills need to do this. We need to dive the cannons. If possible. Send you guys up to engage the army now. Oh, are we going to get one? We got one. Let's get the other one. Might need to get some spring alts too. Although we don't have the money for that at the moment. So we pull them back to the dreaded cannon tower. We'll see what kind of damage it could do. I don't have the money to beat him, I don't think. He's too rich. He's getting gold from somewhere. I don't know where from. But he's making a shit ton of men at arms. Okay, let's uh, pop out here. JD is back. Is she back yet? She is. She's our she's our hard carry here. She's gonna try. Got a nice little cannon tower there too. All right, uh, let's call it the champions. I'm in the heart of a champion. And um, we can get our JD cannon to start sniping uh, this and this. Okay, John Dark. See if you can snipe that with your cannon launcher. Great. 
And uh, cool. Let's get you guys and these. And uh, yeah, we did some okay damage there. Nothing too too great though. Valor's inspiration is very scary. Oh, he's trying to just snipe JD. He's got his whole army moving after it. Oh, God. We're, I mean, do we just collect the stone from the guild hall? He's just getting money from somewhere. I don't know where from, but somewhere in the deeps. Hmm. HRE has imp gold versus my no gold. Probs dead down here. Yeah, this is like a pure gold army, boys. Um, I guess we just have to focus on mass horseman raids. Just snipe Artie and stuff, you know? That's uh, We do have Red Palace, which is going to buy us some time. Um, he's got, what, one cannon? Yeah, he's got a lot. He's mining my gold, I know he is. There was that gold from before. I always miss the one that's like... The wall kind of like gave it a bit of a, a hard angle to see it on. Alright, so let's go dive that cannon. That will buy us a lot of time. And we can use John Dark's magical bow powers. Oh, JD! Okay, so from here we just run into his eco again. We got the keep coming up, which is great. And what is his army mostly? Mostly infantry, yeah. I guess we'll try and make some arbs. Okay, so we killed the cannon. It's going to be a little bit of a journey for him now to kill some shit. I don't have emergency repairs or anything. Make some champs here. And uh, Valor's Inspiration, yes. We have another keep. And we have gotten into the eco here. JD is staying safe. Go, John Dark. Use your magical attacks. Consecrate. Oh, that's already been consecrated. Okay, I need to consecrate some more buildings. I gotta stay on top of that. Yeah. Did I ever consecrate the second TC? I don't think I did. Alright, so yeah, we got... How is he surviving? We've been just like hammering his eco down, boys. Like absolutely hammering it. Alright, so let's get you guys and attack. And he's got his units coming here again. Okay, now we can start mustering units again. A little bit slowly, but it'll do, pig. Yeah, I mean, he's, God, we've done. I feel like we've done so much eco damage, but I guess we really haven't. Maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. Who knows? Yeah, somehow we folded up the army here. We're going to pull some of these bills. Um, yeah, we actually need wood, so we can't really afford to do that. We're going to go get this gold back. The one I had forgotten about. A parlay? I don't know. I might be able to win this. He's He seems to be, like, kind of petering out a little bit in terms of food. I think we've actually done some pretty devastating food damage. So let's go top and top. Yeah, do that. And then do this. And uh, now we need to take some food eco. Let's have you guys come up and grab that. Cool. Yeah, like, I think maybe he's finally run out of food a little bit. Because we've done some respectable damage. Well, let's keep it up. I don't want to. I don't want to give many breaks. And um, yeah, do we have the bills coming? Soon we will. He does have a relic here. If we could seal that, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, no, not gonna happen. He's still got like a dread legion, so we're gonna pull back here and continue raiding into his. He's got no farming going here. So back to the base we go. Um, you guys can repair that. Fair amount of horsemen. Now we can turn and fight. Um, these guys need to go here. Yes, please. And pull you guys back into the protection of our keeps. We got Farm Eco here again. I think eventually we could maybe win this. I don't know. It's so dodgy. He's probably going to try and cannonball JD here. Okay, let's get this. Yeah, we got all of his economy there. So let's go back down here and do this. And take these guys to go ride on the cannons. Take them for a little magic ride here. Okay, switch on to wood here. We need to get on the Aachen, so let's get that. His cannons are still ferocious. Once again, we are in his uh, eco here. This is the only way you can win, like, no gold versus gold, is, like, haggard tricks like this. Um, yeah, and you guys go down here too, please. All right. He's running out of steam here. He's got a culverin. Interesting. Well, not too useful against my wood armies, but we'll take it. Yeah, the split pushing is definitely like taxing his micro. Oh boy. Okay, so now we're going to go up into the base and raid again. And just kind of be as annoying as possible. I, I would imagine that's probably pretty stressful to deal with. 
Uh, JD can summon her cannons uh, soon. She does do siege damage, right? Yeah, she does. So if we can knock this down, that'd be great. And then maybe we can even jack a relic. Uh, do we have any monks laying around? I do have some. Hey, cool. So that's good. I think his food eco is, is dying. Yeah, you can see he's like kind of turtling now with a very small army. Oh, yeah. I think we might have actually broken his back with the haggard, uh, haggard raids. No, never mind. <laughs> to the wolves! JD's little horse hooves can't get up there, but she's going to try. All right. So let's get back down here. Come on, JD. She's doing great. Got our archers up in the walls who are getting good value picks, and uh, in the backfield, his bases. He's keeping a lot of guys back there now, so we can. Um, what can we hit that's like squishy here? Okay, maybe he's got something going up there. I'm not sure. Let's go check. So archers are doing awesome work. We can do some ram signing again. Okay. Uh, we got the priest, so let's get the relic and get out of there if we can. Come on, buddy. Make a run for it. JD, heal him. Oh. JD is a, a distraction carnifex here. Okay, the priest made it kind of far, but we, we need the relics, because without his relics, he's going to fall apart, right? Okay, so let's get into the fields here. Shit, the chihuahua needs to be let back in. I can hear it barking in the night. It's going to be hard to call peace here. Uh, Alright, so we're going to just go after buildings, I guess. So I was like, how dare you leave me outside longer than you're supposed to. Alright, so we engage against this go good gold army again. Um, infrastructure is being hit. Let's pull these guys back down here and try this again. Move up. And, um... Yeah, I would imagine there's a sweaty fight going on in the north, too. Okay, pulling back, and now we're about to get up in his farms again. The whoa, low, low. Look at the flex. Oh, uh, all right. Let's attack. Yeah. Looks good. I think we win that fight. So 21 of you guys. Can we find any wood? We can. Nice. There's still some big wood patches around, which is huge for us. Uh, the horsemen have gotten into the cookie jar, so he's losing a lot of bills here. I don't know. I guess he does have the villager printer. So that's part of like how he's able to stay in this, because even even with all these L's he's taking uh, in the village department, he's he's hanging in like a champ. All right, so you guys get this, this, and this. Uh, the eco over here is looking a little bit rough. Let's go ride around. Yeah, we're getting some of those guys. He killed a random building. Very scary. Okay, so you guys keep rolling. He's got random spears. Tried there. Is he pulling bills on me? He is. All right, let's get back on this gold if we can. Every little bit counts. Valorous inspiration and summon the elector champions. Yeah, man, are we actually winning this fight? He did get his relic back, which is unfortunate. But let's get into his food eco with this army. And then JD and the rest of the forces can move up. He does have some units back here. Yeah, we can fight there. It's fine. And uh, let's knock down the monastery. Take away his gold. And uh, cool. All right. Looking fine. Hmm. Trying to snipe JD, are you? Oh, he's going for the cannon. Okay, attack. Take out Bills. Uh, Rams for the Ram God. Rams for the Ram Throne. Let's go, baby. 46 is online. Wow, we're actually turning this fight, it looks like. Uh, we got to stop, stop sending the horsemen in the front. Uh-huh. Yeah. We need to go make sure he's not rebuilding on his other farms. So he's, he's exclusively spamming mostly spears now, which is good. So, yeah, we got our horsemen going to raid. We're going to go check his farms here and here and make sure he's not, like, getting back online there. JD using her OP Arrows of Doom. Uh, what do we not consecrated here? Yeah. Gotta stay on point with that. Talk about a grindy for forever war, you know? Those are Pwn's old farms. 
Yeah, his army's getting pushed back here. Do we have any monks or religious characters? We do. So have you come get this relic. And then you go down here. He's not working those farms. Is he going to work those ones? We'll find out in a second. Go, my OP hero character. Carry me. Yes, and now we're up in here too. Yes, good Anakin. Uh, he does have some farms being worked up here. He's got his own little ram coming this way. Nice, very cute. JD going to get cannonballed in the face again. Uh, he's losing bills there. Looks like he's lost some bills here. He does have the spearmen and spearmen, and then they can take those and those. It's pretty insane the rate at which he's able to produce bills with that villager printer. It's very strong. Oh my god. All right, uh, can we snipe this with John Dark? I know her little like bow and arrow does surprisingly decent damage against like SEs like that. Okay. So yeah, we're in his farm back here. Let's let's get down here. Get a couple of you guys down there. And JD and company can kind of keep pushing forward. We're here for our prize. Okay, we got that down. Let's get you guys shooting. Holy shit, we actually won that. I think we're going to win it. We did get the gold back too, which is nice. We can send in some finishers soon. Emergency repairs are going down. Um, he's just losing so much eco back here now. Probably toast. Go mass arb. Uh, I'm saving my gold. I'm saving my gold for now. Yeah, I'm going to save it. All right, priest. So where are you at? Did they never make it there? All right, so they never made it here. Let's come back here, set up some towers. He switched into a mass cavalry. Which is smart, but we got him kind of pigeonholed here, so that's good. Let's go do Val Valor's Inspiration. I think he's in trouble. We see one landmark, two, and three. I don't, I don't know where his, la his last one's over there. So they're all really close together. So um, Our dreaded wood armies were able to get it done. He's on wood now, too, it looks like. So whatever gold he was getting, I think he's running a little bit light. And uh, JD is able to really carry the day. Valor's Inspiration. All right. Uh, let's buy a little bit. Do a cannon tower. And then we can set up a cannon tower here so we can't rebuild. And let's make some French Knights just to seal the deal. To come in and, and give it the dirty, right? Oh, yeah, those bills are eating it pretty good. All right, summon some companions. That's right, ride companions. And the priest man should be here soon. There he is. All right, so Monk can get this and uh, head down this way. That's going to be great. That is quite good, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's go ahead and do this. Just get a little arrow slit there, and you guys can just lumberjack. Holy shit, we did it! I think we got him. The raiding did is what did it. GG's. And then we need to just find a market, basically. And then the north is, is on the table, right? So we got to see what's cracking there. Okay, so cannon, come forward. Um, let's go get his landmark here, and then that should be it, right? Yeah, should be it. Attack, get into the villagers, and um, there we need to go scouting. Yeah, blue's at the gates, but blue thankfully can't get in. That's nanny. And let's target that. All right, so attack, attack, and JD, come use your siege weaponry to uh, take these down. Uh, AFK one min, gotta get dog. Please don't murder. <laughs> Alright, I'll be right back. That was a real sweaty one. All right, so let's uh, get out of here. Secure this. And what do we got? We got the cross post here, so let's do that. And uh, I think there's another one up there. All right, so we can get rid of the rams, free up supply. And the rest of the army can just patrol through, and let's see what we can find. All right, so man, it's insane how quickly we've gone through some of these, these tree patches. Oh my god, GG Tron. Yeah, he was a beast. It was not an easy fight, especially with no gold. It was very hard. Um, 
We got a little bit at the end though, and we do. I believe we got a third relic. Yeah, that's nice. So let's go see if there's any trade options. Um, if there is, I mean that's quite good. Um, we obviously have ten thousand, just a casual ten thousand stone in there, but I don't have any resources. Uh, what about Ezra? I'm sure he has a market. I'm just trying to find one and see if there's one in the deep side. So where the hell is his market? Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's cool. So we would knock this down, this down, and delete this. So let's get that going. All right, and then we're going to reroute it down here. So we're going to set you up on the far side. Great. I guess that's going to be that. Uh, I let Ezra... Oh, to push him. Okay, no worries. Where is the Wang? Rebuilding after forever war. Then can move. All right, so the traders are going. Um, we can get rid of the basic archers, that's for damn sure, and spears and stuff. I think this is the only way through here. These random ass fishing boats here. They probably sandwich. Okay, so we need to get this and this, and that will give us a direct trade route all the way across map here, basically. And uh, all right, let's do that. Get the traders going here. We got the tower. The walls getting knocked down. Is this a river up here? Actually, it might just be a crossing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. We can... How much is it? 11,000? Wang is building a wonder, so... Okay. I couldn't have built a wonder no matter what, because I don't have the gold, so I don't feel too bad about this. I'm happy to keep banking resources. So it begins. Alright, so he's going for the wonder. So we're going to start do hosting and just getting, you know, all of our goodies down there. And in the meantime, we'll keep banking here. Yeah. He does have docks up here. I think this one is fine, though. It's like, this one's very secret and safe down here. So let's get you, and then they can go down there. Oh, shit, I didn't get this wall. So where's my cannon? Cannon needs to knock down this wall, too. Great. So we head down there. It's go time. You know, ram it's ramen time. And uh, I don't know if he had any more relics laying around. I don't think so. I think he honestly had, like, two, and... You can do that. What is that going to be, 90? Okay, it'll be better once it gets optimized. Okay. Can we get any, um, this? My bank, I was just in a brutal forever war, so it's like, it's going to be a while before it gets going. All right, good. Thankfully, John Dark can, like, summon artillery and stuff, which is really cool. Okay, um, as far as securing our operation goes, where would it even go? I guess, like, right here or something would be fine. This is going to be hard, though. Wang might have this. He might have it. You know, I, I just came off the cusp of that conflict, so I'm going to be a bit of a, a potato here. All right, so that's 90 a pop. That's pretty good. That's good to get our gold back online. Bring out the transport ships. I, he is Mongol, so, I mean, yeah, we're going to see what we can get done here. Hopefully the other players are uh, have some good vectors with which they can attack from. Um, let's get you and you and start setting up all this. I think, do we collect this? Uh, so it's going to be what, 8,000? I would like to save a little bit longer, obviously, but we can just delete this. We can just roll on through. Yeah, all right, let's get it. And then we can get that stone over there. So JD is going to try and move in. We're going to take some L's uh, going now. And John Dark is there. So we don't have enough to call out companions yet, but once I lose some uh, some models, we can. I mean, like, we're pretty damn close to this wonder, guys. We just need to kind of work our way through this. And Rams, yes, please. And let's do that. And uh, get you guys to start hammering on that. Counter wonder is definitely on the table after this. Somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna obviously get crunk nasty. We don't know who, but... Nanny's playing what? Nanny's playing Jushi. Okay, so the gold income is probably respectable. I really need to get more trade going, though. There needs to be a lot more of that. It's our military at 131 eco. Okay, we could probably lose some of the lumber eco here, honestly. For both military as well as uh, additional trade. 
Uh, is this really it? I mean, can we just like run straight to that wonder and get it? Let's like test the waters here. Okay, it's a little laggy. Tron has left the match. Uh, he doesn't have as many cannon towers as you would think. Oh shit, oh lag, 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 oh god, oh god. Oh, okay, we're just gonna cl keep clearing shit out because this is so laggy, Jesus Christ. My whole frame rate like just tanked right there. Okay, so let's just clear out this like rat's nest. We still have 12 minutes. We're not like hurting on time. All right, so we got 21 of you guys. Let's get down to the food or the stone maybe. Yeah, I think we're okay there. So let's get on this. And then we can start fortifying our own little rat's nest in the corner. Jesus Christ, do you guys see that frame rate? Yeah, it's definitely a risky spot. All right, do we get some companions? We do, we get our grail companions. What is he relying on lag to beat us with? That's his actual town center too. Okay, so towers are down. Um, yeah. So that's good progress. He's mustering an army to the north. We can probably start collecting this now. It's at 12,000. It's not bad. That's not as many keeps as I would like. That's for damn sure. All right, let's get a gatehouse and rebuild our walls here. Um, invasions could come from any direction. Okay, he's finally coming to attack me now. We're going to get his landmark down, though, which is great. So sign me up for that. Get the towers. Get you guys here. JD, use the Valor's Inspiration. She can shotgun that tower down, too. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't look that strong, but, I, I mean... Maybe I need to get trebs. Yeah, we probably need to get treb damage. So let's get the geometry and get some trebuchets. Geometry, one of my least favorite subjects in school. Math is certainly not my strong suit. All right, I need to save up some Gs, man. I need to save up some gold. We got 33 traders. Let's make sure they're going hard here. Um, Cause like, I need to be able to counter wonder this, you know? Nanny says I have become death, yeah. Okay, Nanny apparently has nuclear weaponry. And we do have 13 archers in here. JD summoning cannons is quite useful, not gonna lie. Our eco's 132. I think we're okay though to be a little bit greedy here. Do we really purge this entire land? Yeah, there's some wood there, thankfully. Okay. Jesus. Okay, the lag is beginning. His gravy tide is gone, says, uh, says Ezra. Okay, let's pull you guys back. And uh, let's get you guys here, here, and here. Work on these, because he could be upgrading them to cannon towers. So we only have, like, cannon towers and a couple niche emplacements. Okay, let's get these cannons back if we can. We got the Trebs of Doom. Um, 21 on stone. Can definitely uh, rebuild this wall. So let's do that. Let's see if we can get our cannons away. Yeah, he's coming now with a good army, so we need to get our own uh, force mustered. All right, so where are they at? I think they just all stopped marching, unfortunately. So let's do this, and do this. Gold's building back up, albeit very slowly. Uh, our food is okay. Come on, cannons! Ugh! JD is doing it. Cannons need to get back in there. Um, we're going to have to delete some eco at some point. This is so janky, dude. We're almost in trap range, too. So we might be able to sneak in with those trebuchets and do a little something-something. All right. Active traders generate resources. Should have gotten that, but that's cool. So I can get that from my uh, traders. And um, when they're done with this, I'll move through. Yeah, he's got his little army here. Okay, we'll keep the trebs and whatnot back. Reinforcements are coming. You have to die a couple of times to turn to realize you can't politic with them. Y you kind of can. You kind of can. It's That's not 100% factual, but yeah. Like, I would have... I. He got peace for a long time with me, right? Whereas, normally I would just be in murder hobo mode, but if there's like a benefit to me that isn't just you getting a reprieve, then I will take it. And it's like, if it outweighs the consequence. Ezra is playing, what, Mongols? Okay. We're getting a keep set up on his base, which will honestly be helpful anyways. Oh my god, he had a bombard just sitting there. He probably wasn't even looking at it. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Um, Alright, so do we collect the stone? I guess we do. And then let's get this dude. He literally probably wasn't even watching, guys. Stone is um pretty cheap, actually, so I don't think anybody's like looking to counter wonder after this. Okay, so let's get you guys up. 
Oh my god. Let's buy a little bit more. Slap this down right here. We move up. Keep our army consolidated. Do this too. And do that to prevent flanks. And then we just kind of work up the sideline here. Like a little, like a goblin. Alright, so here he comes with some, some army. Hopefully we're going to be able to fight him off. And um, in the meantime, you guys just kind of start bombarding all these towers here. JD is going to call in some companions. Some Grail companions. Okay, you guys get on the wonder. Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. Okay, so we got reinforcements coming down. Looking okay. We got six minutes left. Okay, red is nearby too. So we probably want to do this. Um, and start on this. Uh, do we have the guys nearby? We do have some. We do have some. Ah, oh, I look away for a second and old JD gets karate chopped. Okay, let's get the Trevs back. Uh, we can thankfully just repurchase her at a town center. <laughs> the Saint has arisen once more. So he's going to lose a lot of units here. We got six minutes and 55 seconds. I didn't quite finish my um, glorious wall-off plan I had here. So alas, it's not going to go great. But let's get this. Get some champions popping out too. JD is going to be back soon. And we can make another batch of Trebs. Alright, so now we want to just switch this on to gold. And uh, let's do that. Oh, Ezra. Why are you like this, Ezra? He's so bad, dude. Ezra killed my trade in the back. Ezra killed my trade. Probs can't push more out of gold. Yeah, we have to, we have to like, try and turn that there. Okay, these traders are... What is he doing? He was probably, honestly, just pillaging for freebies. How did he even get here? He must have, like, crossed the river. I'm pretty sure it's fully walled, but yeah. All good. Should have surrounded it. Uh, so maybe he counter wonders after this? I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and get all of you guys coming down, and we need to just salvage our traders now. Uh, I think there's some docks I can trade with up north, although no, it looks like most of them got torched. Uh, so going for a wonder is going to be incredibly difficult now. Uh, even, I, I, like, the problem is now I don't have steady gold either. So it kind of makes me, hmm. Let's do this, and then this. Okay, so the boys have gathered. We're going to set up walls here. Ezra Wormtongue, he really is. He really is the, the Wormtongue, isn't he? Uh, I do have some passive golds. Let's go grab the Sacreds. Uh, let's see if there's any, like, magical trade posts around here or something. I don't think there is, though. Sadly, I didn't get any on my side of the map. So, we're just doing, like, a bit of a slow push here on the Mongols. What do we got? Okay, the Wonder's been deleted. Ezra is definitely the, the villain now. Wang is still alive, but not by not by much. Uh, got a lot of villagers here. Need to find some wood. Okay. Yeah, we'll look for ducks. Too much lag to even play, he says? Yeah, well, you know. Somebody's, somebody's getting a little bit crunk over there. So, the Wonder's been destroyed. And now, um, Red is playing what? He's Mongols. Good job, team. Uh, we could save up some gold. I mean, selling food and everything is fine. Ezra's got a wonder. So, okay. He's got a wonder of his own. So, where is he building it? Top corner? Ooh, that's rough. That's a hard spot to get to, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's delete this. And uh, now we just got to get his wonder. So, he's playing Mongols. So, clearly, he, he had a lot going on. Oh, uh, we got our traders. Is there anywhere we can trade with? I don't think so. Pretty sure this land has been rampaged on, but we can actually do this. Oh, that's really funny, actually. So we go there and then pull it down to the bottom corner. He might not notice it, too, which is going to be hilarious. So how do we get through this wall, though? We need to destroy that, so let's get a cannon placement. JD can come up here. We got the sacred site being grabbed. You can't even micro your spring ults. Yeah, it happens, man. It happens. But now we need to focus on the wonder. Now that's a good wonder spot. Yes, he is Mongols though, so maybe there's a chance. Let's roll a nanny. Uh, get it together, Wang. It ain't over. All right. So we need to raise the Wang's morale. The Wang is a little bit flaccid right now. I think it's a little sad about its wonder wonder failings. Um. All right. Okay. So where can we go? We go up top. Yeah, knock down this wall. 
Just push up there. Uh, gotta hold on to the gold resources where I can. We got eco coming back, so farms are gonna be repopulated. Ah, uh, it's probably enough eco. Hopefully Wang isn't gonna be salty. Hopefully he'll actually help. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. We're going, baby. We're going. Okay, so I can start setting up infrastructure here. Heard some rattling at my door. Not sure what that was. Uh, where are my traders trying to go, by the way? They're trying to go here. Looks like Ezra is continuing the kills. They were trying to waddle around somewhere, but we can get through here and probably weasel some trade through, which will be very funny. We got these guys to build the forward infrastructure. A uh, little wood line here. I'm sure it's better than nothing. He's killing my landmark. Oh, okay, I see it now. Well, we're, we're moving. We're going to push however we can, man. Never say die, you know. We might be able to make the magic happen. It's a bit of a journey, though. After yesterday, uh, you're having some lag issues, too. Oh, shit, we actually have a docks here, neutral docks. Okay, maybe we just do that. Yeah, great. Well, that's that's certainly awesome. So, yeah. I, I missed... I thought those were my docks, and then I, I read it, and I was like, oh, okay. That is great. So, JD, um, we need to get a cannon, I guess. So... Five, and then traders, we can do this, and we can cut a handful of you. And then JD can summon a cannon. She abandoned the old companions. Oh, I'm gonna build keeps as I push, don't worry. That's the plan, man. Alright, so this is gonna be good, and then let's get that wall off like so. Great. So we gotta keep there. And um, now you guys come help build this. This is awesome. This is a great trade route, actually. Oh, and they're generating a bunch of gold for me and everything. It's awesome. This is uh, life's good, man. We have any tree patches left? Yeah, there's some in the corner. <laughs> All right, so we've arrived. We need to get the forward infrastructure set up, which we will. Uh, he's about to backdoor me with his army turn. Push while his pop is elsewhere. Yep, I'm working on it. We're gonna go see what this actually looks like. We're gonna just send a, a blitz up there. And uh, that looks fine. All right, so you guys come up here. You guys come up here too. Looks like there's some loose gold around here too. Yeah, we're moving, and we're going for it. So now we have the we have the counter wonder for sure. Okay, so this is where we encounter resistance. All right, so we need to get our infrastructure set up here. So let's get a keep, and uh, yeah, just start torching shit, killing whatever towers we can. We're gonna need a couple keeps probably to make sure we don't get pushed back and overwhelmed. And um, then we need to get some of you guys. Like, we can get you guys to do this. Okay, so let's do that and um, that. And then we're going to build a gatehouse there, too, obviously. All right, clearing out a little something-something. It's not much, but every every bit matters, right? Our supply lines suck here. They're just absolutely terrible. But, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. We got, what, 12 minutes left? Bombard cannons just killing random ship. Cool. Uh, traders are coming, and we need to get a gatehouse there. Wang eliminated and Annie deleted. Yeah. Well, did Wang get eliminated? He did, yeah. It, he could have it in the bag, for sure. He could very well have it, but, you know, I don't think I can handle it all by myself. That is the unfortunate reality here. Okay. Here he comes. So he's going to fight. And we have a bit of an army, but let's pull back to our keep. Although we should probably fight to defend the keep for, for now. So let's get horsemen, spearmen, and archers and whatnot moved up here. Uh, Manganels. Okay, thank you. So, Valor's Inspiration, and let's take some of you guys down, down, down. Got a lot of spears coming in. He's got a whole bunch of spears. Okay, back you go, back you go. Let's fall back to the keep. We can start making companions from those, and cool. So, we got a gatehouse there. We're going to start wonder prepping ourselves. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely on the table. Alright. Let's get all these. Fight here under the keeps. Hopefully, our cannon keeps will do well. I don't think he's going to have, like, trebs or anything like that, so... Hopefully JD and company can survive here. Uh, I believe we have 10 more villagers coming too. Yeah, we do. So let's start on that and just get the boys coming up here. I believe this is, uh, yeah. Can we not fit through there? No, we should be able to. Yeah, we should be able to fit through there. Okay, he's going after the keeps. He's taking a bit of burning oil damage. Uh, let's get JD to go finish, uh, shoot the mangonels. We might be able to hold off this army. Pretty good. She doesn't do that much outside of that ability. All right, so reinforcements are almost there. One keep is still very much alive. So let's bonk that, and then keep bonking here. He's going for the last keep. We got a big wave of reinforcements and plenty of stone. Plenty of stone, for sure. And now we can make some French Knights out of here. 
Let's go get another one of these. All right. And we can consecrate you. We might have to build more keeps. Hopefully Nanny's back on his feet too. Okay, that's one down. And the reinforcements have now arrived. Great. We've taken this down. JD's just like soloing shit. He's going hard. And it looks like we're going to get our supply line set up. Oh, JD got popped in the face. She wasn't watching. All right. Free summon the saint. Good thing JD is OP and can just uh, instant summon herself. Okay, so French Knights. And um, in the meantime, we can... Uh, yeah, we'll take kind of keep, keep out. All right. Definitely going to need some more of you guys. We're going to need more villagers to produce. Trade's going well. And um, yeah, we clear out the army for now. At least we have some reinforcements coming in. The dreaded Mongol wonder is not needing stone. It's very good. It's very strong. Uh, let's go get that. We can. You guys fight here. Fight here. Okay, so more infrastructure is coming. We're going to need more spears and more horsemen to come from the base. And he's running with these. Note to self, don't play Mongols in FFA. Mongols are good, but oh, you're just having lag issues. Saying, yeah. All right, so we got all the arty, which is great. So that's going to take that down. And go get that silly con. And it looks like we're holding here adequately well. All right, so you guys can move up here. Yeah, we all hands on deck. We got some, somewhat of a supply line situation. Oh, here's his trade. Okay. Actually, not the best trade in the world, but still enough to, to be really strong. The Mongols, you don't need that much because you get that stone too, which is really nice. Okay, so John Dark is back. That should help us turn the tide against the Dread Mongols here. And, um, all right, let's do this. And we can start building the, uh, the defenses here. Man, French are so good in FFA. I can like see the applications of this. It's like so powerful. Okay, so let's get all you guys going. JD and company are back. Um, she's getting a little bit caught up here, so let's do the divine business. And she can call out some uh, reinforcements too. All right, JD, Ballister Inspiration, let's go. Get him sauced. Back you go. And now we need to get spears coming out and all this. So this trading actually isn't going terribly. Uh, it's, it's going, I would say, pretty decently. Let's get another keep here. Unfortunately, that's going to force us to have to buy some stone, which is fine. To get back up to the required amount for the wonder, but six minutes? I mean, he doesn't have walls. There's a chance. I don't know how well Nanny's doing. Uh, I have no idea. Let's go get that and cut this gravy train off too. All right, so now we got our beach head up. So let's put this in seven. Five, and we can just kind of keep spamming out horsemen and whatnot. JD and company are going to start marching again. And we're going to hopefully decap both of these sacreds. Do Mongols like cause so much lag in FFA? It's crazy. The amount of lag we're suffering here is, is I mean, look at this. I have a good computer too, guys. Uh, the guild hall is collecting. Yeah, it's got 4,000, so I guess we just switch that to stone. All right, so let's uh, move up this way, and then we can start making rams. Yes, good. Okay, and then you guys can do this. Great. So now we have a, a decent push. It's not the best in the world, but it'll do pig. We just need to target down the ones that are upgraded. It's very easy to be fooled into just targeting random shit, but... Yeah, we now have a concentrated push. I suspect he's dealing with Nanny. I suspect that much. Old JD eating some cannonballs to the face, but now we're getting good reinforcements. Uh, could set up more keeps to kind of maintain my progress. I don't know if I need to, though. All right, so these are, like, all actually upgraded. Wow. Wood is, is super sparse, obviously. This is so haggard. Nanny might even be able to counter Wonder before me. Uh, did we get the sacreds? I think I... Oh, they're walled. <laughs> Control. This, this dock, though, is, is an awesome saving grace. Um, let's collect this and actually go into wood. Because that's going to be our limiting factor. Um, stone, we can just buy a little bit more. And, yeah, we're good. All right, so we're, we're grooving for it, man. We're grooving. Nanny's for sure helping. Nanny's a very solid FFA player. Nanny's always going to be kind of playing typically where the um, tide, tide blows. Okay, kill the cannon towers. And now we have good production here, boys. This is a, a real push. But we haven't gotten to the final layer of hell yet, which is the true rat's nest in the corner. Yeah, we haven't. There's actually a gold note over there, too. Alright, so he's trying to build some shit. Let's go get these bills. 
Okay. Carry them down. Let's move you up to, to this. Why not? We can just have the Rams dive the wonder. And in the meantime, is this a TC? We're going to kill landmarks just to be safe. He might have even more stone. Okay, this is where we get to the hell, hell, hell fight. Yeah, this is the nastiness here. All right, let's get these. You guys do this. And then these bills are going to come up here, and we're going to do some funny business. You guys will see. Oh, he's got a big reinforcement wave coming. So that is a big-ass army, and we will have you guys actually just uh, set this up here. Let's make sure we don't lose that. Pull back, and uh, let's get some spears and fight. And then we want to get some arbs, because they're very good here. Pull back. I think it's mostly a horseman-based army. JD needs to run. The Rams make any progress? Yeah, they killed a couple things. So he clearly is bouncing between Yanni and I. You know, that's that's clearly what's going down. JD could be getting hunted. Let's have the Rams distract for a second longer. And um, yeah, in the meantime, you guys can just go jump on wood here. Because that's what we're going to need. I don't know how we fight this. It's kind of hard. Um, we got men-at-arms coming out. A lot of horsemen. But the French knights are pretty chad. They're hanging in there. We probably should make more French knights. Arbs are fighting tooth and nail in the pits. Yeah, the knights are going okay. If we can wipe this army out, that will help Nanny a lot. Call the banners! Can we get a cannon? Although it's going to die instantly, it's okay. All right, let's do the heal. Just get it off cooldown. And um, do we hold here? Maybe. Maybe we... Oh, man, we never got all those barracks finished. That's pretty bad, actually. Okay. So let's go finish those barracks. I was wondering why we were kind of struggling to get that back momentum with spears. Uh-huh. Yeah, looking good. So we do defeat that army, but it's only got two minutes left. So we might have one more haggard gambit, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute. Which could be really, really funny if it works. But, um, yeah. Yeah, get all those finished. Great. So his army gets crushed. Not crushed, but he definitely takes some L's. And then um, you guys need to head up here and here. And you'll see why. Okay. So let's get spears. Let's go up this way. Knights. Hand cannoneers, and uh, we can start on some traps. Although they're probably not gonna have time to make it, but we have a we have a funny little idea, which might do something. I'm not sure. All right. Let's do this. Get some rams, and uh, just clear out these towers, and you're gonna see. It's one of my favorite strategies, especially against like Mongols when they like struggle to you know deal with walls and stuff. Okay, and then back on wood. What do we got? Minute 42? Probably not enough time. I don't know how uh, far along Nanny is, but it's uh, it's going to be kind of tight. This tactic would have worked a little bit. You're still lagging in the game after death. <laughs> Even in death, I lag. Yeah, so let's move this way. And then you guys come in here. So you, you create um, what I like to call a trebuchet tunnel. It's a pretty cool tactic. It works quite well, but at this point... We, we probably just don't have enough time. He's defending very well, um, and we need to seal the wall also. So let's do this. Yeah, have you guys just move up. I could bum rush it. Probably just bum rush it at this point. And just try and move back there. We see his white stupa. This is like a movie scene with John Dark. Okay. So let's say get back. We're not going to make it past these guys, so let's just fight here. And uh, yeah, these never got finished. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be it. Yeah, John Dark makes a valiant last stand. Yeah, so I thought Ezra was actually going to suffer 2v1 there, but what ended up happening is uh, Wang went for the wonder, which allowed Ezra time to cackle. See, you create a treb tunnel, right? So you do this, and then you can slowly creep up and just build walls, and it's really good with trebs. But um, GG, well played. Really good game. Showing the strength of Mongols, too. The fact they don't need stone, it's like, it's a it's a powerhouse. <laughs> when I watch you, it's like Sakura Blue. Yeah. That was a good event today, though. Good event, good FFA at the end to close things out. See, Tron was right. Uh, not really. I mean, Wang built Wonder. <laughs> yeah, that's why that went like that, you know. Tron made the game not working with me, obviously. Oh, wait, who is Tron? Was Tron on my side? GG, well played. GG, well played. Well, he was too far away for me to attack, you know. He was too far away for me. We were pretty close. If we could have wondered, if we could have had a wonder set up after Wang's wonder died, you know, that could have been good. But we never had enough gold because we were caught in these horrific forever wars, um, which were just brutal. It was just brutal. 
All right, guys. So if you enjoyed the stream, I ask but one thing of you. Drop a like on the way out. It helps a lot. Helps keep the old age engine going. Uh, really fun 1v1 tournament today. And we'll be back with more action soon. Oh, Tron was yellow. Wait, Tron was not who I was fighting, was it? I was fighting Jordan or anyway, it's, it's all confusing. Maybe Tron was right after all. I, I don't know who was who. Got a little bit confused there, but well played to everyone. Really fun event. We got to see some uh, new faces appear, some uh, some old champions uh, battling it out in 1v1. But I'm going to go hang out with my smoking hot wife. Appreciate you all. Great times. Nanny was making some decent progress, but um, Ezra clearly had a lot of time to prepare. So there was there was no time, no way we were going to get that. Yeah, if only Pwn was there. That's right. If only Pwn. All right, folks, take care of yourselves. See you next time. Adios, Dovidenia, and uh, appreciate you all. Cheers.